Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Glanigore's North Wales. And what a beautiful venue it is for motorsport. Here we are then for round two of the Kart Championship. My name is Joe Bradley. Um, an unfamiliar voice, though, but a very familiar voice to the karting world joins me this weekend. And I'm delighted to have alongside me to chat about, well, all sorts, probably, Henry Baudet. Henry, welcome, welcome to Wales. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you so much, Not Joe. Not you've been very far away from Wales. It's, a, it's an absolute pleasure to, uh, number one, be home, uh, and number yes. two, be sat with you, and number, number three, being in this paddock. Um, you know, it's a, it's a championship that I've watched from, a, from afar, uh, and I've, you know, I've known Darren uh, for a, a long time. Uh, I think it's fantastic what he's done. I've been wandering around the paddock just briefly today. The, the, the atmosphere, lots of smiling faces, lots of yeah. people going from awning to awning or the gazebo to gazebo to help each other out. And that's, you know, it, I, it, I, I like that. I like that. That, that struck me. So, we, we, you know, Carting Live TV, new to this series. Um, and that's what struck me. It's, it's, a, it's a junior championship. Yes. We've got age range from 6 to 16, quite literally. Yep. And the atmosphere in the paddock is is as it should be. It's exactly. A, it's all about the kids. Yes, it and, is. And and you know we can sometimes be become a bit intense about our racing, can't we? Well, yeah, you're right. And I, I think that the racing is is going to be it's intense been, because yeah. there's there's lots of very very good drivers here, lots of very uh, professional setups. There's lots of uh, independents, privateers, families, you know, out here competing. So the racing is going to be just as intense as you'd normally expect it. But it's you know, the laughter in the paddock and, and yeah. the joviality. I mean, we say that we haven't started racing, yet. <laughs> but, but yes. no, that's what I you know. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I know what you mean. It's a very friendly atmosphere, and like you said, you you know, you see people helping each other out. And, and because it's about the kids. Yes. It's about getting everybody out on track. And out on track we go Indeed. with our Honda Cadets. I've got the grid in front of us. The first so race. I'll, I'll quickly run through. So we've had time qualifying. Yep. We'll, we'll go into the format of the event uh, once we get things running. We're out on track at the moment. So pole position in time qualifying, which was in a very mixed track condition. And as we saw there, still a little bit mixed track condition with a couple of carts off. So Kevin Ivanov put the, uh, his cart on pole position with a 53.914. Current British champion Ryan White, he's alongside with a 54.3. Second row is Archie Cannon and Archie Loveridge. Two yep. Archies on row two. Uh, row three, uh, Magiris Kovekis and Ed Spin. Ryle, uh, Riley Blakemore and Kean Sullivan are on row four. Row five, Elliot Bork and Luke McGall. Ella Dixon and Ronnie Smart share row six. Row seven, Tyler Banks and Ralphie Branscombe. Row eight is Albie Smith and Jack Wax. Uh, Ollie Knox and Ashton Horsepool on row nine. Row ten, Daniel Barton and Luke Jardine. Uh, Ricky McIntosh and Jane Prakash are on row 11. Noah Clark and Finlay Thursfield are on row 12. And then we've got row 13. Harley Bradbury Stretton, Jacob Letherby, uh, Oliver Ratton, Otto, Otto Amy, uh, Freddie Budd, Sophie Morris, Rebecca Ristol, James Pearson, uh, Jerry Deficy and Reggie Deficy round off the grid. Um, standing start, of course, for Honda of, Cadets, Henry. Of course, I of think course. I forgot that bit there. Uh, well, yeah, I was I mean, hurrying <laughs> through, thinking we're going to get a rolling start. Well, no, I mean, and, and a full grid as well, 34 drivers. The one thing that I noticed that I, I like a lot of um, are the novice drivers. A lot of, a lot of novice drivers, you know, the, the black plates. Uh, and the white numbers, and that tells me that the, this championship is giving these drivers a chance to race around, you know, the country at the, at the very start of their karting career, which is, uh, you know, obviously very, very important. It, you know, you, you support your local track, your local club, yes. your local championship, but then you want to branch out. You want, you know, high-level competition, but still retain that, uh, you know, that the happy atmosphere. That's what I, uh, I'm good to see. There's a plenty it's of novices. You can see uh, just a couple there towards the back, but one or two of them I noticed on the grid there that uh, are actually much higher up in front of some of the more experienced drivers. You get Noah Clark there on, on, on row number 12, for example, yeah, ahead G of... Uh, Prakash Jane as well. Prakash, yeah, on row ahead. 11. That's uh, 17 rows of carts, and it's a standing start. And uh, I do like ah, these. I yes. do like these standing starts. Hawks back to my car heritage, doesn't uh, yeah, it? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, stand, yeah. standing starts. Uh, lights, red lights go on, and we've, uh, we'll have actually get a view of the red lights from our grid cam. The green flag waves at the back of the grid. And we've got a great view there from our uh, our grid cam, I'm going to call that. I've just christened that, the grid uh, yes. cam, Henry. So, basically, red lights go on. Oh, that's a bit of a confusing start there. Red lights went on and immediately went off. I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure really what that was, but um, the starter has got them underway, Henry, and we're already 
heading up to that top corner. Yeah, this is uh, Dragon Straight, of course, being a proper Welsh, Welsh circuit aim up the top of the hill towards Spoon Curve. And uh, the lead is there. That number, the number 50 cart of uh, pole sitter Kevin Ivanov uh, looks to have things uh, under control. Coming down the hill, single file. Uh, drivers are looking over their shoulder. Um, but uh, I think, yeah, yeah, we certainly have got to start. One driver at the top of the circuit there uh, has... Uh, Sadly, spun it, and having come in this morning, there's a, a lot of rain has been about, as been the case uh, all over the, U the UK uh, for seemingly months on end. But now we're down into compression corner, Devil's Elbow, and at the end of lap number one, uh, Kevin Ivanov. That is, you know, a perfect first lap from uh, Ivanov. Ryan White tucked right in behind him, wearing the number one plate. You know, so the reigning British uh, champion, Cannon and Kovacic. Uh, Archie Loveridge, Ed Spain, Riley Blakemore, but uh, and Riley Blakemore an expert. Joe, yeah, this is what we're going to see a lot yeah. of: Honda racing, four-stroke, plenty of slipstreaming, plenty of drafting, and uh, a really good way to sort of start your career off in uh, in how to control a cart. What I know about Ryan White is he will. I don't think we will see any kind of attempt at the lead here. Ryan is clever enough and experienced enough to realise that if he starts. Uh, squabbling with, with Kevin Ivanov, they are going to fall back towards the carts behind them. And typically behind them, from third place down to what looks like 20th, yeah. we've got a train of cadets as we normally have. And uh, it, yeah, he's uh, in fact, if anything, Henry, Ivanov has found some pace there and he's pulled a bit of a gap there as they went through turn one to complete uh, two laps and on to lap three. Yeah, down Dragon Straight, and this is a seven-minute plus one lap race. You can see the yellow flag wave here, sort of stationary, waving flag here at Spoon Curve, uh, the 50 cart there. Uh, everyone's saying single file and overtaking, and that is because you've got the... Ah, uh, there yeah, you go. Couldn't quite see the number on the, uh, the cart that was out of the race. I think it might have been the number 58. Uh, sorry, the 20, Ollie Knox and Finley Thursfield seem to have had a, an issue. But, uh, yeah, single fall, because, of course, the other thing we haven't mentioned, Joe, is, is the weather. Uh, do, we, do we dare say the R word? It's well, dry at the moment, but uh, we've had four seasons in one day already. We really have. Uh, we were just setting up the day, and we've, we've, been, we've experienced hot sunshine, literally hot sunshine, burning yep. me face, and then it went to snow. Yes. Literally, <laughs> flakes of snow. Then it went to hail. Then we've had a bit of light rain. Then we had a bit of heavy rain. Then it went back to bright sunshine, all in the space of 15 minutes. Or as we call it in Wales, Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now you can see Ryan White. He's yeah, sort of, he's caught yeah, back he's at him. Caught back up a little bit. And uh, the, those chasing pack there, two, four, four drivers. That's uh, Cannon, Kovacis, Loveridge and Spain. They all know what the game is. They don't want to battle either because... Yeah, uh, I was going to say, because they're doing exactly that, aren't they? They are working together. And look at that, Henry. They're working together and coming back towards those two leaders. They can see them ahead of them, of course. Mm. And the bright green helmet there, that's Archie Cannon. He's leading that train of cadets. And look at that four carts there working together. And the gap to Ryan White is coming down. Yeah, and because, of course, the, 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 late, the chasing pack knows that uh, if White challenges Ivanov and they, the two leaders go side by side and we're looking now side by side for third and that was uh, uh, Mar Marjorie uh, Kovechkis uh, having a little little look at the inside of Archie Cannon and Cannon sort of moved across to say no 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 like let's stay in line yeah they know oh and uh, that was was that the leader or was that second place it was the leader running very wide Ivanov running wide up at uh, Spoon Curve there and that's uh, Ryan White into the lead is that because there that, was a few spots of rain? I can't quite see, but it was a strange, yes, it strange was strange way to run wide. Well, it, I suppose it, it is easy up at Spoon, isn't it? You go over a rise, yep, yep. and you can easily go too deep into what is a, a 180 degree curve. It is a hairpin, but it's a sweeping hairpin, isn't it? You, you carry a lot of speed through there. Yes. but he just went wide, didn't he? Just, and you, you, you're possibly right there with a few spots of rain. But uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, certainly now we'll see if uh, if if White. Looking over his shoulder as the, as the race boils down, you're going to see more and more and more of this. Drivers looking over their shoulders to try and plan uh, a, a defensive manoeuvre. The other drivers trying to plan an attacking manoeuvre. And also, as you can see there, Ivanov almost just gives a little bit of a, 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 a peck on the cheek, as it were, to the rear bumper of Ryan White's cart. And there's a move from oh, Cannon to the inside yeah. into the carousel, but can't yeah. quite pull it off. Cannon, he's, he's got that second place in his sights now. 
just moving up. He's dropped out a little bit, and that's the ebb and flow of cadet karting is so easy to see. You you can get onto the rear bumper of the cart ahead of you, and the moment you step out of line, a bit like NASCAR actually, the yep. moment you step out of line, you end up dropping back, and that you know we've dropped back two cart lengths after just one attempt. Yeah, you, you know, if, if the race boils down to it, you know, if you get a big pack, it's like the Tour de France, the peloton. You know, yes. the, you get cycled out, you get you're pushed out wide, and then you get shuffled to the back. You know, you can call it being getting freight trained. Here we go then, Ivanov, he's lost that second place, he'll be kicking himself. I didn't, I'm didn't. not sure if that was a little sort of head tap, helmet tap from Ryan <laughs> White, saying we all know what that means. It means, let me lead this race, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and you just follow me, and then we'll pull a, we'll pull a put, bit of a lead. We'll, yeah, let's all play nice. But, it very yeah. rarely seems to work. <laughs> no, you know what, I've seen, I've seen drivers sort of do that and, and, and agree to that, and then... You're kind no. of boiling down to the last, what, 90 seconds, which we're inside of, by yes. the way. So all bets are off. All deals are off. Now we're running to that checkered flag. And everybody's wanting to gather points to get them up the grid for the super heats. And, of course, yeah, you're down to a leading group of five. White, Ivanov, Cannon, Spain and Kovechka. So Riley Blakemore, Archie Loveridge, Kian Sullivan and the rest have sort of fallen away a little bit. But there's Archie Cannon. And now he is... Uh, Right there on the rear bumper of the number 50 cart, the pole sitter Ivanov as they head down the hill towards uh, the carousel. And uh, is that the uh, bright blue turquoise Ambition Motorsport livery cart of Ed Spain is next. But yeah, we're down to 30 seconds. And, uh, you, you know, this is where you'll, the drivers will start positioning themselves. You know, they're coming up on some slower traffic as well. Maybe one or two of the drivers that have had a spin. One of the novices, that could be uh, Reggie uh, Dufissi. And you see the blue flag being waved there. But uh, 20 seconds to go. Dufissi mm. will need to, to get out of the way. But uh, They're going to do that up the, up the hill, aren't they? They, they just tore by, by him. Yep. Up that hill. There's quite an undulating track here at Glanny Gores, isn't it? There's quite an, uh, a level change, isn't there? The, up at the, the highest point there at Spoon. And now they pretty much plunge down the hill, back down the hill towards the infield. What's this corner called? This here, is called Henry? the carousel. The carousel. It's a beautiful yes. sweeping left hand. That's it goes on and on. It's, it reminds it, me it, of the carousel at well, Road America. Yeah, yeah, I think it's not quite the carousel at the, the Nordschleifer. <laughs> no, but, not uh, quite. But, uh, yeah, one thing that Wales could never be accused of is being flat and no, featureless. Never. And, oh, there's yeah. another. That's the number 75. That's James Pearson sort of not getting in the way, but he couldn't get out of the way. Uh, because, you know, that downhill section through, uh, you know, Devil's Elbow and Compression Corner, it's, it's basically, you know, single file racing. And uh, it did cost the fourth and fifth drivers, Spain and Kovechkis, a little bit of time. Well, Ryan White took the final, uh, the win in the final at Wilton Mill in round one. He's leading here in the first of the heats. These two heats define the grid for the super heats, which then defines the grid for the final. Mm -hmm. And Ryan White being the man to beat, starting off as he finished off at Wilton Mill. He's got bad markers that may come into play, but the bat marker very heads up driving there from that. So Ivanov still in second there, the number 50, right on the rear bumper, though. As they go through, I love these sweeps and turns. This is a very technical bit of racetrack. It's so easy to make a mistake there. But no mistakes from Ryan White, Henry, as he uh, comes through the final turn. And it's checkered flag time. Yeah, uh, yeah a s smart drive. Ivanov mm. maybe didn't show all his cards just yet. As you can see, the rest of the field, three wide across the line. I think it was Albie Smith, <laughs> Luke McGill, and uh, Ricky McIntosh Jr. shows. It just shows you how competitive it is. All these, you know, young drivers. You know, seen some of the novices. You know, going a lap down, but that's to you know to be sort of expected when you start out uh, against this level of competition. But this track is yes, a real tester as it well. It really is. You mentioned the technical sections, the downhill section, which you, the cart's got to be turning in. You know, cleanly, you can't be bogging down. But then you've got the fast first section and you've got the very sort of like flowing middle section as well so you've got you know it's very flowing isn't yeah, it you, there's you, not really a, a really slow part of this track no because because even the downhill section where it, the cart the corners are quite tight because of the you know the camber and and some and, and the elevation changes they're quicker than you know than you think it is a very quick very very quick lap here and it's all about it's very technical which is uh, how i would describe this track so let's have a rundown first 10 in the first eight 400 cadets. Ryan White takes the win. Kevin Ivanov glued to his rear bumper in second. Archie Cannon third. Ed Spain came second at Wilton Wil Mills final uh, last month. He came fourth. Magiris Kovekis was fifth. Archie Loveridge was sixth. Seventh was Riley Blakemore. Kean Sullivan eighth. Ninth was Albie Smith. And uh, Luke McCall 
rounds off the top 10. Have we got time to run down? We've got them on the screen there if you're watching at home. Um, that's your 33 cart field there and how they finished in heat one. But what, what I noticed there, you know, I mean, obviously the families and the friends can look look at the names at the list there, but uh, how many drivers do you have finishing there with 31 of the 33? A couple of spinners on the opening lap, but then after that, everybody, uh, you know, was, was well behaved, a couple of spins and uh, a lot of ex good experience gained. Always, yes. Um, a, a lot of experience of each other as well at well, the front. Yes. Yeah, wasn't well, it? You know, yeah. Ivanov, uh, he, he will know Ryan White well. Yep. And yep. when I say no, I mean track behaviour, yeah, yeah, track yeah. body language, can if I, you like. Can I, I trust refer him? refer to that. Yes. You know, can yes. I, well, well, can they... I trust him when he taps his helmet and says, let me yeah, leave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or, or Possibly not. Possibly not. But, I mean, for, for Kevin Ivanov, I mean, just looking at the you know, 17th of the final at Wilton Mill. And, of course, this is the second round of a five-round uh, of a five round series. And, uh, you know, every point matters. But, I mean, you're going to get heat points. You're going to get pre-final points. Or is that the super heat points and then the final points? You've got so three the, sets of points that you could get over the course of the weekend championship I, I, points. I, I, have, I, have a screen, ah. I have a screen for you, Henry. Okay. Ooh, ooh. I have a screen for you. Um, so these are the, these are the, uh, this is the regulations. Um, three championship three points. Three championship point scoring opportunities per weekend. So points earned in the Saturday heats will count towards the first heat class, first heat classification. So, yeah, so where you where, where so heat one and heat two, yes. you form the grid for the super heats. You will get points for how you finish. Okay, yes, where you are in the intermediate classification. Yeah. I'm with you. Yes. Same for the super heats. Yep. So two super heats. Yep. And then points awarded for where you are on the grid for the final. So yeah, and then, and then double the final for the final. Double points. Yeah. Consistency pay, pays off, you know, in the in the long term. But uh, here we go. Then this is Junior Primo. So this is the Junior Rotax class for the the under four, the fourteen and under uh, on the on the full size chassis. Uh, Seventeen drivers on the grid. Bella Fairclough is your pole sitter alongside uh, Daniel Hartree. Then you've got Ellis Dealey and Maya Simpson. Alfie Forrester, great performance from the novice there mm, uh, on the third row of the grid alongside Leighton Kelly. Oh, dear. And that's the number 14 cart, uh, who uh, Sophia Caldwell, who is uh, exploring, well, she's exploring uh, the Welsh nature. Uh, and uh, so, oh, oh dear. Um, the rest of the field, very quickly, Alfie Forrester, Leighton Kelly, Tyler Davis, Zach Kane, and there's another driver there, number 79, Ethan Barth and Ewan Stevenson, Thomas Butcher, Eddie Stewart, Oscar Pitt, Sophia Caldwell, uh, Laurie McVie, Jack Johnson, and Riley Mason Lewis. Hope for, ah, well, Alfie Forrester was the number 79 ah, card. Who was a novice who qualified very, very well. well. And, and Sophia, Sophia Caldwell, uh, I think there's certainly Forrester uh, at the back of the screen there, but hopefully we'll catch back up uh, yeah that's we'll yeah forrester well, he's not on the black plate so i'm not quite sure if the end plate was full but we're underway bella fairclough was our driver of the day at wilton mill she had some fabulous fabulous drives didn't do very well in this time qualifying so we had the we witnessed bella fairclough coming through the field on more than one occasion i think we've got a false start yeah, well, judging by i think so judging by yes. the way they're still warming their tires and, and going slowly yes, that was a bit <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking that's a bit arrogant, leading the race and, <laughs> it, 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 and well, shoreboarding. It, it, yeah, I think that might be a, a chance to get uh, to give uh, Caldwell and Forrester a chance to uh, catch back up if indeed yes, of Caldwell course. has managed to extricate her go-kart from the scenery. Yeah, of course. it was uh, The false start was called because we were sorting out those couple of uh, carts off track, of course. So uh, we, we look like we've got the grid formed. Hopefully those two carts that were in trouble on that warm-up lap will be able to get at least onto the back of the grid yep and looks we've, as though yeah, looks nicely formed will. isn't it a nicely formed grid oh. is something we all like to see yes <laughs> and that just just there from our camera angle henry just shows how tight and technical that part of this track is just coming towards the end of the lap here they go then let's even get this underway again that's a lovely shot we've got the red lights go out and again, is that a race start? It is showing a no, race I, start. No, so. I, I think there was there was at least one or two drivers with their hands in the air, but it certainly looks like we've gone. So it maybe those have, yeah. those drivers were a little bit uh, presumptive in their uh, assumptions that uh, it was the start was not good. But it's the uh, number fifteen from Bella, Bella Fairclough, Fairclough, that very striking liveried yellow uh, cart with the the blue the two two tone. Blue race suit or oh, two tone? There we go. That's going to be started on two tone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, but she's leading uh, the field and leading it impressively, Joe. 
Yeah, great start from Bella, who this time has gotten to where she wants to be. We saw her drive through the field a few times at Wilton Mill. Well, her qualifying was a lot better this time here at Glanny Gores. And she looks like, once again, the driver to beat here. Daniel Hartley second, Ellis Daly third, Maya Simpson fourth. It's Tyler Davis, Ewan Stevenson, Ethan Bath, Zach Kane, Thomas Butcher and Eddie Stewart. Eddie may even be joining us in the commentary box uh, oh. over the course of the uh, the weekend. But Eddie rounding off the top ten there. Always, always great to get you know get drivers to come in and give their thoughts. You know because they are out there. You know we, we can talk about it, it's Joe. But they're insight. the ones actually out there doing it. And it's also you know it's it, it's great training for them. You know, great, great media the, training. Uh, Stick yeah, a mic in front of their nose. Well, right, go. Don't swear or pick your nose. Off you go. Eddie's joined us in the box a few times uh, in a couple of series, and he's far too good for my liking. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> far too good. Well, we are future planning. Here we go, the yes. challenge for the, for the lead, is it? Yep. Through turn one and up towards Spoon. Yes, very much so. Daniel Hartley to the inside, and that's a pretty textbook move there. You've got to get the move done before that right-hander, haven't you? Because that's a sweeping entry into that into that hairpin at the top of the hill. Yeah, you don't want to be going side-by-side side up the hill through mm. turn number two because, you know, I've seen it many a time. The uh, the, 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 the tyre barrier is uh, there and waiting to collect any driver that is offline. So uh, you've got that such a fast straight. Then you've got the one-line corner up the hill. but And there, then, of course, you can dive up the inside. The spoon curve is a great oppor overtaking opportunity. But Hartley and Fairclough, yeah. they have uh, put a significant gap on the rest of the field. And that's uh, as you go through Paddock Bend, or Clubhouse Corner now, they called it. Clubhouse Corner. Clubhouse Corner, right, yeah, okay. yes, Clubhouse Corner. Since uh, uh, Eddie Davis and the, the owners and the family built the clubhouse, they thought, well... May as well uh, name, name a corner after. Great idea. It is it's, a great clubhouse, actually. It's a very, it's it's a a very uh, impressive edifice. Very nice cafeteria as well. Very nice coffee. Very nice. We had a beautiful chicken wrap here oh, uh, yeah. at lunchtime. You just missed that, Henry. Oh, I, I, I did miss that, but that's um, fair. <laughs> I'm on a diet. It looks <laughs> it, it very well for it. Um, yeah. Daniel Hartley, I think, was just kind of waiting for his tyres to come in, wasn't he? Mm. Uh, you could see that. But once those tyres got up to that optimum temperature and pressure, he made the move on Bella, and if anything, there across the line, six tenths of a second there going into lap five, four laps completed, and Bella dropping away. Let's have a look and see if we can, James, what's happening behind the two leaders. That's a beautiful shot, mind. Oh, yeah. Coming across the crest there. Uh, and it, it's, it really goes, you can see just how sort of like skew if the carts are getting, the driver's yeah. really fighting it. Because that's a braking zone, isn't it? They come yeah. Up, so yep. you're actually on the brake over the brow. Coming up, yep. So you're, 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 Negative your rear camber. axle's locked up already. Oh, yes. And that, for us, we're in the entertainment business, and I find that those pictures very entertaining. Yeah, and, and great, great work here from the Karting Live TV career to show how hard the drivers are working on the steering this is the battle for sec uh, for third and fourth you've got the tony cart there with the, the green and white nasa panel that's maya simpson with a red crash helmet very schumacher-esque uh crash is, helmet design yeah, yeah. and then uh, with well, that's far too bright for this time of day the uh, that's the number 83 of tyler davis now they're they're passing the the stricken cart of uh, leighton kelly who i think has uh, has uh, gone off there the number 78 I think we've also lost Thomas Butcher from the action as well, um, but uh, yeah, this is a this is a good scrap for third and fourth with the fifth place driver Ethan Bath. Just see him there with a very bright yellow uh, livery cart uh, coming through your screens uh, very briefly. There, he's uh, keeping a watching brief on these two. But uh, those yellow rear bumpers, they're it's there to make sure that the, you know they're to help the other drivers. Yeah, you know, they're there don't to be hit seen. Me. Yeah. You can't you can't say that you didn't see me coming. Kind of see that you can target that from space. To yes. be honest, and then let's just catch the, uh, the the back end of Tyler Davis. Tyler Davis was challenging Maya Simpson. However, Tyler now seeming to have settled back, just following her into Spoon over the brow there, and now plunging straight back down the hill, descending towards the carousel. I do like this corner. I've never driven this track, Henry. And I, I really need to, uh, because it is—it looks absolutely fabulous. I love a track that goes up and down as well yeah. as left and right, and this one certainly does. Um, quest, question is, can Tyler Davis now find a way back at Maya Simpson. Maya seems to have be fighting that car through that section. What's, uh, that, what's those switchbacks called? Yeah, so the, the first one is called uh, Devil's Elbow, and the second one is called Compression Corner, because that's what it does to your spine. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, yes, yes, it really yeah. does. Yeah. And a lot of the drivers, say it's like it's like riding a roller coaster. You know, where you go over there, suddenly there's all the, the, your stomach sort of like rises up into your, into your oh, wow. diaphragm right. a little bit. They say it, it really is like that. Um, you know, the... the 
directional and the, uh, the you know the and you elevation do feel changes. a compression yeah there. you absolutely do so this is you know, turns turns uh, s- uh, five and six here beginning the descent now there's devil's elbow yeah uh, and then so it's, it's, it's a double it's a double jointed elbow and <laughs> this is compression corner because you drop down and then suddenly the, yep, the circuit that. flattens out a little bit but it's certainly the battle for third is heating up uh yeah tyler davis looking a little bit more comfortable especially out of the last corner yeah uh, Maya Simpson seems to be the back end, seems to be wandering around a little she's bit. Fight, she's certainly fighting the cart to, I mean, she's certainly fighting the cart on the brakes there over the brow into Spoon, now down the hill, but she's certainly fighting it through the switchbacks of, uh, switchback of Devil's Elbow and the, uh, the compression. However, she seems to have a lot of speed through turn one uh, and up the hill, mm-hmm. and then this is where she's having to hang on to the cart. And this is where Tyler Davis. If, the thing is, this is a one-line track through this section. Yeah. So it, once you once you're in in front here, it's going to be very difficult for someone to pass you before you get to this point here, which is where the start finish line is. If you can force the driver in front of you to defend going into the downhill section, then it does open up an occasional opportunity. So as they uh, they pass a, a back marker there, I think that's Leighton Kelly, who's been off and has come back on. Um, but yeah, this and they weren't too far away at one point from Bella Faircliffe in seven in second. But Bella's now opened up a yeah. a seven second lead over this. But this is the best battle. And oh, just uh, Maya Simpson clipping the inside curb uh, halfway around the carousel, and uh, certainly does look as though Tyler Davis looks like he's got the faster cart, but Maya Simpson's got that all important track position. Yeah, absolutely. One thing catching a cart; it's another thing overtaking that cart. As we get the one lap board. We'll, uh, we'll drift away from this one towards the end of the lap and try and pick up Daniel Hartley, who has been the car to beat. He's got 1.2 seconds on second place, Bella Fairclough, who was a full 8.3 seconds up the road. So it's, we're, we're going to struggle to tear ourselves away from this because I don't want to leave this. We'll leave Daniel Hartley off in, in, in the lead and we'll follow this to the flag, I think, James, uh, because this could go anywhere, really. Yeah, it's, I think yeah, one point three seconds. Hartley, he's he's far enough. There's, oh, there's, the, the, there's move. the move. Oh, they, you can see you could just start to sort of uh, ask a couple of questions. Yes, he did. He was he was beginning to get a little bit impatient. He knew it was one lap to go board, and this will be the checkered flag board that these drivers see. Daniel Hartley takes the win in fine style. Bella Fairclough there with the fastest lap of the race right there at the very end. She came second, only 1.2 seconds off the rear bumper of Daniel Hartley. It was Maya Simpson that clung on to that third place. Undoubtedly, Tyler Davis, I think if he could clear her, he may have pulled away because he looked yep. like he had better pace. But Maya Simpson drove absolutely fabulously and made it very, very hard indeed. Yeah, Maya Simpson is not uh, eight, se- 10 seconds slower than the race winner, Daniel Hartley. But she was driving accordingly yes. there. The last yeah. couple of laps, they dropped away because Simpson was... Um, she was only the one real defensive manoeuvre that we saw, but the rest of the time she was just covering her yeah, line and being yeah. very, uh, very careful. Yeah, she had to be. But, uh, uh, so behind Tyler Davis in fourth, Ethan Bath was uh, in fifth. Eddie Stewart, Eddie must have had a bit of a nightmare in that very tricky track condition that he had in uh, time qualifying because he's come up from the grid. In fact, I've got rid of the grid there. Eddie Stewart was uh, in um, 14th. 14th. Yeah. So a little bit, uh, sorry, 12th um, for Eddie. So he's moved, he got up the order, he, he got up to six there at the end. Uh, he'll be happy with that. Ewan Stevenson, seventh. Zach Kane, eighth. At ninth was Alfie Forrester. Laurie McVeigh was tenth. Eleventh was Riley Mason Lewis. Twelfth was Oscar Pitt. Ellis Daly was thirteenth. The last of the finishers, Jack Johnson. And, of course, we saw how we lost Leighton Kelly on lap eight and Thomas Butcher very, very early on on lap three. Yeah, disappointing for Ellis Daly. Uh, second in the final at Wilton Mill. Second in the point standings coming into this. And Ellis started quite a ways up the order. We didn't quite didn't see what happened to Ellis. But, uh, um, you know, he's not out there. He, obviously, he fell down the order. And sadly, uh, Sophia Caldwell who uh, we saw going off on the the rolling lap, didn't quite uh, get back on her, so she was a, a non-starter eventually. But good news is for, uh, you know, for Sophia is that she's got better tyres now for the second one. So <laughs> yeah. every cloud's yeah. got a silver lining, Always. and um, there are some clouds. And uh, just looking out of our commentary box window, Joe... Um, oh, it's a spit of rain, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, there's an umbrella or three going ah, up there it is. in the paddock. There's the telltale, telltale drop uh, of rain on the camera lens. And that's the one up at um, up at um, the spoon. Yes. So he's on high ground. So yeah, yeah. So you've got you've got all our uh, Coma C50 Bambinos 
sitting on the grid, and they would be on. Well, the Bambinos are all on treaded tyres. Yeah, they're anyway, on the, yeah, so they're on treaded tyre. Um, it's Scotty on the camera at um, Spoon. It's Paul who's on the gantry there, bringing us pictures of the collecting area. And it's Mr. Anonymous, now yeah, yeah. on grid cam, looking, uh, looking up the grid. And uh, I, have to, I have to say, uh, our, t- our two camera guys out there are now thinking, ah, did I'll I pack to... my uh, my umbrella. <laughs> 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 Have I got my waterproofs Can on? Can I get away with standing with an umbrella whilst I do this? Yeah, because uh, it's not warm either. And we are on the side of a mountain here, up in the, uh, the foothills of the uh, Snowdonia uh, National Park, the uh, Snowdonia Mountain Range, up here in... Uh, North Wales. I want to ask you to say, uh, you know, we're, we're uh, Kaya Drugian is where we well, are. Well, I was tempted to have you do a dual. You know the way you've done before. I've heard uh, you yeah. do some European stuff. Y- yes. Where oh. you're, you're the English, but bizarrely, Henry, you're I the English you're, speaking I'm English speaking comment, and I struggle um, with English. Well, I, was, I thought about we could do a Welsh oh, and English thing. Oh, and you no, could do that. Yeah, be yeah. A, that'd be that'd, that'd be a uh, fantastic. Would that be a first? That would be that would be, that would be a first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My my Welsh isn't isn't up to scratch. I knew you were going to say. Well, I say rather mean Hoffy. You know, rather mean Hoffy go cardio. Uh, Henry Baudet, uh, Joe Brady, do we? That's uh, yeah. We I like, like that. I like that. <laughs> I like that. I think I knew what you said. Uh, we've released our bambinos, so let's have a quick look at the grid for these. Ernie Weird, our poor position driver. Now Ernie Weird, I'm just looking where Ernie was. He wasn't anywhere in the top ten at mm-hmm. round one. Um, so we'll move on. So Ernie Weird, driver to watch. Yep. Uh, Noah Wilco was. Noah Wilco came third in the final at Wilton Mill. He's alongside on the front row. Second row is Arthur Bowers and Ollie West. We've got Arlo Gamble and Jesse uh, Jesse Bailey yep. on row three. Row four is Will Wainwright and Lewis Wilson. Uh, Logan Hodgetts and Calman Simon are on row five. Henry Hills and Hendrix Fallat are on row six. Uh, Riley Aston Wilkins and John Stevens are on row seven. Row eight is, is Wraith Owen and Jack Swong. Row nine is Freddie Purnell and Nauman Faisan. Row ten is Max Armit and Max St. Hilaire. And then row 11, rounding off the 22 cart field, is Santo Amico and Benjamin Shivar, who must have had a bit of a nightmare in his qualifying right. because Benjamin is certainly a front running driver. There he, he was sixth or he's lying sixth in the championship, came fourth in the final at Wilton Mill, um, absolutely blitzed the Warden Law Spring Championship oh, right. last weekend, round okay. three and four. He was the driver to beat. So right at the back of the grid, look out for the bright green helmet and the green cart of Benjamin Shivar. Uh, he's, he carries the Bosnian flag. I think he's oh, parodied okay. his Bosnian. Bos- uh, uh, um, somebody with, has with decided the... to park ah, uh, on the outside of the circuit. <laughs> Well, I, someone's obviously someone's been watching old Indianapolis 500 starts on YouTube because they thought, <laughs> I want to go three wide at the start. I want to do a three by three. Or, hopefully that was just a driver in the, the tricky conditions running wide. Not a, um, Although, as I say that, though, the, the, the dad or the mechanic is looking at that uh, engine to try and... Uh, were it into life oh and there's this yeah, the, uh, the yeah. universal signal for uh she she broke yeah it's a standing start if you haven't guessed everybody bambinos and cadets are uh start with a with a standing start lights controlled we will get another view of our red lights that's the number 99 of riley aston wilkins who has uh come to a, a grinding halt and will not take the start sadly but uh, the carts are now left alone. And we will be getting the uh, the signal or the lights. You know, the light board will go, light, red lights will flash on. Then when the lights go out, we start racing. There's the great shot. And a couple of drivers are getting a little bit keen. <laughs> you, they can be forgiven. And uh, oh, I'm not sure what's happened here. Um, somebody went and then somebody else went and then somebody else went. And they forgot that by that point, by the time the fourth driver went, they remembered that I, they hadn't actually looked at the lights. I'm not sure. We've got a green flag denoting a race start. There is. Uh, we've certainly got carts going well, around the track, and we've certainly got a leader. Okay, so well, we'll, we'll 12, pick that up. And, uh, Carmen oh, Simon leading. Carmen Simon with a with a. That's a. Uh, I mean, if that was a jump start, that's going straight into the jump start Hall of Fames uh, because he was quite a way down the order however it does give us a chance uh, now when you look at that go-kart and that crash helmet 
only one thing springs to mind. Yes, it is. And it's, it's, and it's, and, yeah. and it's raining, and it takes your mind back to, you know, a very wet Estoril and a certain Brazilian <laughs> yes. uh, in, a, in a JPS Lotus. You know what? I remember seeing that in a Formula Ford 1600. Ooh. That's how far back I go. Oh, when, yeah. he was, when he was De Silva. Yes, uh, and <laughs> Senna De Silva. Yes, there we are. Now, we, when we went to that uh, camera shot, the lights had already gone out, I think. Henry. Ah, and right, was, okay. So I think. Because they're very, very quick. They flash yes, on, flash yeah, off. Yeah, they're so, very quick this weekend. So he's either, he's either, oh, he's lost a bit of ground there, has Carmen Simon. He's uh, looking, over, uh, looking over and just. That's a problem, isn't it? He oh. slowed right down. Yeah. Um, I mean, I may have done him a, a, a real misfortune by saying that he was a jump start when actually he may have been the only driver actually looking at the at the lights. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We'll, but we'll, certainly, uh, we'll wait and see what, what but, transpires. But he certainly is uh, slowing down. Yeah, but he's slowing down, yes. And uh, and that's left. Not quite sure of the number there. Arthur Bowers, I think, is the driver now. That's taken up the cudgels of the lead. Yeah, uh, that's 98, 98 yeah, Arthur, Arthur Bowers. Bowers. And Noah Wicklow. Uh, no, no, is it Wilco or Wicklow? Wicklow. 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 You'll, you'll continually get that wrong. Oh, yeah. No, I'm a, I'm a Nick and I did last week. Oh, yeah. oh, last month, I mean. Uh, Ollie West, Ernie Wade, and Will Rain. Will. Ah, try and say that after a couple of ciders. <laughs> Will Wainwright. Jonathan Ross can't yeah. say that. Yeah. <laughs> Will was out again at Warden Law for the, for the Warden Law Car Club Spring Series last weekend, and he had a great weekend. Here he is doing uh, another track. Oh, on the calendar, Calman Simon uh, dropping back to the bottom of the field and looks like a retirement. So we will not get to see that Ayrton Senna replica. Can you believe 30 years oh, coming up? 30 yes, years 30. since we lost the great man. Yes, I was, I was going to say, was it 30 years since uh, it was, since his first win in Estoril that we talked about? But no, that would be nearly 40, 40 years. years. Yeah. 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 Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> on. Let's, let's move on. Let's yeah, move on yeah. and talk about let's, Arthur Bowers. Before we upset uh, it, and, before we get upset. And this four, before we start crying, <laughs> yeah. literally. Uh, we've got a four-cart Bambino battle with a change for second place as Ollie West. Now, Ollie West may be doing dual duties again this weekend. We've seen Ollie out on the mighty electric-powered Bambinos. Here he is on the petrol engined C50 Coma Bambino carts. And Ollie West looking very racy indeed through the clubhouse corner. And look how tight they can, they can yep. pull that line through there. And, and, and that's a great camera shot. There's a great example of the, the slipstream effect because uh, Arthur Bowers led on the straight but went to the inside and just Ollie West and Noah Wicklow used the momentum, you know, eight wheels working together and just like, like a Sunday afternoon drive, almost waved at him as they, as, he, as they went past. It was. He couldn't do anything about it, could Arthur, as well. Now behind the top three, which is now Ollie West, Noah Wicklow, and Arthur Bowers, we've got Ernie Weird. Now, Ernie Weird is the pole position driver, remember? And I, I did look at the championship standings there, and I didn't see yeah, Ernie was, Weird was, was he further down. Ah, there he was, 17th. So, he, he, he yeah, he, um, he certainly wasn't anywhere near pole position at last time at Wilton Mill. So, he's having a great run here yeah, this weekend. I have to say, yeah, because I say, looking at his, I mean, he's 22nd in the final, yeah. Ernie Wade, but that doesn't, but looking at the, the points that he gained in the heats of the pre-final, that doesn't look like there was, he was, he wasn't front running all weekend and then no. had a problem in the final. Right, so, yeah. he's, he's just upped his game and, and you will see that, Joe, with, with these youngsters, the six, seven, you know, year olds, you know, you, you will see, uh, you know, drivers with huge leaps in competitiveness from one meeting to the next as things suddenly click and they you know they get brave they get a bit of confidence and what have you i have to remind myself when i'm watching especially the bambinos that some of these drivers are only six years old yes you know i was six or seven years old i was struggling to tie my shoelaces at six years old at six years i still struggle to tie my shoelaces and what astounds me is and if you're watching this at home just when you see these drivers using all of the track yep they are doing that deliberately because of the momentum that you have to carry. The Bambinos are very, very uh, underpowered. Um, they're undertired yep. and underpowered for obvious reasons. Uh, they're yes. six and seven years old. However, they're still doing 45, 50 miles an hour exactly. on the street. So through this turn here, what we're at the clubhouse now, that's a 45, 50 mile an hour yeah, you, corner. And they're six and seven years old, you, turning the steering when they have to. You go to the local shops in your car doing that speed, you get a ticket. That's right. You know, and, and, yeah. and here they are at six, seven, yeah. and, and, and racing inches apart from each other. And, you know, it, it's not as though it's just like, oh, let's just, just drive around as we've got to move for second place there. And I think that was Arthur oh, Bowers. Yes, Arthur oh, Bowers. And, uh, side by uh, side, down side the hill. Was, yeah. No quarter asked and none given. 
But it's that Wicklow having to drop in behind Bowers as they went towards the carousel. It is yeah. indeed. So Wicklow showing discretion being the better part of Valor. He had to let Arthur Bowers go, didn't he? Bowers had a great run through Spoon and then that run down the hill, out of Spoon and then through the left kink and down, plunging down the hill. He had all of that momentum downhill. And here he goes. Wicklow will want that second place back. We are inside the final minute, Henry. Time has flown by for our Bambino runners. And, and here uh, we are going into the last couple of laps at least. And it's not over yet because this time uh, Bowers using the inside line. Oh, and uh, we're going to have three wise Ooh. coming down Dragon Straight. And uh, that was Noah Wicklow deciding I'm not going to work with Bowers. I'm going to swing out wide and try and uh, do a sneaky two for one manoeuvre. It hasn't worked for him. Well, it worked for Bowers because he's got ahead of Ollie West. Yeah. Ollie West had nothing in the toolkit to deal with that, did he? Nothing at all. And if anything, Bowers now pulling away down towards the carousel. Yes, but, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, such as the, the, the drafting capabilities, the slipstream effects, like you say, these underpowered Bambino carts, are the relatively slow speed, relatively slow speeds, that, uh, yeah, you can tuck yourself down behind the NASA panel and uh, just allow the, 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 the cart in front of you to disturb the airflow and just get sucked into the little vacuum and pick up a, a, a couple of miles an hour. Yeah, they, they absolutely do. Here they come then. It'll be the one lap to go board that will be clearly seen by these drivers. So these children, because that's what they are, they're yes. only kids out there, they will know that it's the last lap. And already there, Ollie West moving out to the left. Oh, and he wasn't aware that Noah Wicklow no. had filled the gap he left and a little bit of inadvertent... Wheel yeah, banging, yeah no, that was, that, was that. Completely, that wasn't a drive at all. Now and now, West using that momentum. Oh, sorry, Wicklow using that momentum to take the lead. Yeah, Wicklow used the momentum to great effect. A bit of bum drafting, I think. There, uh, yeah, as he, yeah. As he clattered in, as, it, as uh, Ollie West clattered into him, it sort of fired his car alongside Arthur Bowers, and now we've got a change of lead again as Bowers comes back. Oh, are they no. side by side? Are they? No, they're going to have to slot in because that's a one line piece of racetrack here. Yes, even though these uh, carts are a little bit more narrow than always. There is West back to the inside of Bowers for second. Good move there. And that just gives uh, Wicklow the chance to break clear so he doesn't have to defend into this final corner. And it's a good win. It's a great win, in fact, for uh, Noah Wicklow. And he's happy with that. Yeah, great win indeed. We've, uh, we've got the checkered flag flying as well as the checkered board. And it's Noah Wicklow who takes the first heat, Ollie West takes second place, Arthur Bowers third, Ernie Wade fourth, fifth was Benjamin Shiva Benjamin Shiva from 22nd on the grid yeah, that, to fifth place. We did say that you know, yeah, that, that's yeah. an ex excellent performance there. Yeah, very much. Uh, for Shiva and uh, looking okay, a couple of the drivers a little bit you know, slower than the rest, uh, Nauman, uh, Faison, uh, Will Wainwright seems to have uh, fallen out, uh, but again 18 finishers, which is what you want to see, because at this stage of the young drivers' careers, you just want them to get laps, it's, 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 it's seat time that is all important, as uh, you can see uh, Nauman, Faison uh, crossing the line there but uh, yeah seat time laps is all important so i'm just trying to find a grid yeah yeah let's uh we've got okay, okay yeah yeah eddie will show you what to do yeah. we've been joined in the booth uh once again by uh eddie stewart um who's just gonna who's just gonna decant henry who's just got here himself and now he's lost his job I'll just wait until Eddie puts his... Uh, I haven't got a grid for you, Ed, because I've been waiting for them. So um, while we're waiting for the junior junior Rotax field, who are already in the collecting area... I'll just fade you up, Ed. Um, what I did notice, Eddie, was your grid position there. So what happened in time qualifying? Uh, in time qualifying, I, I got out well. I got out uh, ahead of some other drivers uh, due to somebody... Uh, not starting, so I got out in a good place, but um, set a few laps in, got my fastest lap, but then got held up a little bit by some other drivers, which uh, slowed me down, which I couldn't set a faster lap time. Right, so you got bogged down a bit in the traffic. Yeah. What was the track like? Was it wet, dry? It was on wet. It's, it's it was grippy, but if you were on slicks, it would be oh, quite slippy. What so what were you on? I was on wet. I think everybody was. Right. But even so, you're on wets on a track that 
It's transitioning into dries. Yeah. That's always going to be tricky, isn't it? It was sort of ruining your tyres. Yeah. For the next rounds. And is it? It's. I've heard it's very, very crucial that you, when you are in that period of track condition transition, your tyre pressures are crucial. And if your tyre pressures are wrong by one or two pounds, you 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 can just have no grip whatsoever. Is that? Do you think that was a factor? There was people on the grid with tyre pressure gauges every second, just changing. Yeah, them, yeah, yeah. Keep sure their Literally, eye. as the track was drying yeah. before their very eyes. So yeah, it plays a very big part in when your tyres come on and come off. Good drive though. Good drive through. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about that. Um, in quality. No, no, and you, you've just had your heat, haven't you, Junior Primo? Yeah. Yeah, we were just, Henry and I were just talking about um, um, the Junior Primo class, and we, we mentioned you being where you were in qualifying, but then you came through, oh, I think, sixth, was it? Uh, yeah, I came through to sixth in the heat because cart spinning off at the start and just overtaking and being there when drivers are battling, gaining up on... You're being very th- humble here, Ed. That was a great drive through to six. Then you're saying it was down to the, it was more down to other people. You said they, well, what I saw was you could, because as they were sp- as they were struggling with the conditions, you kept your head and you came through. Yeah, um, keeping your head, keeping composed, and keeping with it is the thing you need to do. Is not let them get away. Don't sit back too much, and try and get some overtakes in when you can. And that's what you did, isn't it? That's what I did. You're Pacey, put your head down. You're going to have to do that in heat too this afternoon as well, aren't you? Because you you carry that time qualifying grid position into the both heats. So what's the plan going into your second heat? Exact same as the first one. Yeah. Yes. Stay there. Stay in with it. And yes. Just try to get, gain more positions. If I get a top top ten, top six, then it will put me in a great place for the super heats. Yes. Yes. What do you like about this championship, Ed? Because we first met you when we were covering the NKC uh, in Minimax. And here you are. Are you going to race the whole season in the car championship? Yes, we, you, yes, we are. You're enjoying the Primo concept? Yeah, we're enjoying, we're enjo- we're enjoying that um, sort of smallish grids compared to this 21 mm-hmm. car field. That's pretty hectic. Pretty. How old are you at the moment, Ed? I'm 12. You're still, you're st- you're still only 12? <laughs> I was there, there's me sitting thinking you were 20. We are talking to you like a 20 year old. Ed, we haven't got a grid, so we, um, we're going to wait for these junior road axe carts to. We haven't got any qualifying information in front of us. Um, in fact, Laura to the rescue. Um, do you want to give us a quick rundown of, of that qualifying uh, list? And that's our grid for this junior road axe first heat. We have Marcel Popacult starting on pole position with Jensen Pitchford. Pitchford? Pritchard. Richard in, in second place with Henry Hurst Rover in third, Casper Tomalaski and Emily Cooper, James Kell, Andrew Dixon, Max Haller, Ewan Howes, Braith Murdoch, Logan Howes, Callum Josh, Lewis Summer, Alison Smith, Jack Robinson, Ben Horner, John J. Buchan, Molly Pung, Riley Morgan, Luke Sawyers, Lewis Holt, Harrison Parnell, Charlie Vary, Elliot Foster, Archie Doherty, Sam Green Gomez, Asin Brown, Gregory Reed, Aidan McDonald, Christia Stowe Stephen of Leon Barlow, Leah Barlow, Calvin Moffat. Excellent. We're already going then. I think we've got a green flag. Let me just confirm we have. We certainly look like we have. No, we have not. There's debris on the track. Uh, there is a false start flag there just on the street. Thank you, Paul. That uh, lets us know that we've. Uh... Thank you, Laura. That was spot on to our rescue there, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Car 226. Now then, three digit numbers on our junior road axe carts. 226 is not on my sheet, is he? He's further up the grid if he is. No, so he didn't He didn't come off the start there, 226. We What's 226, was it? Yeah. Why isn't he on that list? Anyways, we will move on. I did see 226, did I? It wasn't 256, was it? No, we're not going to say that, Ed, just in case it wasn't. Do you like our green room, Laura? It's very nice, isn't it? Yeah, I brought that saw for myself. Here we go. We've got a green flag this time, though, Ed. And look how, look how we went through turn one there. Three abreast in that second place position. That's allowed our leader, I think that's Callum Gosh, who's got ahead of everyone and has been able to eke out a bit of a gap. As they go through 
spoon bend down the hill to the carousel head. They're going through the lead up. That's pulled a small gap. Marcel Popical has lost out massively in this. Where is he now? Two three five is our leader. According to what I've just seen there. Um, that yeah. bears no reflection whatsoever on our timing screen in front of us. So we'll wait until that settles in. Here they come then to complete lap number one and we should get the thing settling down on our timing screen here to give us an idea of who is where. It's Kasper Tomalewski on the number 220. That's Kamaleski. It is 235. Jensen Pritchard who shows at the front. Now, whether Has that is it... Yes, Pritchard is, is Tomaleski just took the lead, or is Pritchard still there? Pritchard has, I think, got a transponder issue. So that is the leader there, and that's cart number two, who is Harry Hurst Grover, who got by Pritchard. Two, three, five is the second cart in that screenshot there. Here they come. So, so. Jensen Pritchard is not showing any laps. Off up and towards the spoon curve. Harry Hurst Grover is our leader. Ed, and already, do you think, ah, there's a move for third. This is going to be fr frantic as ever, the junior Rotax, aren't they? It's, it's very hard to keep an eye on who's doing what because their qualifying session was a little bit mixed track condition. We've got people out of place and some faster drivers are down further down the grid so do you think that's what's happening here Ed where you've got a lot of movement in that early stage yeah you've got some drivers that aren't particularly good in the wet and have suddenly come good with in the dry and they're trying to get through quickly and uh, the drivers that are good in the wet are, are still there they're still fighting but as we can see the 215 trying to pass I think he came from further back yeah that's Addison Smith he came from way back he had a bit of a, and a spin there as the Emily Cooper, that is, the MLC driver getting spun out there. was a little bit of a coming together there. That was inevitable, Ed, the way there was, the, we could see that happening, couldn't we? You could see that it was three wide, it was two wide. It was, they were all fighting, all wanted to get past. And I think she probably knew what was happening. Yeah, we just got crowded out a bit. This is, this is allowed Harry Hurst Grover to eke away and we're at half distance in this heat now and already a 1.2 second gap to Addison Smith Kasper Tomalewski I think is the car behind we've got Jensen Pritchard now appearing in fourth so th that transponder issue has been rectified there he is there Jensen Pritchard just coming through and into our onto our screens there Jensen has gone with I th I'm trying to see who which team is that it's Ulta Minar, isn't it? Yeah, Jensen now with Ulta Minar. He was with Hunter Motorsport last He's season. He's in my awning. He's in your awning, He's is in he? My oh, right. Is he with Ulta Minar? Are you with Ulta Minar? Uh, we're just in privateers with Daniel Hartley and. Ah, right. So is Jensen in there with you? Yes. Oh, well, say hello from me, will he? I will. Because he's currently in fourth. He's got Andrew Dixon, Ben Horner in sixth, Lewis Sumner, Sumner in seventh, Max Haller in. Eighth, ninth is Callum Gorsh, and James Kell rounds off the top ten. But that's where the challenge is going to come, Ed. So you are Andrew Dixon. What can you tell me is going through his head right now? Right there behind. Actually, that's the cart behind. That's Ben Horner. That's the cart we need to look at there. Ah, there's the move. What happened there, Ed? Uh, I think the car in front of him went too wide. Went too wide around the corner. And then Andrew Dixon got a move through and slipped it through got quite lucky there I'd say. Yeah so Pritchard slid wide there going into the compression I think um, or as they come out of Devil's Elbow in towards the compression I do love that view of the carts coming over the brow there that's Andrew Dixon with the black nose now and he's pulling away he's pulling away Ed. I don't think Pritchard's done yet I think he's still got something left I think he's still going to have a go he is being hassled somewhat though Ben Horner now is hassling Jensen Pritchard right on his bumper and likewise Lewis Sumner on the bumper oh, of Ben Horner. Shot. What happened there, Eddie? He was pushed from behind. I think his nose is down. I think his nose is down. Down the straight. What was that about his nose, Eddie? He, he 
got a bit of a chance from behind. Right. Pushed him wide. And I think that knows it's down. I Is that Pritchard? No. Uh, who's in front of Pritchard? Uh, Dixon. I think it's Dixon. This is this is great stuff. So the the cart there with the blue and white nose section. Then we've got the orange cart of uh, Jensen Pritchard. Just behind Pritchard is Lewis Sumner. The leading battle has gone off and ahead of this, but now we've got what looks like a, a seven cart train from fourth. Well, that's fifth, sixth, seventh. Lewis Sumner ahead of Pritchard. That's what we saw. And Pritchard, once uh, Pritchard being left behind somewhat, again, Andrew Dixon got past Pritchard, he disappeared. Lewis Sumner doing likewise. Jensen Pritchard now uh, trying to hold on to what is now sixth place, and he's under immense pressure from Callum Gorsh. There they are there, the two orange carts. And getting bumped there, Eddie, did you see that? That was kind of, it didn't look deliberate, it looked inadvertent. Just watch these here. through the compression there and that oh behind Pritchard Eddie there is all sorts of carnage breaking out yeah Pritchard has sort of he sort of got in the way while they're battling and that's Max Haller it's three too wide oh that's not he's good is it on the grass. he's lost out yeah About three places there on the grass there up towards Spoon it'll be the one lap to go board next time by for Kasper Tomaleski, our current junior Rotax champion, defending champion, still carrying the 220 number on his cart, whereas Harry Hurst Grover carrying the number two as vice champion. This gaggle of carts tripping over one another through the compression. They have to sort themselves out before they go through the final turn. And we've got a change of position there as the 272 Ben Horner has come through in ninth being demoted down the order you got Addison Smith in the lead not Kasper Tomalowski is that who's in the, in the lead Addison Smith Addison oh Smith. my yes he is Addison Smith it's Tomalowski who's dropped a third so take no notice of what's on your screen it's it, Addison it's Smith who's leading it says one by his name, but there's... Yeah, what's happened there is our, our timing screen on, on, our, on our TV monitors has not scraped the timing and scoring, so we'll uh, get James on that as quickly as we can. There's your top ten, Eddie. Do you want to take us through as we hit the checkered flag for heat number one for our junior row tax? Casper Tomanowski, current? No, no, Casper. Not this one. Addison Smith. I, I got caught there with that. Alison Smith currently leads with Harry Hurst Grover following in close behind. Uh, Captain Olaski in third place with Andrew Dixon in fourth. Lewis Summoner in P5. Jensen Pitchford, a good drive from him in P6. Callum and Gosh and Jack Robinson. Max Haller, James Kell and Ben Horner in the top 11. Thank you, Eddie. So um, you've got another heat coming up. So what do you do now before that heat? What's your preparation? Do you go and uh, lie down in a dark room or something? and Look at the data, um, analyse what's what went wrong last time, how to fix that, how to get faster. And, um, yeah, just calm down. Don't don't go running around. And don't get too excited? No, don't get too excited. Don't let the nerves get to you? No, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. And you will enjoy it, of course? Yes. Yes, that's the main thing. Thanks, Ed. Thanks for popping in. Um, we'll let you hand the headset back to Henry. I told you he was good, didn't I? I, I, I? He's far too good for my liking. Thanks, Eddie. Go back to being a racing driver, mate. Thanks again. Great stuff. Eddie Stewart there, who will be out again in the Junior Primo class. Thank you, Laura, for bringing Eddie in. Eddie has aspirations and well, uh, asp aspirations uh, to work in in media. He was telling me. He's yeah. looking for. A, I mean, he's only four. He's only twelve. So he's got plenty of time ahead of him I'm going to say is it P45 already <laughs> I've already just got you <laughs> well funny, funny enough I mean I, I, I first remember Eddie uh, when he was uh, in the Daniel Ricciardo series oh really going yes. back 
the twenty twenty end of twenty twenty, and we did a feature on him. And uh, speaking to his mum just then, yeah, and he goes, oh, we, did, we did this feature, and I, you know, interviewed him back and forth, and he, he sort of he looked at that, and thought, oh, I quite like speaking on uh, behind the microphone. So yeah, right, so it's but your it, fault. Uh, it's fortunate. <laughs> it, that, that is my fault. But I mean, it's it, it's great. Oh, we've got a, a situation there with a couple oh, of drivers. Henry, that have, uh, I know I know you were looking over our shoulders there, but if that junior road axe, um, what can I say? It was very Junior rotax ish It was very Junior rotax ish wasn't it? It's like, um, I, I know we had Eddie came in and sat there, and, and like as a, as a novice commentator, that was a baptism of fire for Eddie uh, there. To yes. keep, I couldn't keep tabs on what was happening down the field there and down the order. Well, I mean, things happen very, very quickly, and um, the junior road tax drivers, yeah, there's a lot of them here that are very experienced uh, in other championships. Kasper, uh, Kasper Tomalewski commentated on him uh, numerous times across very different uh, number of different championships. Max Haller, Callum Ghosh, the same. But then you've got drivers that this is their first experience of uh, of, of sort of national level uh, of racing. And uh, it can get a little bit too much. Of course, the weather isn't helping. It stopped spitting with rain, but it's very cold. It's very overcast. And that means that the tarmac um, doesn't warm up. It doesn't take as much grip. And it can still be quite slippery. And, and, and the track is cold. I know it's cold outside, but we call it the track is green. Yeah. Uh, there's been a lot of moisture that has gone down over it, uh, which has taken all the residual rubber uh, off off the track. The... Uh, um, the Mojo tyres, Dunlop tyres, you've got Leconte tyres uh, being used, so th- you know, at least three different uh, brands of, of, of tyre being used. But of course, when it rains, it takes all that rubber off the circuit. And oh, if we don't get any more rain, and let's keep our fingers and toes crossed that we don't, uh, then you'll see you know, the racing line, a lot more rubber gets laid down as we look uh, down the valley. That's very Welsh down the valley at the it's at the very club, Welsh at the clubhouse <laughs> and the scrutineering area on the left hand side of your screen and that's our, our camera position from the uh, the balcony of the uh, clubhouse and the first spotting of uh, Dan Ashton's red trainers and um, is yellow ear muffs yellow ear muffs red trainers keeping his ears very warm the, those muffs yes well I mean he, he's a <laughs> And uh, so his, I know his mum Linda will be watching, and so there we go. You can chalk that one off your, uh, uh, you know, cart championship bingo card. Dan Ashton's red trainers and yellow muffs have already been spotted and mentioned. Yes, and will be mentioned at every opportunity uh, across well, the weekend. Yes. Oh, she, um, she met, she, she, no, we won't mention how much weight he's put on. Oh, sorry, Dan. Sorry. Now you're <laughs> gloating, Henry, because you've lost a bit of weight. I, I know. I, so it's, you're gloating, mate. You're gloating. <laughs> You're picking on him. I, I, I am. We're, I not, am allowed, ho- we're not going to do that in this not, No, we're not allowed to pick on Dan. No, this, no. This I know it's easy, but we're not yes, going to. we're not going to. Yes. Okay, we'll refrain. <laughs> um, we've got uh, some carts being cleared up, so we're about to get going with our Intermax heat number one. This is the Intermax that we are more familiar with for the last couple of seasons. The 950 chassis, the narrower tyre. Remember when uh, Minimax Intermax yes. was the fatter tyre, the larger chassis. This is a much better idea for me. I think the MSUK got behind this idea of, of, of bringing the kids onto the smaller, the smaller chassis and, and the, the tyre as well, I think, is the important thing because the, the grip level that those Minimax carts were be able to achieve, yeah, or you had these kids the, hanging on to them yes. through the corners and being thrown out the carts virtually. And, and now it, it brings it in line with uh, you know, Intermax or this, this, sort of le- this level of racing around the world in Europe. Um, it's, you know, in, in Europe and, and, and other, uh, other, other countries, other continents, uh, this is the, the, the size of chassis they use, the size of tyre they use. and That's uh, sensible, isn't it? Yeah, and when drivers were going from the UK, they were winning the Minimax Championship in the UK, getting the tickets to the Rotax Grand Finals, and suddenly they were turning up and they have to race a cadet-sized chassis or a, a yes. micro-sized chassis, Completely which, different. which threw them off kilter a little bit. Let's have a quick rundown of the grid. It's our smallest grid of the weekend in the max with only 11 carts uh, that have come out to qualify. In fact, 10 carts came out to qualify. Uh, no time given by someone at the back. We'll come to him in a moment. Max Gilman's on the pole with Jensen Sale alongside. JJ Plowman on row two with Harvey Bacon. And then we've got Oscar Roach and Nathan Edwards. Uh, George Ralston and Drew Davidson are on row four. Row five is Sandro Kemp and Fraser Anderson. And it's Thomas Jackson who rounds off the 11 cart field with no time in qualifying. I'm not sure what exactly happened to Thomas, but no time given for him. But he is out there. I can spot 11, 11 go-karts circulating. 
uh, as we look up towards you know the north end of the circuit and uh, again you know you there are there, we're very very fortunate Joe we'll talk about this but I mean you could, there's there's few places in the world better to watch uh, any sort of racing than 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 here you know some of the uh, the vista as it were yes. is, uh, is particularly impressive not and that I, these drivers are going to care about it because they're about to go racing they are but before they do that i've just got to say glanny gores is kind of unique insofar as you haven't got any tires in the middle of the track no you've no. got these beautiful green areas as we go green see that segue there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. as we go <laughs> expertly done through, through turn one and on towards spoon We've got a nice sort of breakaway there for the first two, a bit of a gap, and then the rest of, well, third place is quite lonely, actually. But then we've got the gaggle of carts coming over the brow and into our view. Yeah, no, Max Gilman, uh, a very experienced uh, driver in, in Bambinos. A lot of these drivers obviously were, uh, came through the Bambino ranks. There's a move for the race lead as they come up the hill, and that would be, I think that's Harvey Bacon in the 180 cart who has moved into uh, top spot. Uh, Great move from the second row. Yeah, now, of course, uh, look at J.J. Plowman. I wonder, is that, is that a relation of Martin Plowman? I don't know. I, I don't will, know. I will, I don't I will know. endeavour to find out, uh, because uh, speaking of Martin Plowman on a podcast the other night, uh, you know, again, oh, yeah. sports car driver, yeah, yeah, yeah you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, um, uh, you know, there's, ex-carter. There's the uh, gesticulation there from Harvey Bick and the, the, the point. Oh, and oh, he slides it, wide, very wide in a spoon, went all the way to the outside of the track. That's allowed Jensen sail through and into the lead. So he was pointing at his helmet, wasn't he, saying, let's work together. However, it, I think he was more focused on that and less focused on his breaking point. But that's the second or third time we've seen the leader come over that brow and just, you know, because they haven't got a cart in front of them to uh, sort of judge the braking, and they just pu push things a little bit too far and um, losing, losing time. And he's lost one position, but... Thankfully for Harvey Bacon, he hasn't lost too much time and he's still in the slipstream in the draft as they complete uh, what would be their second lap. And uh, yeah, Drew Davidson has uh, dropped to the back of the field. But uh, now Harvey Bacon is right back on the rear bumper of, uh, of Jensen Sales' cart and uh, following him through the spoon curve and down the hill. He'll be kicking himself going down the hill towards the carousel because he made a mistake going into spoon and allowed that lead to be lost to Jensen Seal. He's got a lot of work to do now, Henry, in getting that back. And he's not going to be able to do anything about it through this part of the racetrack here at Glanigors as it's a pretty much a one-line piece of racetrack here through the compression, through the left-hander, and then down towards the final turn. And I've got to say, that is a massively off-camber final yes, turn here. Yes, it, it you is. You don't realise how you can kind of see it from our grid cam. And it's, it's very tempting as well to have that lunge up the inside, especially the closing stages. But as we saw in the last race, with two carts off at the side of the circuit, those lunges don't always... Uh, come to fruition because of the off-camber nature, because it's, it, yeah, you, you're carrying so much momentum from downhill. But Harvey Bacon, speaking of momentum, he's got his momentum back, and especially through this this next corner here, this left-hander. Um, oh, ah, slippery surface flags oh, are out. There we go. And there's somebody has uh, uh, spun off that. I think is that ah uh, JJ Plowman and Thomas Jackson have uh, come a cropper. I'm not sure whether that overtake from Bacon was under yellow. And, and that's a Battenberg flag. Ah, yes, a Battenberg flag. It's a, not slippery surface. I do apologise. So, oh, right. So, it wasn't uh, that yeah, was yeah, the Battenberg yeah. you saw? Right, it was the Battenberg, okay. not the slippery. And, and Harvey Bacon has uh, instantly allowed uh, uh, Jensen Sale to uh, get back into the lead. Right. So, what's the Battenberg flag? I can hear everybody, everyone at home screaming. If this, if you're new to karting, it's basically you might be familiar with a virtual safety car in Formula One or. Uh, or the like, well, the leading driver basically has to slow down and the field have to gather up behind them and then continue round. It is kind of like a virtual safety car. Yeah. Or, or like when, what, what do they call it, when the lead driver takes over the safety car in Formula 1 well, yeah, or they, becomes the safety car. They are, yeah, they're, they're the yeah. de facto pace car. That's you know, right, they're yes. The, they're yeah. the safety car, yeah. you know, which, which we're seeing you know, more and more of. And I uh, have to say, uh, you know, I've been... Uh, all over the world commentating so far this year and the British drivers know their flags 
much better than drivers in other nations. Well, you've just been to America for, for yes. quite a chunk of time, weren't you? Yeah. Two big and, events there. Uh, and, and, and I was and there surprised was, that when... Really? Yeah, because they use a double yellow. They hold two yellow flags out on a big pole yes. to signify that. And, and um, but Is that uh, kind of a full course caution? Full course caution, yeah. which uh, some of the drivers uh, in one particular race weren't aware of. Oh, really? Uh, uh, yeah, one driver went from 23rd to 3rd in one lap and, Good. What, and wondered, <laughs> why, <laughs> wondered why everyone was letting him go. <laughs> you know, it's very, very civil of you. Thank I, I, you, thank you, thank you. I ran a driver in, in a brick car race once who did that. Mm. And he was coming on the radio to me saying, I've got another one. I've got <laughs> another one. I think I'm not surprised, mate. We're under a safety car. <laughs> yeah. Sure enough, he got dragged into the street yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 during the six-hour race. Yeah, the, uh, the, 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 you've got another one, great. The, the stewards want you, need your <laughs> yeah. attention. Bring your wallet. Yeah, I'm reminded me to tell you the full story over dinner. I can't really do it on a broadcast. Um, we've got the clock ticking. The clock ticks away yep. whilst we're under this Battenberg flag. And Harvey Bacon will continue to control the field. Um, he needs to be heads up for when we go green because he will be the first driver that gets a chance to restart. Yeah. Still splashes of rain on the camera lens, Henry. So there's still a pre- little bit of precipitation in the air. Um, and people say, why are we under uh, Battenberg flag conditions? Obviously, there were two drivers at the side of the circuit, and they wanted to make sure the drivers were okay before they allowed racing to continue, which I believe is going to happen now. We are indeed going green. And of course, when it's an adult kart race and carts go off at the side, the adult is strong enough to pull the car out of harm's way. Yeah. What happens with uh, kids races are the kids aren't strong enough and have to get assisted at each and every occasion. So that's why we and uh, safety is the is a virtue really. It comes our priority. So we wouldn't hesitate in putting the Battenberg flag out or indeed the red flag in more serious instances uh, and as- because we are dealing with children. Yeah, especially uh, even more uh, to the point as well because there's been the, that grass is so sodden and muddy that uh, you get a wheel off and the car will just stick in the mud and, yeah. it, it, you know, that will be that will be all she wrote. But uh, we've had one lap of the restart, so 30 seconds plus... Is it 30 seconds plus one lap or plus two laps? It's plus one lap. Plus one lap yeah. to go. And Bacon is once again looking to the inside on Jensen's sail, and that's a good move. Can he get the cart sort of lined up correctly for Spoon? Yes, he can. And uh, Nathan Edwards and Max Gilman in third and fourth, they're not far off either. So Bacon, having given that Jensen Seal, uh, the lead back to Jensen Seal under the Battenberg, has now got it legitimately back. Harvey Bacon on the number 180 will lead across the line this time by, and by my estimation, we'll see the one lap to go board as t- uh, the clock has ticked down, no time left on the clock through the compression towards the final stage of the lap through the final turn. There's the one lap to go board. A welcome sight, I would imagine, for Harvey Bacon. He's got one more lap to hold off everybody. And Max Gilman there, the cart in third place, the 169. Jensen Seal down the inside of and through and into Spoon. Jensen Seal's the bright yellow cart on the outside, and he has to relinquish that, didn't he? Yeah, Max Gilman, he he got the position. He got the the, the, the momentum behind him, and uh, I think quite a smart move there from Seal to not try and go side by side around the outside of Spoon Curve. you know, thinking of the championship, you know, this is one half of today's racing. Oh, there's a move for oh. the race lead, Gilman, and that looks like his teammate. They've got, both got Thule Motorsport graphics on them, but uh, certainly Gilman looking racy. Gilman does look racy, and down the inside at that very off camera final turn, and that's almost a three wide finish. Not quite three wide for Max Gilman, though, who took the uh, he took the win by 88 thousandths of a second, would you believe, at the flag. Harvey Bacon, who we stole it off at the final turn, came second. Jensen Sill was third, literally nose to tail. So 88 thousandths of a second between Gilman in first and Bacon in second. And then Bacon, 61 thousandths of a second to Jensen Sill in third. That's how close that race was. Only half a second to Nathan Edwards in fourth and another four tenths to Fraser Anderson in fifth. George Ralston was sixth. Oscar Roach, seventh. Eighth was Sandro Kemp. Drew Davidson, ninth. Tenth was JJ Plowman. And rounding off the 11 cart field was uh, Thomas Jackson and JJ Plowman, who we lost, of course, on lap two. Yes, and uh, Ralston, as a novice driver, the number 199, very impressive top six finish as well for Ralston. Uh, ahead of Roach, Kemp, Davidson and uh, Plowman. But um, the next race is our... Mighty Bambinos. Now this yes, is. A, I haven't got a grid for them actually. 
but I mean, I, what I what I am really really pleased to see is the amount of mighty bambinos that oh, we've it's got. Oh, great, isn't it? Uh, you know, the future is here and the future is quiet. It's fabulous, isn't it? It's um, the future is. <laughs> I've just realised what you said. There. <laughs> it is. It's like I thought me hearing had gone to Wilton Mill when they went out. <laughs> um, I'm just going to try and find talk amongst yourselves while I try and find out the grid uh, in timing and scoring. Um, and, uh, again, just looking at some of the names uh, on the good one name that uh, sort of uh, the, the screams out to me is uh, talk about the legacy is Felix Tandy. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah. You know, Felix Tandy. Yeah. That is uh, Nick Tandy's Nick, kid. Nick Tandy's uh, uh, son, of course. Uh, Nick and his uh, Nate, late brother Joe were, again familiar faces, names throughout uh, junior junior formula racing, single seater racing, sports car racing. You know, well, it, it, it's last, your, what was Nick? Nick is here. Sparring yes, yes, Felix. Yes. He was last weekend at Sebring, at I would Sebring. imagine. Yep. Very, didn't, very have a, didn't have a great time. Ended up with two laps down on the lead. Um, I forget why Nick did t- Nick Damon did yep. tell me wh- why that was. Nick was over there. Nick Damon was over there. Nick Damon, who is usually here for Karting Live TV, is, is uh, unable to be with us this weekend. As A, it's his birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Nick. But more importantly, B... He's giving away his stepdaughter. Ah, I, I, you know how many I hope times he gets a good price for it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, how many times in life do you get married? Absolutely. Two, three times. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so you, you've got to make yes. the most of these days. Yeah. So Nick is giving his uh, daughter away, and uh, and best of luck to Connie and uh, and the rest of the family. And I hope Nick gets a, to, a chance to be very sweaty on the dance floor yeah. as he's renowned to be. But I mean, from 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 Sebring, Florida, last weekend to North Wales this weekend. I mean, I can you know this. You squint, you know, just just squint enough. You could almost make out to be. No, you can't make it out no, to be the Florida no. runways you've at been, all. You, yeah, I've bitten off more than I can chew. There, there is there is no segue that you could lead this one end Not of the motorsport all. world to the other. Um, but this will be another standing start. Now, looking back, while uh, while Joe tries to find a, a, a grid, or we try and uh, cobble a grid together off uh, based off our, our, our visual. Um, Ralph Martin, he was the winner of the final, and it was a perfect weekend for Ralph at uh, Wilton Mill. Ollie West and Felix Tandy filled out the final podium at Wilton Mill. Um, Helix, uh, Heath Smith, rather, but he sits third in the championship, ahead of uh, Tandy, behind West, um, after the first of five rounds. Um, 18 drivers... Uh, at Wilton Mill. We've got a fair number, a similar number here as well. I've got the timing. Okay, here we go. Your the grid dynasty is, continues. Just as the la- well, so, now we need a couple of the drivers at the back to sort of get into the wrong uh, position <laughs> while we can run through the grid very quickly. Nick Tandy, I can assure you, will have a bit of a tear in his eye here. Oh, dear. Because he's, his boy is on pole position. Ah. A 61.189 was Felix Tandy's qualifying time. He was uh, 0.142 quicker than Oliver Woodhall. Uh, Ralph Martin and Ollie West are next. Ollie, uh, double duties for Ollie. He's already in the. Uh, he's all, also in the C50s, uh, the petrol engine carts. Uh, Heath Sim and Junior Wright are on row three. Row four is Jack Harper and Eva Garrett. Uh, Maximilian Mikalski and Arthur Thompson are on row five. Row six is Hugo Wilson. W- sorry, Hugo Williams and Jensen James Williams are on row six. Frank Pearson, Etienne Gardner, Nico Mohan and Hadley Jarvis, Arthur Bath, uh, Kai Ogunsoy. And then we've got uh, Christian Doshi and Henry Henry Ailes, who is at the back of the grid. Uh, they have been given the lights out, and away they go. And it's the number 28 of Tandy, who leads from pole position through clubhouse. And already, off he goes, up the hill. Change for second there, is it? Not quite, Henry. No, as they go up the hill, uh, you know, in blissful silence, uh, these might e these the electric uh, powered carts uh, no internal combustion engines so we can't call them engines they are power units uh, fixed sprocket gearing to keep it simple uh, but you know as as we're in the gesta oh and that's uh, Felix Tandy running a little bit wide coming out of uh, the carousel now that's interesting Tandy has got the old school metal rear bumper on his cart and everybody else has uh, got the plastic rear bumper as uh, no, Tandy side oh, by side with pressure. Ralph Martin. He's under a massive amount of pressure, his little Felix. As uh, he comes through the final turn, he will show leading lap one from pole position. Ralph Martin 
is right on his bumper through clubhouse. But look at that. Look at the... Inst- you know what? It, it, it's only his second race meeting. And already he knows to hug the inside line and defend that line it's over the brow of the hill and into Spoon. God, it's almost like his dad knows what he's talking about, yeah, isn't it? Well, <laughs> well, he's a one. Felix listening to his dad. Yeah. yeah doing as he says. Um, but now, of course, you know... You know Defending this early isn't always a tactic that will endear you to uh, <laughs> the drivers around you. However, you know, the first, I mean, cast your mind back, Joe, the first time that you ever you sort of like found yourself leading any sort of competitive race, you think, right, the instant uh, in, instant reaction is, right, defend, must, must maintain this lead. I, I used to defend when there was no one to defend from. It's like sort of that kept me lap times down. This is a great battle at the lead. Yes. Felix Standy showing great racecraft in not so much defensive driving, just keeping to his line and keeping the pace up. Here goes Ralph Martin onto his rear bumper. And Ralph Martin oh. there oh. trying to get down the inside, the right hand side of Felix Standy, <laughs> and there wasn't a gap there. No. There that... wasn't a gap there. The three behind, by the way, that's Oliver Woodhall, Ollie Weston Jr. right. There's a three-card battle there that's developing for third, fourth, and fifth. Meanwhile, I'm not quite sure. That's got to be because he put a wheel on the grass. That's why he lost that momentum. Yes, uh, 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 Felix Tandy already learning, thou shalt not pass. Uh, so it's Tandy, Martin, Woodall, West, and uh, Junior Wright. And here goes Ralph Martin again. He gets alongside going up the hill. Now, can he tuck to the inside? Not quite. Um now, I have to say, looking at Tandy's cart there, 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 there there's another, you know, that's uh, that, that blue and yellow. I think with, as you get drivers, that's a Napa liveried uh, cart there. It looks like it looked like well, a I remember, Nick, Nick's a big uh, a big NASCAR fan. Right? Yeah, ah, so he's a Chase Elliott fan there. Or yes. it almost, almost looks like a Phoenix, a, a, a Fina oil as, uh, as Tandy gets showed the outside there by Ralph Martin. And uh, Ollie West goes through as well. So you'll find this with, with sort of second and third generation drivers when they're in karting and they're not with a, a, a team, as it were, that dictate which livery you run. You'll find that uh, people getting a little bit creative and harking back to days of yore <laughs> in terms of their graphics kit, which gives us commentators uh, something more to sort of smile about through misty eyes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, do, I do like bold colours. I think we've got another change yes. for the lead as into That's the lead has got on, gone Ollie West. Ollie West, yes. Uh, coming back at him. So, so Ralph Martin will not show as leading this heat at all unless he can find a way by Ollie West. Ollie West uh, snuck inside of him at the spoon and Ollie West and Ralph Martin beginning to pull away now from Felix Tandy. Felix holding on to that third place. I think that's Junior right behind him. We'll confirm that as they come through and across the line to complete what will be four laps. These two still absolutely together. though. Ollie West, Ralph Martin, Felix Standy, solid in third. And if anything, Henry's coming back at those leading two. Yeah, he is. Now, it's, again, now he's had a chance to sort of get his composure back and sort of refocus his mind. And, of course, there's the, the, the disappointment of losing the lead. And then you can occasionally get a little bit ruffled, you know, in terms of, you know, you lose a bit of concentration and focus. Now he's sort of back into that zone. Uh, Henry Hales, I've noticed, has gained a lot of positions. He's up at the sixth, sixth place off camera. But this is a great battle. Uh, the top four have pulled away from Junior Wright a little bit, and what I enjoy, um, you know, it's it's these are the youngest drivers. You can easily sort of be critical, oh, that mistake there, mistake there, but that's not the point of this racing. No. They're learning, and you know, sometimes it's there's no fear, and it's like, think, well, that's not where you're supposed to make a move. Well, they don't know any different. They're no. going to try. No, no, they do, they don't know a textbook. They haven't read a textbook. They can, yeah. you know, they, they're still reading. Uh, they're still c- doing the, colouring yeah, in school. Still, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Here we go then through clubhouse for the sixth time on lap six and Felix Tandy has indeed he's driven a couple of very smooth laps yep. and now he's back on the bumper of that second place Ralph Martin Oliver Woodall is not that far behind in fourth but it looks to me as though Ralph Martin who hasn't exactly been dropped by Ollie West Ollie West maintaining the lead and they're through into third or is he Ralph Having to, oh, and oh. wheel banging his oh. way back into that third place Felix Tandy looking to his right I'm not sure how that's going to go down, what? but uh, we'll we'll leave that one to the stewards. I think as Oliver Woodall has to settle for fourth, L- livery it up like a NASCAR and drive it like a NASCAR. Rubbings racing. That's uh, <laughs> but it has cost them both time, and it means that uh, with a minute to go, West and Martin have uh, have got the lead battle all to themselves. Now Tandy and Woodall, if they play nice and work together, they they can 
close the gap because I'm sure that West will have to defend from Martin, which will slow the pair of them down. And I think we're going to start seeing maybe with 45 seconds to go. There's yeah. Martin checking over his shoulder. He knows he's got just enough time to make one move uh, side by side for third. Yeah, nearly. He, he looked over his shoulder and there was no one there. He didn't yeah. expect that, did he? No. He, expect, he didn't expect to see Felix Tanya drop by. There's a challenge for third. Going to happen at Spoon this time. Oliver Woodall down the inside of Felix Tanny. Felix trying to come back and again side by side I think down the hill towards Carousel Not Tandy having to drop in behind the orange helmet of Oliver Woodhull orange helmet orange cart there standing proud easy to spot these two battling for third and fourth there's the leaders side by side into the right hander at uh, Devil's Elbow that one the top it's of the, the a, top kind of, of a hill. double apex corner that isn't it two, yes. two corners in one and I think Ralph Martin is having to settle for second place It'll be the one lap to go board this time by Henry, though, as Ollie West comes across the line. Seven laps completed. It'll be eight laps completed when they hit the flag. Now, see, Martin went for a move there at the top of the hill. And, of course, he had to back out of it. He lost a lot of momentum. But look at the amount of momentum he's managed to gain. He's up the inside and uh, takes the lead going down Dragon Straight. West tucks back in, almost clips uh, the rear bumper of uh, Martin's car as he tries to tuck back into the slipstream. But... Uh, just on there side by side. So oh. West was able to say, oh, oh, and there's a spin for Tandy. Just getting a little bit over enthused there. And he comes back on just in front or just behind Junior Wright. But it's now a three way battle of the lead with half a lap to go. I think that actually caused Tandy to have that spin there as he came over Spoon. The, th the three carts ahead of him just kind of concertined up, didn't they? And they were yeah. almost tripping over one another. They've settled down, though, and they're going to drive to the flag. In first, second and third place order of Ollie West, Ralph Martin and Oliver Woodall. Unless it changes in the next couple of bends, they've got one more off-camber right hand. And down the inside has gone Martin. And he's going to make it happen. He has indeed. He snatches that, steals it. Call the police, someone. Because Ralph Martin stole the lead there on the final turn. And he will take that heap number one win. Ralph Martin takes the win. Ollie West second, Oliver Woodall third. Junior right four, Felix Stanley recovering for fifth place, Henry Hill sixth, Heath Smith was seventh, eighth was Maximilian Mikalski, and it was Ava Garrett and Jensen James Williams that rounded off the top ten. Those Bambinos, you know. Oh, um, very, very impressive. And I mean, that's the sixth race we've had today, Joe, and that's the second last corner pass it is. for the lead and the win. That was made cleanly. And I didn't think we'd see any passes at that, at that last turn. It's, it's one of those mid-speed corners. Yeah, we what, always what, think... I, what I wanted to say before I forget, <laughs> those were electric carts. Yes, I, I completely and forgot about that. Don't they, and I know. I completely don't, forgot yeah, about that. Which don't is, they race well? Yes, they, they, they race very well. Because there are some very... I mean, I've driven an E20, which is a senior uh, electric cart. Um, and it, I've got to say, the sceptic in me... It was, the, the, it was powered out of me in about 10 seconds flat because really? the senior electric carts are, the, res, the throttle response is obviously a bit different from a combustion engine and the braking, you'd think the braking is either instant or all or nothing and it's not. It's, it's far more progressive than you would imagine. Right. But, the, but the actual throttle response, well, it's like anything electric, it's, it, it's, it's mind-bogglingly fast. We had two mighty Bambinos. Ava Garrett was one of them. Yep. Um, who's here today, on the grid of C50 Comas at Warden Law last weekend for the right. Spring Series. And Ava Garrett went from the third row every time into the lead. Yeah. Just and then because of Ava's experience, she wasn't experienced as, as the, as the uh, drivers ahead of her, they would then sort of force yeah. their way by. Now, yeah. the, the, the parents were telling the kids on the C50s, you've got to get past Ava Garrett as quickly, you've got to get past <laughs> that electric car as quickly as possible. Very, very difficult to overtake same lap times, but, but in a completely different way. Yes. Absolutely fired out of a cannon off the line. Yeah, but that was a, it was an excellent race. And yeah, we, we, the fact that we don't... Make, and that's what, that's what the sort of the electric karting community wants us to... They, they want these races to go on without anyone mentioning. Oh, it's electric, by the way, because you don't see the difference. You can hear the difference, but in terms of the way they race, how they teach the drivers, uh, and what they teach the drivers is uh, exactly the same as... Uh, uh, as uh, your normal traditional in internal combustion it's engine exactly racing. Exactly the same. It raced really well, and these two com old competitors, uh, sorry, old commentators, no, well, yeah. uh, <laughs> sat here, were not. Uh, 
if they could just air filter, like sort of like spray Castrol R around the track <laughs> yeah, during the what time. A, what a great idea that would be take oh, off in my head. And That's that. Leo Hunt, who was on the back of the grid oh. here, and he's had a pull. So problems for Leo Hunt in qualifying. Yes. And that continues into the race. Yeah, that's quite a popular parking spot on the uh, the rolling lap show. That's the second. Uh, we saw Sophia Caldwell off there earlier on. Um, well, now, does that mean they're going to yeah, call they... the start off? That oh, or oh, oh, has it? Or oh, oh, have they? Because that looks very very racy. No, no, there's hands in the yeah, air. You can see the false, drivers signalling. Yeah, signalling in the air, which gives which you a chance, Sergio. You know, gives go, us a chance to go, go off down the, the grid. Starting liner. Yes, yeah, very nice of them. Unfortunately for the number sixty-six, Leo Hunt is not, not going to take part yes. in the uh, in the um, first eight. Logan Rolf. Who was a very inquisitive young man on the uh, on the balcony as we were rigging our cameras <laughs> up this morning? Ah, uh, yes. He was asking lots of questions. Well, he was uh, that the questions of how to rig up cameras and receivers uh, did not detract from him going out and qualifying and putting it on pole position. He's on the front row with Chloe McGill alongside. Great effort from Chloe. Uh, Albie J. Stubbs and Buddy Hugo are on the second row. Row three is Elijah West and Alfie Mayer. Benedictus Masiokas is on seventh. Lewis Herbertson eighth. Fifth row of the grid: Jensen Walker and Alfie Garrett. Uh, Xavier Ramsey and Lewis Kakodi are next. 13th and 14th is Matthew Lilly and Toby Biggs. Then we've got Dan Singh Pahal and Sebastian Crawford uh, in 15th and 16th. Freddie Blackshaw and Jack Mellon, 17th and 18th. Then we've got Victor Popacol, Jimmy Walsh, Zach Andrew, Travis Giddings, Carter Jackson, Ruben Sagu, Ronnie Faulkner. Rounds off 25 carts. The 26th cart is Leo Hunt, of course, who is unfortunately a retirement. I think that was just in time, Henry, because they're here yeah, with well. us already. Here we go then, they're into the tram lines, and this time we are off and racing. It's a good start for Logan Rolf, who instantly dives to the inside, and uh, I have to say, I mean, oh, and there's a driver there with two wheels on the grass, we'll catch up there, but Logan's got a very, very good start. Oh, Chloe McGill as well, the number 18 cart there with the pink uh, I think that might yeah, be Chloe McGill, who's, Chloe got, in the who's, lead. who's got, the, got the jump. Oh, and a bit of a chain reaction. Uh, it's, it's some of the cutting, uh, what are the cutting edge uh, motorsport carts. Alfie cutting Garrett. Steam. That's Alfie Garrett. Mm. And who was the other one? Uh, could, uh, the oh, 25 yeah. of, uh, yeah, go back, we'll, we'll check that. Uh, Jensen Walker. I think was the other driver, mm. Steve Cutting's uh, team. Good to see Steve in the paddock. Has helped a lot of drivers gain their sort of race licenses at uh, Rye House over the years. And, uh, you know, Steve Cutting had uh, Harry Thompson and a few other very, very famous uh, drivers in his Honda Cadet uh, stable, Alex Lloyd being another one, mm. uh, over the years. Alfie Mayer has come from about the third row of the grid in qualifying, and now he leads, and he leads in fine style. He forgot, he's found a way by Chloe McGill, who has now got uh, Buddy Hugo and Benedictus Masiokas right there on her bumper. Masiokas looking like he's uh, maybe going to challenge as Chloe McGill. Uh, easy to spot is Chloe with her pink cart and pink helmet. Big thanks to her for that. So I can, yes, spot, yes, her, I can spot her anywhere on any grid, uh, which is great. Now, Chloe's pulling away from the third and fourth place carts. Oh, I think that's Masiokas who's got... The number yeah, 11. It's Buddy Hugo. Buddy no, Hugo. it's Hugo. He's still hanging on to third. He was being challenged, I think, there by the zip driver, Masiokas. That's settled down now. As they cross the line there, uh, Henry. But the Zip Factory team seem to be well represented at, at the front. Earl, uh, Earl the Pearl, and the rest of the Zip crew have got, uh, well, they've got Alfie Mayer uh, leading this race. And then in fourth and fifth, Albie J. Stubbs and Benedictus Masiokas. Uh, as you can just see there. So it's great to see the, uh, um, you know, the, 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 the Zip name back at the uh, the sharp end of, oh, of, really of, of British Karting. Oh, it really is. Earl and, and his... his uh, Earl and Tuesday. Yes, uh, and, yeah, and, of course. Who was Martin's uh, daughter. Martin's daughter, yeah. Luke, Luke is around as well, you know, back in the family. Uh, <laughs> speaking to Earl many years ago, yeah. probably four or five years ago, and they would, the zip brand had kind of disappeared a little bit. Yeah, it almost and, uh, and Earl and Tuesday were bringing it back in, yes. and they had a team there. And Earl was telling me he knew absolutely nothing about carting. Well, he's caught on very well. Yeah, yeah he's, 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 a, he's, a, he's a quick learner, is Earl. They've done a cracking job in bringing that Zip Cart brand back to yes. the fore and back to the front of grids across the country. Yeah, and I think, you know, I mean, without wanting to disrespect these drivers who are doing a fantastic job on the circuit, we're not going to talk about, I'll talk about them very shortly, but uh, I was very fortunate enough to be at Clay Pigeon Raceway where Kenzo Craigie, uh, yeah. who's now part of the Mercedes uh, Young Driver, Formula One Driver, Young Driver Programme, won... 
uh, on a zip car. It's their first win in the British Championship for, for a number of years on the 11th anniversary of, of Martin's passing, uh, which oh, was a was, very, very special. Uh, special emotional moment for the, for the whole team. And a, a lot of people uh, in the motor racing world who owe you know, the formative years of their karting career to the Zip brand and the Heinz family. Absolutely. This is a great drive from Chloe McGill who's still yes. hanging on there in second. Alfie Mayer's ahead by just a second, and Chloe is driving a cracking race because no one can find a way by her. They've had a good couple of laps while Henry and I chunted yes. on and reminisced, but there's the move now, finally, by Buddy Hugo. He's had two laps to work on that, Henry, yep. and he's been working away at where was best to maybe challenge. He's finally worked it out, and now he's by Chloe McGill, who now has Benedictus Masiokas. That's the next driver lining up. Albie J. Stubbs not far behind, and Lewis Herbertson onto the tail of them as well. Yes, yeah, Herbertson in the, in the sort of the blue, uh, the light blue ambition motorsport liveried cart. Uh, but again, all the Buddy Hugo uh, runs a little bit wide coming through uh, compression corner. That's going to make him susceptible to a potential move down the Dragon Straight because he's lost a little bit of momentum. Now, does he defend or will McGill continue to push? She seemed she, to have momentum, didn't she? Yeah, she continues to push. Uh, but uh, Hugo was sort of taking a defensive line and that's going to uh, leave McGill open to oh. attack here from Benedictus <sighs> Masiokas. That's the same move as Buddy Hugo pulled yes. on Chloe McGill. She's going to have to watch that in uh, the few for the rest of this weekend for sure. She's kind of a, she's she's taking the textbook line. Yep, but and and she's leaving herself vulnerable on that inside line for people to sneak by, and we've seen that now. Alfie Mayer did it. So did Buddy Hugo, and now Be Be Benedict Masiokas has done it, and they've got we've got two drivers lining up: Albie J. Stubbs and Lewis Herbertson. And they, if she's not careful, they're going to watch and have seen that, and they're going to know that that's the line she takes. Yeah, uh, but on, on the flip side, she hasn't sort of defended and lost ground. She's no, still she in uh, right in the thick of the battle for second position. So this is second, third, fourth, uh, fifth, and sixth going up the hill. And, and yeah, now McGill alters her line. Uh, ever so slightly because we are getting down to the final well, the second the second half of this race but uh uh and uh, taking a wide line there side by side in front of them and that was benedictus masiokas passing buddy hugo who loses momentum and mcgill thinks about a move as they, she approaches the downhill section but then backs out of it yeah looking very vulnerable there for a moment did buddy hugo having to let masiokas by because he pulled alongside and he had the optimum line masiokas now into second place Chasing off to his teammate, Alfie Mayer. It's a zip cart one, two. Great news for Earl and Tuesday. They'll be happy with this first heat so far. However, Hugo's coming back. And, and McGill still there, aren't they? Still, McGill yep. and Albie J. Stubbs, they're not far behind. And if these two carts there, the two yellow carts, if they trip over one another, and I think they're about to actually, as yeah. I say that, down towards the carousel now, it's, well, we've got five cart train. Yep. Uh, who's 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 second place is it it could be any one of these five yeah and you can see the black number plate on alby j Stubbs's car that means because i mean the last time uh i commented on alby was at the dubai old plate in january and he was still a bambino then so he's oh, really? just moved wow. out of wow. uh, bambino into uh um into the sort of the bigger classes you know the micro max class this time around uh 20 seconds to go so this should be the penultimate lap and uh, Alfie Mayer is uh, three seconds up the road, two, 2.1 seconds up the road. But, uh, yeah, it's chopping and changing for second every corner. It is. They're looking over their shoulders. There's, there's sometimes people there, and then there's sometimes no drivers there at all. Yeah. And it's a bit little, little bit off-putting. Down towards the carousel. It's side by side now. Masiokas and Hugo. Hugo on the outside. He's got the line. If he stays there, no. What I was about to say is uh, Masiokas had the line if he stayed there on the inside. And Hugo has to give way to him, Chloe McGill, she's kind of playing the opportunist card there, isn't mm -hmm. she? Just waiting for these two to trip over one another. Didn't quite come off for her and they're getting towards the final few corners of this lap. It'll be the one lap to go, Bob, that they see. Alfie Mayer already underneath it but there's this battle for second. Can it, can it, this one's going to rage all the way to the checkered flag. Oh yeah, so we're on the final lap now and uh, the black crash helmet of uh, Benedict Masiokas there. Uh, defending, going up the hill, uh, Buddy Hugo on that very bright sort of luminous yellow and black number 11 cart. And Benedict gets a, a Buddy gets a good line out of that corner, but then uh, has to defend a little bit 
from Chloe McGill. RBJ Stubbs and uh, Lewis Herbertson just sitting and maybe waiting for an opportunity to present itself, but not forcing the issue just yet. Here we go then. It'll be check and flag very soon for Alfie Mayer. He's about three seconds up the road here, but we can't take our eyes off this battle for second. It's going to go all the way to the flag. We need a mistake from Masiokas, I think, and that's not going to come as Masiokas takes the check and flag in second. Chloe McGill's delighted with fourth. Look at that. Well, Buddy Hugo in third. Chloe McGill punching the air in third. She's had a great race. Yeah. And you know what? Where did she come from on the grid? Well, she was eight, oh. 18th in the final at Wilton Mill, and she's 13th in the championship. So that's, a, that's yeah, probably yeah. at least that, her best result of the season. She, w she was delighted with that. And let's just uh, remind ourselves where she was. She started on the front row. Yeah. I, Again, I, very good in the wet. Um, I think that was a sort of a very sort of damp qualifying session for these drivers. Uh, right, let's get our breath back. Let's have a look at the top ten. Alfie Mayer takes the win in what was very commanding style, yep. I've got to say. Benedictus Masiokas was second, Buddy Hugo third, Chloe McGill fourth, Albie J. Stubbs was fifth, then we had Lewis Herbertson, Logan Rolfe, Elijah West was in eighth, Lewis Kakoni ninth, Toby Biggs tenth, I've got time to look at the, the, the rest of them, Alfie Garrett twelfth, uh, Dian Singh Pahal was next, Jensen Walker fourteenth, Matthew Lilly, Freddie Blackshaw ahead of Sebastian Crawford sixteenth and seventeenth, Jimmy Walsh eighteenth, Jack Mellon, Victor Popacool, Travis Giddings, Carter Jackson, Ronnie Faulkner, uh, Ruben Segu, Zach Andrew, we lost on lap two, unfortunately. Yeah, but a, a quick a quick word just about our pole sitter, uh, Logan Rolfe, um, finishing seventh. But, uh, you know, I, 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 oh dear, I was commentating when uh, L Logan was just a bump. Uh, oh, really? Because <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Carrie and Kenny Rolfe are uh, uh, Logan's parents, um, you know. Yes. Gaz, Gaz Rolf, uh, vital motorsport fame, who ran, amongst others, uh, Bobby Thompson, British Touring Car star, uh, as a junior driver when vital motorsport were... Uh, he uh, ran Bobby Thompson as a junior carter? Yes. Wow. So, now I know, now Gary is that old. Obviously, Kelly, his lovely wife, is far Who younger. Who's Bobby Thompson? Bobby Thompson is now about 24, 25. He's, yeah, he's, yeah. He, we, we did some eye racing through uh, COVID. Yes. We had like, quite, quite a high level of... We had, uh, British touring car grid. Yep. We even had Lando Norris join us for one night, a couple of nights. Yeah. It's, um, uh, and Bobby was good fun. Uh, yeah, indeed. Oh. He's done a couple of sports car races as well. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, very, uh, you know, yeah. very, very fast. So driver. you're that old, Henry, remembering I'm, Bobby's I'm, 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 I'm that old. I did Bobby's <laughs> PR for some time in, uh, uh, in karting and, 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 and British touring cars. And yes, yes. And, uh, you know, it's when it's when drivers uh, that I commentated on as cadets are, are saying, "Oh, you know, they are, uh, um, you know, they're, they're celebrating their thirtieth birthday, or they, this is our, this is our, you know, this is our our, ch our children." Um, fan, fan, uh, fantastic. I've got some, um, I've got some comments that have come through. Thanks to Gasberry, who is uh, oh. listening back at home. Um, we, uh, he's he's there with his father-in-law, Duncan, who's just recovering. So get well soon, Duncan. I hope you're still with us. And, uh, and Gaz is giving me a little bit of a backup here with a bit of uh, a yep. YouTube comment. Ah, excellent. So uh, Ian McCarthy, is that Henry Baudet with you, Joe? Unfortunately, uh, yes, he is. Yes, yes, he is. He drew the short straw. He's filling in for Nick <laughs> while Nick's at his daughter's <laughs> wedding. Um, we've got uh, uh, Jan Brun Anderson. We were all immortal at that age. I'm not sure what age group she's talking about, but let's say under 15, yeah, under yes. 16, of course. Uh, even even me, when I was ripping it in an old moped across the fall fields with just an eggshell for a helmet. Uh, yes. yes, we remember that. Uh, an old, very, you know, uh, good luck, Harry Hurst Grover from Emma, Simon Beckett, uh, Mar uh, Marie Bath, good luck, Ethan, uh, Zach and Toby Turner. Uh, hello, Zach and Toby. Afternoon. And uh, their dad, John. Um, this good good championship this guy so you oh, yeah, yeah, think good, Zach's, good. Zach's on his head look, looking at the British champs to be honest uh, and Lucy Beamish good luck I'll be Jay thanks for that Gaz but, uh, now that's that's one round of heats already cycled through so each driver has now got really? half half of their heat points for the championship have been decided sort of you know they, they're at the end of this next series of races that's when the championship combines uh, the two sets of results into an intermediate classification and then championship points are dished out, uh, you know, 40 uh, for top of the intermediate classification based on, you know, the overall two heat results. 
Right, we've got our cadets out next. Uh, and it yes. will be another standing start. Like Pink, Floyd, us, like Pink Floyd said, the uh, the distant rumble of thunder. I can't believe we're, we're already through our... We've Everyone's had a, 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 their first heat. Yeah. The it, time it, has flown. Ah, yes, indeed. But uh, there's plenty more time to go. And, um, and of course, tomorrow, the Karting Live TV are going to be bringing... And yourself, myself and Joe are going to be bringing you all the super heats of the finals live tomorrow. Uh, so we, we basically have another couple of heats packed in before the lunch break. I think it's before lunch break. Um, and then after lunch, I might be wrong, and that might be this, uh, another super heat. Hang on. Talk amongst yourselves. Yes. So we, no, no, we've got the two. Super heat one, two, super two heat two. two. And then the lunch break uh, due at about 1.30, and then we finish off with our finals. So more of this. And as you I explain, Henry, not only does the, how you finish here in the heats uh offer you championship points at the end of the, the second heat but it's also we form the grid for the super heats yes so yeah. I, I kind of like that format actually yeah and no, I mean this morning there was a bit of practice and then we had qualifying uh, and yep. then so, so, so the, the, if you don't want to take if you can't take time off school on a Friday, for example, yeah. even though a lot of these kids, they do get uh, letters from school you know, letters from school to say that they can take off. And you can see the Minerva uh, logo up there because, you know, some of these kids are doing online learning. Um, you know, that's that's practice qualifying in two heat races. Then another two, like, super heats tomorrow and a final. That's a lot of track time over a weekend, which yeah. is key for the juniors. It's key for these under-16s. Get as much time in the seat as possible. That's where it is. It's all about time in the seat. Uh, Kevin Ivanoff, I remind you, uh, qualified on pole with Ryan White, current British champion, carrying the number one alongside these two. Had a cracking battle in that first heat. Archie Cannon and Archie Loveridge on row two. Magiris Kovekis and Ed Spain on row three. Riley Blakemore and Kean Sullivan row four. Row five is Elliot Bork, Luke McGall. Ella Dixon and Ronnie Smart are next. And then Tyler Banks, Ralphie Branscombe, Albie Smith, Jack White Wicks, uh, Ollie Knox, Ashton Horspool. Uh, we're still claiming the grid, so I've got time. Uh, Ashton Horspool, Daniel Barton, Luke Jardine, Ricky McIntosh in 21st, Jane Prakash, Noah Clark, Finley Thursfield, Harley Bradbury, Stretton 25th, uh, Jacob Letherby, uh, Oliver Ratton, Otto Arney, Freddie Budd, and then a bunch of novices there. Sophie Morris, Rebecca Ristol, James Pearson, Jerry Duffersey, and Reggie Duffersey. Rounding off what is a 34 cart field. No, I did notice that Jerry beat Reggie in the Battle of the Duffesies in oh, heat number well, one. Well, well spotted. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. All you while, yeah, you know, yeah. it's a bragging rights for the way home. Yeah, if you've got, Absolutely. If you've got, if you've got a sibling in the same race as you. <laughs> Absolutely. As, uh, now the mechanics have been given a bit of hurry up because they're all sitting and waiting. There's a green flag at the back of the field, which is round the corner um, here at Glanagorse, but it's. Uh, Ivanov and White on the front row. And uh, the board, they're happy that the grid is cleared. A couple of drivers looking around. Look at the lights. Lights go out. No, they don't. Oh, now they start. do. A bit of a jump start in the second row there. Yeah, uh -huh. but everyone's away cleanly. And, uh, yeah, it looks like Ivanov, uh, Ivanov has managed to maintain the advantage. I think that's a zip livery cart. It is indeed. Yeah. Ivanov with the number 50 cart leading Ryan White up towards Spoon. But... Uh, Behind them, 33 other drivers will all try and file round this corner. And some of them doing it three and four wide. And some of them trying to do it backwards. Yeah, not uh, good for the back of the field. Was that the Duffers there it's, just I gathering think themselves that could have up? been both of them. Yeah. Yes, uh, well, they, yeah. Being caught up in someone else's incident there, in fairness. Not their fault at all, having to spin in avoidance. Yep. Meanwhile, back at the front, we've got Kevin Ivanov. With Ryan White, as we've come to expect, glued almost to his rear bumper. Bit of a gap. And then the number 43 of, or is that 73? I'm going to wait until they file through. And then, no, it was Archie Cannon. Was the 42 in third. Magiris Kavek is fourth. Then we've got Archie Loveridge, Riley Blakemore, Aid Spain, Kian Sullivan, Ronnie Smart, Ralphie Branscombe. That's your top ten. And, of course, looking at the, uh, the livery, that is the Project One racing livery on that number one cart of Ryan White and... Uh, you know, obviously, we lost Project One's Gerard Cox uh, just uh, a short while ago, and uh, you know, I want to just say a big hello to the, the, the whole Project One family and Gerard's family. You know, the loyal, loyal karting uh, supporters for, for decades, and uh, his 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 funeral service. The amount of he asked all, all former drivers to bring their crash helmets with them, and there was a fantastic display. Uh, there at at, at, the, at the Gerard's uh, That's funeral, which was which was very yeah, good very indeed. Nice. Yeah. The celebration of life, I think, is what we call exactly. it. Exactly. It? It, it really is. It did a lot for Carly. 
So uh, yeah, every time you see the, the Project One racing delivery, is this the driver Ryan White looking over his shoulder, and he's looking over his shoulder because he, he now knows. Okay, I've got five yeah. or six cart lengths between my somebody hasn't any more. I can afford to like go offline and make one move without getting freight trains. Yeah, and I I did I did think that Ryan White might have thought about perhaps having a go for that lead. It's still very early days. Very, very early yeah. days. Um, we're we're uh, just coming up to half distance already, so we've still got a chunk of time, just four and a half minutes still on the clock. And easy to do where we saw there uh, Kevin Ivanov just getting a little bit wide at the compression. Yep. And these carts beginning to slide around, Henry. Um, oh, like Jim, is it, is it raining outside? No, the, no, the, I've been told not. I mean, but I mean, the, 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 it's so cold and the cloud cover yeah. is so low that it can almost, you can almost like feel moisture in the air. I, but it's, I'm, uh, I'm feeling a bit cold in here. Uh, actually. Right. Yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, it's, I uh, mean, you're against the door. I, I'm against the door. But you, I, you I, get, you, I'm only the hired help. As you get so more experience with the car life, TV, you move further into the room. Ah, right. Yes, I see. I see. I'm just a hired help the weekend. Well, they say he probably thought, well, no, he's well, so he's used to being freezing cold. Yeah, he'd be absolutely in the rain. Yeah, absolutely. This is a cracking Condica dead battle. Four car train now, and uh, you know what, everybody. I know. Yes, we'd like to look at the other drivers in the field. However, when the battle at the front is like this, four car train here, just biding their time. I call this high speed chess, Henry. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It's just they're, they're so clever. These kids. They're they're just they're sort of feeling each other out. They're sort of they're not just sitting there and following. They're learning. They're looking every single corner. You know, where's my cart slightly better than my rival? Where am I losing a yes. bit of time? Which line is working for this driver? Maybe I'll try that. Oh. And that's an outside line that's not working at all. No. Ivanov, that's the second time he's done that in two races. How many times have we seen drivers do that? It must be, you know what, that braking area, out of you, you can't see yeah. the corner, what you're braking for. And that's a little bit off point. You've got to trust your timing and where it, you, when you put the brake on going over the brow. And that's what we saw Ivanov do again. And it's every time we've seen that happen today, it's been because the race lead has been under pressure. So the leader has been thinking, I've got, I've got to push, I've got to push, because they're right behind me, right behind me. Oh, dear. And that, and that can happen. Yeah, it is. And Ivanov, you know, we, we did it. he did it in heat number one. He's done it again in heat number two. He came back in heat number one. Let's yes. see if he can. As we're getting a challenge from uh, Kovekis on Archie Cannon. Archie Cannon absolutely glued to Ryan White's bumper. Yeah, Kovekis. Again, he's just sort of, you know, right, all right. Yeah. Ivanov fell off, and he's now down in fourth. Uh, Ryan White says, yeah, okay, I can do the job of a leader. And he is. He's leading everybody around. Well, he, he's realised that even if he tries to make a move on Ryan White now, White's cart is so well set up. White, White's got such pace that he thinks, well, if I pass, then I'm not going to pull away. I'm just going to get dragged into a, a huge battle. And, uh, you know, that's going to bring more and more people into the league group. At the moment, there's a league group of four. But with Ed Spain, Riley Blakemore, Ralphie Branscombe, Kean Sullivan not a million miles away, if these four started battling too much now, suddenly we could have an eight or nine cart battle for the race lead. As I say that, though, wow. Archie Cannon says, time to go. That was and he does. That was incredible. Archie Cannon, that move started at the final turn yes. of that previous lap. Yes. That was incredible. He came because he lost ground to Ryan White through the twisty bits, compression, etc., etc. Got through the final turn. He had a gap that he could plough into and go through a clubhouse turn and all the way up the straight. Before they got to the braking area, Cannon yep. was alongside Ryan White, and Ryan White can't do anything about that. Well, look at now. Now Ryan White is trying to do the same thing that Cannon. He needs a bit of a gap. Um, he needs more oh. of a gap there, or else, or else yeah. he's going to come bump. There he is. He's he's kind of being tripped up, so that momentum is stifled by the cart in front of you. Yes, because uh, I mean you could see him almost like forcing. Gee, the, what the driver in second place wants to do going into that last corner is force the leader or force the driver they're chasing to defend. That then slows them all the way up to this point here. Uh, but uh, so Cannon was wise to Ryan White's tactics there. So we got less than a minute to go. Ivanov, uh, Kovakis still there now they're coming up on slower traffic oh, again Evans. so uh, you've got cool. jerry and reggie Jefferson. you've also got james pearson directly in front of there the three carts they are closing in on they're having their own private battle they are inter intra novice battle for 31st position and uh and Jerry's just got ahead of Reggie, yeah, by the way, in that uh, uh, novice And the leaders are about to, to bear down upon them. Oh, and there's the number 23 cart 
off the side of the circuit. That's Finley Thursfield trying to get the cart out of the mud, and that's not going to happen. Here are the back markers, and here are the leaders. Oh, and there's the leaders right in amongst it now. The blue flags will be waving, and it's Ryan White. Is that Ryan White back into yep. the lead? It is indeed. And there, who's that? The number that's 50. Five and off. Where's Archie Cannon gone? Where is Archie Third Cannon? Third and a lead change in traffic. Ivanov dies at the inside as they negotiate the second of those three carts to retake the race lead. Incredible driving there. And back markers came into play as we thought they might. Those, those drivers <laughs> are having their own, they're having their own race. They don't have to move out of the way. They stay on the line. And this is once again Ryan White back into the lead. How did he do that out of our sight there? We were watching that picture and they, they, they just meld together, don't they? Yes. He's, the, he's the last opportunity at the uh, at Spoon Corner. That, no, and look at that. That's <laughs> that's how tight this is and that's the tripping over one another I was talking yep. about. And look at that, the number 50 of Ivanov being disadvantaged to an extent and about to lose two moves, uh, two places. But if not, and look at the fifth and sixth place drivers. Spain and Brands come up closing in. I think it's going to come a little bit too late with just half a lap to go. They head down the hill. A uh, couple of raindrops on the camera. That's not affecting oh. grip levels at the moment. But uh, Cannon will try and set White up for a move into this corner and can't quite get it done. And <laughs> Ryan White crossed the line to take the race win by 87. Now, we had an 88 hundredth of a second victory uh, margin of victory a couple of races ago. That's an 87 hundredths of a second margin of victory. I think I said that right. It's, they've, they've delivered. They've Not done much. exactly what they said yep. on the tin. They, yes. they said, yeah, we are cadet carters. This is what we can do. The Honda cadets are absolutely awesome to watch. And once again, I mean, what did we have there? Four, five carts there yep. across the line. Absolutely uh, covered by seven tenths of a second, the first five. Yeah, and, and that's and incredible. I, I, I used to race a senior Honda, a uh, twin engine pro cart, uh, where they were Honda GX 160s. These are Honda GX 200s, uh, but this is the class that Alex Alban started in. You know, because you have. You're that old, are you? Yeah, I know. Really yes, old, I. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, 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 <laughs> all right, I started when I was a young, a young motorsport journalist hey, listening mate, to I, Radio I, Le Mans, I, and I, there was a certain <laughs> voice on there that I remember. <laughs> My first kart race was Alan McNish's first race in seniors. Oh, wow. In wow. 1986. Oh, my word. I am that old. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, quick rundown of the top 10, then, in the Honda Cadet second heat. Uh, Ryan White takes the win. Archie Cannon second. Kevin Ivanov was third. Magiris Kovekis was fourth. Ralphie Branscombe fifth. Sixth was Ed Spain. Riley Blakemore seventh. Eighth was Archie Loveridge. Kean Sullivan was ninth. Tenth was Albie Smith. Um, you mentioned the American Le Mans series, and I thought, yeah, yeah. Alan McNish was this skinny little kid who came into seniors from juniors as the British junior champion, blitzed everybody. Yep. I was astounded by how he could break into the hairpin at Rower, the old Rower, y yes, the short yes, track. The short track. And, and there I was, years later, interviewing him, uh, uh, winning Sebring and, uh, yep. and, and and the like, and Petit Le Mans and, and, and the like. And I, you know, I reminded him of him. Um, I said, can you remember lapping me? <laughs> <laughs> in one of the heats at Rower, and he said, "You know what he said?" He said, "No." <laughs> but he did it with a smile, a genial yeah, smile yeah, yeah, yeah. on his face. I believe he won the the, the race of the century, didn't he? Yeah, the, yeah, race of the millennium, Adelaide. Adelaide. Yeah, yes. the, it, yeah. yeah they, they painted an Audi and a crocodile. Yeah, that was, race that was a race I don't want to talk about because I couldn't make it. I couldn't oh, get, couldn't sorry. get time off work. Oh, and oh. I don't, I don't want every month going go to America to do the American Le Mans series, and then they, they come out with this great idea of, "Hey, let's go to Australia." Two days before Christmas Eve yeah. and come back on the 5th of January. One, I had a wife and kids. The, the, the Two, I had a job. Uh, yeah. That was like, <laughs> how, how long do you want? No. no yeah. No. Last race on the original yeah. Adelaide layout before, yeah, they, it was. before yeah, they truncated it. it. Yes. It ah, we digress. Uh, yes, yes. Back to, back to the Junior Primos. <laughs> yes. I'm a, I've become a big fan of Junior Primos, um, what? Henry. Yes. Um, the, it's a great idea. It's... It can be a bit daunting for the younger drivers to um, jump straight from an Intermax or an Intercadet or even a Micromax into juniors. Um, you're racing against lads of 15 and 16 years old. You know when you're at school and you're 12 and 13 and you look at those lads in the 5th and 6th years of school and you go and play football or rugby with them and, and you're, you're just kind of daunted by the, really you know, are, by the physicality of yes. it. Yes. That physicality is exactly what is happening on track. Yeah, and also, I mean, obviously, 
one of the drivers that was in here earlier, you know, uh, young uh, Mr. Stewart. Yeah. Um, speaking, you know, speaking to his mum said that this is this is great because yeah, number one, you know, he's still learning how to be aggressive, but number two, you know, there's a certain budgetary uh, increase in terms of the more competitive, you know, sort of the the, the faster, the same state faster, but the more competitive yeah. junior road tax class. If you're if you can't be out every weekend. Then coming to Junior Primo, because they're saying, look, we, we race twice a month. You know, that's that's what we can do. Yes. And this yeah, is yeah. great for, yeah. for, for Is that Eddie what Laura can, was saying? He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's great great for Eddie because, you know, he can learn, um, you know, without the pressure being on so much to, you know, or getting beaten about. But uh, here we go. There's a, a, a there's a starting lineup, is there not, Joe? Do you want to have a go through? Oh, I'll try. Thank you very much. Bella Fairclough will lead us to the line. Daniel Hartley, who won the opening uh, Junior Primo encounter, will be on the outside of row number one. Ellis Dealey and Maya Simpson on row number two. Alfie Forrester and Leighton Kelly will go from row three. Tyler Davis and Zach Kane are next. Then it's Ethan Barth and Ewan Stevenson. Thomas Butcher and the aforementioned uh, occasional co-commentator Eddie Stewart on row number six. Oscar Pitt and Sophia Caldwell. Hopefully Sophia can make the race this time. Uh, Laurie McVeigh, Jack Johnson and Riley Mason Lewis. That would be the full 17 cart lineup. Hopefully, all 17 drivers are out there as they take the line. No, they. Yes, they do. I think they. No, they don't. They're still wobbling the tyres. I thought I saw uh, a signal from the start line official saying that uh, they were going to go around again. That was Bella Fairclough being somewhat overly enthusiastic. Uh, at that, the start. That flag marshal on the rise there, yes. he's going to have to invoice us because he's uh, becoming I mean, a bit massive it, assistance. It, to yes, us, <laughs> he's got he, the. He's, uh, the, he's becoming a massive, massive assistance to our broadcast of being us able to tell when we have a false start. Yes, the uh, the uh, the green R. Ah, who's that? Is that not Mr. Forrester again? Uh, and. Who's okay. that off as well? That's the number 63, 65. It's, it's the number 85, Carter Oscar, Oscar Pitt. Pitt uh, who is Making his way back up the grid down, yes. down the middle. That's We've all done it. Uh, as uh, now, t- once again, so for the second time of asking, Hartley, you can see on the right hand side of your screen, and Fairclough in the bright yellow uh, liveried machine will come into the tram lines. And uh, now they'll get the signal. Now the lights go out. Now we're off oh. and racing. And Fairclough again gets a little bit left at the start. It's Hartley and Maya Simpson yeah, who she, take the lead. She got caught out massively there. At the, the point where she should have been watching the lights, she was looking at Daniel Hartley. And the two carts on the left-hand side of the track were able to get the jump. And that was Maya Simpson who went through with Daniel Hartley as well. And I think that's Bella Fairclough coming back at the number 96 of yeah. Simpson. So it's an all-girl battle for second. Daniel Hartley was the, well, the, uh, the the prime of the primo in the first heat, wasn't he? He was absolutely unbeatable. No one could catch him. And once again, as he just threads his way through the final few curves here at Glanny Gore and crosses the line, he will cross the line in the lead by about four tenths of a second. And this is going to be, because in race number one, uh, so Bella Fairclough kept Daniel Hartley honest, finishing 1.3 seconds uh, behind and taking a fast slap of the race. Maya Simpson, she was back trying to hold off, uh, I'm trying to think who she, t- Tyler Davis for third position. And they finished about eight seconds uh, behind uh, Hartley and Fairclough. And we did sort of surmise that uh, Maya Simpson was probably a bit quicker than that, but was having to, defi- to drive slightly defensively to keep Tyler Davis at bay. This is an opportunity to see how close Maya is to the outright race pace of Hartley and Fairclough, who were the class of the field in, in, in heat number one. Well, she's certainly showing Bella Fairclough a, a clean pair of heels, a clean bumper, puts her head down, gets right. behind the, the, uh, the fairing there just to gain a little speed. And it does work. It absolutely does work as Bella Fairclough comes right onto a bumper in the braking area there. The bright yellow cart now challenging Maya Simpson. Anything to uh, improve uh, aerodynamic efficiency. Uh, if you just hunker down behind that NASA panel, the airflow over the top of your crash helmet is a little bit better. Hey, if it gains you a thousandth, two thousandths of a second, then that's great. Because over the course of the race, that could become a hundredth of a second. And we have seen kart races decided by less than a hundredth of a second on numerous occasions. Now, behind the, this second place battle, so Hartley now begins to pull away. There's a big gap developing 
uh, behind the second place battle. Oh, down uh, the inside, Henry. Down move. the inside has gone Bella Fairclough. She'd been lining that move up, hadn't she? I know you were focusing. Yep. We were about no, to focus on that cracking battle <laughs> for third. However, as, as we were about to talk about then, Bella Fairclough made the move. Now then, can she stay ahead of Maya Simpson? Or is she going to pull away? If she pulls away, we're going to be able to have a look at that battle for fourth and fifth. And th I think that's fourth down to twelfth or something, it's, that it's, battle behind. It's fourth down to everybody else. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, coming out of uh, Compression Corner into Pitts Bend, uh, which is the official name for that, uh, the last corner. But, uh, yeah, Faircliff and Simpson still locked together, uh, second and third. They have a, a four-second gap back to the, the scrap between, yeah, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. Oh, now, uh, Simpson runs a little bit wide. Uh, sorry, bit, sorry, Fairclough runs a little bit wide going into Spoon, but uh, managed to hold on. That will increase Daniel Hartley's advantage. But Maya Simpson, now that she hasn't got to defend, yeah, she can match Bella Fairclough for pace. I always used to like to chase rather than be chased. Oh yeah, it's, I would it's much kind of yeah. yeah, and and kind of if you if you feel like you've got the pit, always tricky to get by, of course, but uh, a little bit less it's, uh, of, a, of a sort of a less stressful. Let's yeah, call or, it. Also, uh, I was always I preferred I preferred to chase than be chased because that was more to do with the fact that I'd lose my bottle when I ever rose well, in the yeah, race lead. Yeah, exactly. Me too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. On the rare occasion it did happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was, I'm not used to this clear well, track in front it, of me. What it, do I do? Bella Fairclough, as it's her choice first when to break. Yes. And and you just feel the need to go a little bit quicker and maybe push it into the braking area and end up making a mistake. And I talk about these drivers being very composed behind the wheel, and that's perhaps what I'm talking about, is how they keep them maintain their composure. And Bella Fairclough's a pretty experienced driver, as is Maya Simpson, and both of these carters will know that once they get ahead, there's no mirrors on carts. No, no. So just keep looking forward, yep. and then it's up to the person behind, it's up to the driver behind to get by you. You don't have to. You just keep your line, and if they're that much quicker, they will get by. And Maya Simpson isn't that much quicker, so she's struggling to get by, and that gives us great racing, as ever. Yeah, absolutely. Down the hill they go. Now... Uh, a good camera shot there just to give you an idea of, of just how steep the elevations are and how continual the elevations are because even uh, even the, the even dragon straight that's still got a couple of crests and rises and uh, you know uh, crochet you know the, the, the dips and rises of the, of the straight here because yeah. obviously you know we're, we're, in, we're in an area of, of Wales where you know the winters are cold and harsh some of the springs and the summers sometimes <laughs> uh, but of course that does mean the tarmac is very porous you know the tarmac it, it's it's not smooth it's, it's not billiard table smooth yeah it's, yeah well it's it's a proper track yes I do like Granite Gores it looks like a car racing track rather than a car track yeah you, and, you and have, you because of the undulations because of the layout the greenery the, the backdrop it's a yes. fabulous fabulous location I mean that's why people buy holiday cottages here isn't it uh, yeah indeed you, because you, North you Wales walk, beautiful area it is a beautiful area you know it uh, can be you know not for the faint hearted when the weather turns and uh, but we'll hopefully not have to worry about that but here's the battle for fourth place now on our screens that's Alfie Forrester in the 79 the 83 is Tyler Davis uh, that sort of turquoise uh, coloured machine and then the blue number 16 is Ellis Dealey uh, the red crash helmet looking over his shoulder there now Tyler Davis spent most of heat one sit, sitting directly behind another cart trying to fight fight his way through he's in exactly the same position here or even though the cart in front of him is different yeah and just behind these two actually we've got uh, Ellis Dealey and Eddie Stewart yes. there's Eddie Stewart there the blue the blue cart with the blue overalls now just to a couple of corners ago, Eddie was right on the bumper of Ellis Daly, and now he's dropped away a little bit. So Eddie Stewart, of course, was uh, popped into the booth and uh, took Henry's job from him. Uh, um, potentially permanently. And he is, <laughs> yeah, potentially. Um, Eddie Stewart back to where he, I'm, I'm not sure if he prefers to be out there, actually, or, or commentating. He does, he does enjoy commentating, does Eddie? Oh, don't uh, keep but telling him there. how good he is and how much he's improving to keep yeah. him in the seat for a bit Keep him in the seat, yes, yes. Job security yeah, on my end. Yeah, yeah, keep racing, Eddie. He is chasing down Tyler uh, sorry, Ellis Daly ahead of him. And then it's Tyler Davis. You can see the bright green, uh, bright yellow rear bumper of Davis with Alfie Forrester on the bright orange cart. Forrester, again, composure. Composure under pressure, yep. isn't it? It really is. As Davis struggling really to get on terms there. Oh, 
he found he found momentum there to get yes. himself a little bit alongside, but not alongside enough to really make it matter. No, but and of course now you could you could see there where he had he had a little uh, almost a little nibble on the rear bumper of uh, Forrester's cart, but then backed out of it so he didn't get involved in a collision. And you just saw how much momentum or how much time he lost yeah. uh, going th- uh, down the rest of the downhill section, but then how much time he regains in the slipstream because yeah. this is now the final lap. Yeah, and those f- these t- what was two two-card battles is now yeah. one four-card battle and we're still tripping over one another. Yes. It's still Alfie Forrester, Tyler Davis, Ellis Daly and Eddie Stewart. And now Eddie Stewart looking for that opportunity maybe of these three potentially about to trip over one another. Uh, we've got the checkered flag out for Daniel Hartley, Bella Fair Club in second, and Maya Simpson in third place. And it does finish as it stood. Uh, Alfie Forrester, Tyler Davis, Ellis Daly, Eddie Stewart seventh. And then we have Thomas Butcher, Ewan Stevens, and Zach Kane, Laurie McVeigh in 11th, Oscar Pitt 12th, 13th was Ethan, Ethan Bath, uh, Jack Johnson, Riley Mason Lewis, Sophie Caldwell. And uh, a full quarter of carts finishing this race there. Yes. Leighton Kelly. It was that finished in 17th. Yeah, so that's a, a good. So we had a couple of, we had one driver non start uh, the first heat and, and then a couple more fall out. So the good news is, is that that's their last race of the day, um, you know, and uh, at least they've, they finished the race. The, the worst thing is, is that you, you have a series of heat races and then the last heat of the day, something goes wrong with the cart or you have an accident, which means you've got to repair it overnight, or you're not quite sure then if for the main events on Sunday, whether that cart will work or not. Yeah, absolutely. They've got uh, two more opportunities to uh, to Im- improve on their grid for the final. These two heats today, the primary heats, will, uh, will sort out the grid for the super heats. Yes. So we will conclude that this afternoon. And then tomorrow morning, we're back live with you at 10 a.m. on Karting Live TV. And ah, from there... Question for our viewers. Do the clocks go forward uh, no. tomorrow? No, no, it's next no, week. It's next weekend, is it? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, oh, yeah. I'm all... You thought you were going to get extra... extra... I, I thought I was going to lose it's an hour just, of sleep. It's one, it's, it's, it's one less hour of rain. Y- yes, yes. <laughs> one less hour of rain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's next week, though. Oh, that's there it yeah. goes. You can tell uh, us. It's also, when the clocks go uh, forward... Um, you wake up to chocolate eggs. Apparently so, yes. yes, yes. yes. Apparently, yeah. there's, 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 there's Easter a, bunny. Uh, is it the Easter bunny or the Easter, fa- the it's, it's, it's Easter, Easter fairy Easter bunny. that brings eggs? It's Easter bunny uh, creates work for the tooth fairy. So the Easter bunny brings the chocolate yes. that causes fillings yes. and teeth to fall out. <laughs> it's all, it's all a con, isn't it? And it's then, all commercialism. And the fairy, yes, it's, uh, yeah. it's all commercialism. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a cabal. So the t- yes. <laughs> it's a cabal yeah. between Easter bunnies and tooth fairies. C50s are out next. Yes. The C50 Bambinos. Um, once again, I'm, I'm going to say this again. I'm always blown away by just how great these, these kids race. Uh, they're from the age of six, six yep. to eight years old. Um, they're on the C50 Coma engine. Um, again, fixed sprocket gearing. Uh, a minimum a minimum weight of 71 kilograms. I mean, I'm over 71 kilograms by a fair few kilograms. Um, but that's uh, the cart that's uh, needed there. And um, um, I just, hello to the person that's found our camera on the scary, balcony there. there. Um, but I, I have to say that uh, the bam- they hold a special place in my heart because the first ever MSA, Motors- oh, now Motorsport UK, Bambino uh, licensed club event was in February 2010 at Landau. Uh, at right. one Bambino. He was eight on the Saturday. Uh, right. that, uh, that, oh, sorry, he was six on the Saturday. That was, uh, it was Alex Austin, uh, the younger right. brother of a, a driver called McCauley Austin. But because it was the first year where they, the MSA allowed sort of Bambino time trials to come into club. Because they started with time trials. Yeah, yeah, and it was yes. still a time trial then. Yeah. It was still a time trial, but they allowed it to come into MSA club racing as it was then. Yeah. And uh, I think the second weekend in February was the first of the year. And, you know, we had a Bambino. We had one. The bear, Alex Austin. Yeah. Uh, it, it, and it was, uh, yeah. Uh, f- and you were there for that? I was there you for really that. Yeah, are that it, I am. Yeah. It was actually February 2009 because right. uh, my son was born in May of 2009, and uh, I've got a picture of him at, a, at, a, at about six weeks old in Alex Austin's Bambino cart. Oh, yeah, yeah. just sizing him up, Just, just sizing yeah, yeah, him yeah. up. Yes. Look, uh, unfortunately, now he's, he's six foot two, 14 years old, <laughs> and uh, thankfully far <laughs> too tall for racing. And, 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 and <laughs> yes, I know, I know. I, 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 I like that as well. My oldest grandson's far too tall for racing. Yes. And far too. Uh, to, to just not the build of a race. However, my youngest 
uh, grandson who's three is going to be a perfect because oh, yeah. he's a nutter. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I'm already sizing him up for a Bambino. <laughs> no sense of um, feeling if you go fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, let's have a look at the grid then for our second heat. It's the same grid lineup. It'll be a standing start once again for the Bambinos. Ernie Wade on the pole position with Noah Wicklow alongside. Second row is Arthur Bowers and Ollie West again doing uh, dual duties. He's going to be at uh, four races under his belt by the time we get to tea time. Uh, Arlo Gamble and Jess Bailey are on row three. And then we've got Will Wainwright and Lewis Wals- uh, Wilson on row four. Row, f- uh, row five is Logan Hodgetts and Calman Simon. And then we've got Henry Hills and Hendricks Fallat, who are starting on row six. Row seven is Riley Aston Wilkins, John Stevens alongside. Uh, row eight is Wraith Owen with Jack Swong alongside. Row nine is Freddie Purnell and Nauman Faison. Max Armit and Max St. Hilaire are next up. And then rounding off the 22 card field is Sando Amico. And that man, or that youngster, Benjamin Shivar, who came from 22nd, mm. I forget what he finished. Did he finish 6th? Uh, he was 6th or 7th, yes. Yes. And I, I was just saying, I was hoping, I hope, hopefully that Calman Simon has got uh, the number 12 cart fixed. We saw him lead and then drop out. And you That's just right, see, yes. Underneath the big GYG karting board, yeah. you can see the nose cone of Salman's cart there, the fifth cart on the outside row. So, yes, uh, the, that's good to see. That Obviously, whatever the problem was that afflicted yep. that cart in the first heat has been resolved, hopefully permanently. And uh, now there's the uh, uh, the signal for... Clear the grid. To clear what, the grid. What we've, um, what we've managed to do at my home track at Warden Law, mm. the collecting area, is at Turn 1. Yes. And we have this fabulous... Uh, Bambino parents running race. Oh, oh, yeah, as yeah. As they yeah. come down the straight is that, towards that, the grid. Turn one. That's just just by the Joe Bradley. Uh, Joe Street Bradley Memorial Suite. Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> the first time. I, oh, we'll talk about the go karting. Yeah, yeah, we've got because yeah. we're racing. We've gone green, or at least the lights have gone out, and we're almost uh, f- too wide for third place there, as the field stream up the hill towards Spoon. We've got Noah Wicklow and Ernie Wade leading the oh. carts up. Have we got an incident there, well, Henry? In the middle of the pack there. That was rear tyre to rear tyre. Uh, and a couple of drivers having to take evasive action. One driver marooned on the grass. I couldn't quite get the number checked. Sorry to interrupt, Joe. But uh, uh, no, yes. no, no. when Absolutely. you suddenly see carts you know, deviating from their intended course uh, in the middle of a pack, you do start to panic a little bit. But uh, apart from the one driver looking backwards, and there's an incident marshal heading to the scene and uh, up front well that's uh, Ernie is it Ernie Wade who has got the I don't I think Ernie Wade may have dropped by Arthur Bowers in the number 98 cart is uh, there in now is he the leader or is he the driver in third is that position third place? yeah the number yeah. 98 yes yeah we saw Bowers going really well at yeah. the leading heat one didn't we anyway uh, they cross the line, Henry, so we can it's fathom it's out who's Noah where. Wicklow, who's yeah. got the, the race lead. And Ollie West has done the same. Yellow flags fly on the straight towards Spoon. And, yeah, so you can, and, and now that's the driver. That was uh, Nauman Pfizer uh, getting back into the race. Ah. And he's going to get swamped by the lead pack. And there's two drivers at the back. That's William Wainwright. Will Wainwright's there. I think he was caught out on the brakes yeah. there, wasn't he? We've got a bit crowded up there. Uh, yeah, because you had the slower driver, and there's the 44. Well, that's now when Fires and going for another rotation. Uh, he was sort of making his way up the hill, and then, yeah, two carts into one just didn't go. But uh, yeah, that two looked... carts into one do go there because it's side <laughs> by side for the lead, Joe. And Ollie West on the outside of Noah Wicklow. Wicklow, though, he's, oh, I thought he was holding him back. He has not. That's Ollie West in the green helmet. That has gone through and into the lead. He will lead across the line to complete two laps. And is it Ollie West? We're just going to have that confirmed. Yep. I think that's yes, Ollie West in the green helmet. Yep. Crosses the line ahead of Noah Wicklow. It's Jess Bailey, Arlo Gamble, Lewis, uh, Ernie Wade, Lewis Wilson, Arthur Bowers, John Stevens, Henry Hills, Logan Hodgetts. Where is Will Rainwright? Will Rainwright comes through in 17th after being in that top five. So that's tragedy for Wainwright with that spin. Yep, just in front of Santo Amico uh, and then Max and Hale and Hendricks for that. But uh, you could, now, the top two have worked together. They have pulled clear. West and Wicklow are 
I was going to say Wicklow is a county in front of uh, the rest of the, uh, the chasing pack. Sorry, everyone. Uh, Jesse Bailey, Arlo Gamble and Ernie Wade. That's a great scrap for third that place. That is. That's and it. you can see the Sun has now decided to make an appearance uh, over the thing. But there's two, four, six, eight, nine, like 11, 12 drivers all squabbling over third. And that's, not, that's good news for Will Rainwright because he can catch that pack in the remaining four minutes plus a lap of this race, and maybe salvage a half-decent result. Well, just ahead of Wainwright is Benjamin Shiva, who's come from 22nd, and last time through he was 16th. Will Wainwright was racing with Shiva last weekend at Ward Law, so those two drivers know each other well. They may be able to come through the field together. Meanwhile, at the front, Noah Wicklow is not allowing Ollie West any breathing space whatsoever, is he? No. He's right there on his bumper. And as they, these two have pulled away, we've got a two-card battle developing for third and fourth. That's Jess Bailey and Ernie Wade. We just get a glimpse of them as they come into our view. Yes. And then behind them is everyone. Uh, behind like. them is, yeah, uh, yeah. is everyone. Um, yeah, Arthur Bowers, is, I think, is, is going a bit slower than he would like. Um, because he certainly dropped back a little bit. There's side-by-side -side action for third place. A 77 card of Jesse Bailey has now been passed by Ernie Wade. So put there a black and red... Oh, sort of the uh, luminous orange and uh, black uh, number 11 cart into P3 as they complete lap number four. And uh, this will be a great example. Now, look look at uh, Bailey. Bailey is literally pushing uh, Wade down Dragon Straight, and that is helping them open the gap yeah, back to uh, fifth place driver uh, Lewis Wilson or Louis Wilson. Uh, if it's Lewis or Louis, I'm sure the parents will correct us as yeah, they, they'll as be they up do. Here. Um, they don't know where we are, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Luckily. We're hidden. We're <laughs> hidden <laughs> we, in we, Granico. Um, but yeah, the, the gap that they improved, eight, eight wheels working together are much back better and much faster than four wheels working on their own. Yeah, a little bit of a difference of opinion through the carousel there, a different line there from both of those drivers. However, they come out with this on the same piece of tarmac uh, together. Behind them, there's all sorts of uh, races back breaking out there. Four carts going almost four wide there as they go through the, the twisty bits through Devil's Elbow and into the compression. However, things remain the same. Ollie West still leads. Noah Wicklow second. Ernie Wade and Jesse Bailey continue that battle, as does Louis Wilson and Logan Hodgetts. They're together. So two carts battling for first and second. Third and fourth are having their own private battle as well. And now fifth and sixth <laughs> doing likewise. Side by yes. side goes Logan Hodgetts on Lewis Wilson. Yeah, and it's Hodgetts on the inside with the green and... Uh orange bumper and I think they were still side by side they're still side by side up the hill great driving there respectful racing between uh, both Wilson and uh, and Hodgetts there it's uh, Hodgetts in front of the 63 cart uh, Lewis Wilson that's uh, the Tim Wilson Motorsports liveried entry and uh, yeah great great driving that's a fantastic example of uh, how to give each other enough racing room, uh, be competitive, you know, be aggressive, but, uh, yeah, you know, re remember that there's another go-kart alongside you. And these are 6 to 8-year-olds. Yes, these are 6 to 8-year-olds. The, yeah. these, these, these drivers yes. can teach the pros a thing or two yes, in no. racecraft. You don't have to drive in, into one another. You don't have to crash into one another. Exactly. You can allow people room to race around you, and that's what exactly. we see all the time. Van Bain has always blown my mind, Henry. And, always. Uh, still, side by side for the second time uh, for third place between, uh, well, that's West and Wicklow, the two leaders. And, of course, the more time you spend side by side, the, the, the more time you cost yourselves. But it's a head-to-head -head scrap with uh, the clock running down there's uh, the third place uh, duo uh, Wade ahead of Bailey uh, and then it's again Hodgetts and Wilson Purnell Hales Gamble Bowers Stevens Owen and uh, the rest Benjamin uh, uh, Schlievar has not gained as many places in this race as he did in race number one but still up from 22nd to 13th as we start the last lap here at Glanagorse with the uh, enthralled spectators and uh, pushers, the, 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 the Bambino dads with the orange jackets on because they you know, have to wear orange to go on to the circuit. But we wait for our race leader who has managed to pull a bit of a gap on Noah Wicklow yeah, to the top of the has. hill. And uh, that looks uh, like it's a uh, game over 
in terms of the race, the battle, the race lead, and uh, Ollie West has got yeah. this one in the bag. That's the biggest gap we've seen pretty much all day, and whether Noah Wicklow can come back at him, I don't, I'm not sure, because time's run out, basically. Uh, they're on the final lap of this race. If anything, Wicklow dropping oh, back towards yeah. Ernie Wade and Jess Bailey. Let's see if Jet. Oh, in fact, Ernie Wade and Jess Bailey really are catching Noah Wicklow, and if if that looks like possibly Wicklow losing so much time, possibly a problem there, causing him to drop back off the rear bumper of Ollie West, who's about to become the winner, and he does. He drops yep. back to fourth. So a problem there for Noah Wicklow, right there on the last lap there, Henry. Not sure what that could be. I'm not an expert on these Corbin C50s, but it was definitely something to do with the powertrain uh, or the power to the drivetrain, I should say. Yeah, the power or lack thereof, because yeah. he didn't even try to defend. It was like, look, I, I'm going slower, so there's no point. If I if I hug the inside line, then you risk, you know, sort of backing up the field and having a potential, you know, incident. So, again, heartbreaking for Noah Wicklow, but very, very mature as well to not suddenly panic and think, no, yes. I must defend, I must defend. Yeah. You think, okay, the game's up, I'm going to just get home in whatever position I can get home in, but the cart's going to be in one piece, so at least uh, Dad only has to worry about, you know, fixing, you know, a potential mechanical problem, not a mechanical and a, a chassis problem. Yeah, absolutely. Heads up driving there from Norwich Law, so commendable there. Um, so let's have a quick rundown of the top ten of the C50s. Ollie West takes the win. Ernie Wade second, Jess Bailey third, fourth is Noah Wicklow, Freddie Purnell is in fifth, Logan Hodgett sixth, Lewis Wilson seventh, eighth is Henry Hills, and Benjamin Shiva making his way from 22nd, this time he got up to ninth, another fabulous drive from Benjamin Shiva, John Stevens rounds off the top ten. We are next out with the Junior Max, now this one was an absolute, absolute chaotic race all the way down the order with action all the way as we thought i mean this is our primary class of racing here in the car championship um here we are here round two at glanigore just give you a reminder of the calendar you are coming up to my hometown for round three warden law at the end of april 27th and 28th of april warden law just outside just south of sunderland and then we go across country from the east northeast coast to the northwest coast at the end of June, the 22nd and 23rd of June. We go to Rowra for round four. Uh, round five, the final round of the championship, will be taking place at Fulbeck, and that will be on the 13th and 14th of July. We've got our special MSUK uh, Bambino event that takes place on the 6th and 7th of July and that's at the uh, PF International. Um, early finish for a championship, yes, here in the car championship, we get everything wound up uh, by the middle of July. However, our winter series kicks off very, very re relatively early, I should say. Uh, that kicks off on the 28th and 29th of September, and we start our first round of the three-round winter series at Wilton Mill. We then go up, back up to Warden Law again, back up to my home pl hometown, 16th and 17th of November uh, for the second round. And then the third round will take place on the 7th and 8th of December. And it's to be confirmed the venue of the third and final round of the Winter Series. Uh, I have to say, um, you know, a, a big hi to, you know, to Matty Hunter, the entire Hunter family. I know that uh, Kai... Uh, and has joined forces Don't bother, with he's not listening. No, he's, he's not listening. He's not listening. Oh, I've, well, I've just said... Shocking, shocking scenes. Hey, oh, he's just turned us on, apparently. Oh, there we go. Uh, he said he had to turn us off. We, we were going on about powering Bambinos. Of course we were. That's our job. Well, uh, yes, you know, we, 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 we're paid to talk. As, uh, I tell you what, he'd, pay, he'd have to pay good money to get me and you as a team up there, wouldn't he? Well, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, long, it's a long way. I mean, I have to... I can't wait to go back. I will be back at Warden Law uh, this, this this year. Ho ho for the British. Uh, for the British and possibly for, you know, I mean, I'd like to come back to, to this paddock because it's a great well, paddock. Well, Eddie Stewart's got the gig now. Uh, uh, yeah, now sorry. Uh, but um, <laughs> one thing I mentioned, you mentioned Warden Law, the, uh, the, the, the Joe Bradley Memorial Suite, which is the media <laughs> centre at Warden Law. Uh, 2021, I go up there and, of course, we, I, I, we, we, we meet, we start chatting and reminiscing uh, as we do. The next year, we go to there and, and it had just been renamed the Joe Bradley Memorial Suite and you weren't there 
there because you were down in Wembley watching Sunderland oh, watching, yeah, getting yeah, promoted into the yeah, championship. Yeah. Yes. And, of course, I walked up and I saw the Joe Bra- Oh, my God, he's not died, has he? <laughs> the memorial suite? Oh, no. <laughs> Future no, planning. Future planning. Yeah. But, uh, Nobody yeah, else would do that for me well, no, when I, mean, I die. I would, have, I would have thought the Joe Bradley suite would have been just you much know, less panic-inducing for we, people that haven't seen you for I mean, a while. I mean, you know, Matt and Paul Bainbridge would come to my funeral, no doubt. However, two weeks later, if we were to say, um, Joe Bradley, they'd go, who? <laughs> no, so I thought, no, that's the Joe Bradley Memorial Suite. <laughs> I actually got the idea off the, off the uh, commentary booth at Road Atlanta. Okay. And uh, when we first went to Road Atlanta for the first Petit Le Mans, in 1998, there's a chap called Ed Conway was the resident uh-huh, yes. commentator there. So we kind of moved in and took over, you know, and uh-huh. it was a lovely bloke. And then I went back, many years later, went back for the, uh, the historics. Yes. And I walked in, and the commentary box was the Ed Conway Memorial Suite. Oh. And I was like, oh, my God, has Ed, has Ed died? And I was told, no, 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 he hasn't died. <laughs> it's just with future planning. <laughs> Fair enough. And I got caught out the same way as you got uh- caught out. So I thought... Yeah, I said to Matt, hey, I've got a name for the, I for got the, the media suite. Yep. It's a lovely little comedy box. It, it, it's it, got it, a great it, viewer turn one. It's great, it's great for live streaming. Yes. Yep. Um, it, it's, it's not very good for just commentating from because you, you, you're a turn one. You can't see the track. So when I do the circuit comms there, I'm, I'm from the, uh, from the, the control the, box. The control the timing, tower, yes. Timing, timing and scoring. Uh, but uh, speaking of timing and scoring, we're about to take you through the uh, timing and scoring from qualifying. I'm not sure you're uh, going to get through uh, that uh, grid, uh, 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 Judy Rotax, because uh, we've got a. Uh, well, we'll have a little go. It says Marcel, uh, Marcel Popacool and Jensen Pritchard on row one. Henry Hurst Grover and Kaxpa Tomalevsky on row two. Emily Cooper and James Kell are next. And Andrew Dixon and Max Haller. Uh, Ewan House and uh, Braith Murdoch. That's your top ten. Then it's Logan Howes, Callum Ghosh, Lewis Summer and Addison Smith with Jack Robinson rounding out the top 15. Ben Horner, John Buchan, Molly Pugh, Riley Morgan, Luke Sawyers. That's your top 20. And still there are more. Lewis Holt, Harrison Purnell, uh, Purnell, uh, Charlie Vary, Elliot Foster, Archie Doherty, Sam Green Gomez, Aston Brown, Gregor Reed, Aidan McDonnell, and then the three drivers that did not post time in qualifying, Christian Stefanov, Calvin Moffat, and Leon Barlow. Well done, Henry. Oh, and already... And we've been given a... Oh, well, okay. they... Nothing out of they, character they, there they, for they, the juniors. They were listening, and uh, yeah. they, they, they thought, oh, well, give them time to pause and uh, take a, a moment. Um... Looking down there, we've got 30 drivers on our screen. Yeah, 30, and there were 32 who qualified. So we were. I, I think we're maxed out, though, aren't we? For these. Oh, are we? Uh, is, that, is that so? Okay, well, um, I'm trying to see who's not there. Well, uh, uh, Christian Stefanov, uh, I think maybe not here because he didn't start qualifying. Calvin Moffat and Leon Barlow. I mean, who, th- sorry, I mean, 32's maxed out, but we've only got 30 on the track. Ah, 30 on, uh, 30 on the screen. Well, um, that could explain. Uh, a lot. Hopefully, that uh, even if Christian Stefanov is not there, then uh, um, that he is okay. Yeah, Stefanov was a non-starter, so he maybe hasn't turned up. Yes, this or, weekend. Uh, yes, or the, an issue. But uh, right, the, the thirty of them are here, and they're about to hopefully have a bit of a tidier race than yeah. earlier on. Well, we've got a tidier-looking grid going towards the red light. We've got a great view of the red light going out, and we are indeed racing through turn one and up the Dragon Straight. We're in Wales, aptly named. We've got everybody through turn one without incident and everybody over the brow of that hill. <sighs> and that is up a frightening pace into the braking area. And we've got a frightening incident as two carts spear off. I did see the catch the number there, the 266. Two, six, six. We've got two carts coming together and, and seemingly conjoined. Yep. Somebody wanting to get on with it. Meanwhile, at the front of the field, Henry, they're already onto those twisty bits down through Devil's Elbow and on towards the compression. Now, of course, that's the uh, the red and white livery carts. There's uh, the, the, I saw, definitely saw a couple of Cato Motorsports I livery carts. I think that's Jensen Pritchard in the lead. Yeah, that's good that one. was. It was Jensen Pritchard. It's now Kaksmar Tomalevsky, uh, the KMS uh, driver, uh, leading. And uh, yellow flags there. And uh, that driver in third place, that was uh, Marcel Popacool. Uh, thought about making a move and then just ducked back in, saw the yellow flag, so smart reaction driving there. Uh, we have, uh, I'm trying to see who may have uh, come a cropper. Uh, there's a 245 cart, is one of those that is stranded. That's Lewis Holt. Yes, and uh, Lewis Holt was starting quite 
way quite well up the grid. There is uh, Leon Barlow uh, on the X Cart chassis He's going a bit a slower. Yeah. Um, it's, so, some days you're the windshield, some days you're the bug. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He's the bug here. Tomaleski leads in. Marcel Popical finally got by and in the second. Andrew Dixon third. Harry Hurst Grover. Jensen Pritchard. Demorton to fifth already. Jim Skell sixth. Max Haller, Logan Howes, Brath, Brith Murdoch, and Ewan House is the driver that's rounding off that top ten. Yeah, now uh, the, the, this, something is awry with the, uh, the the scoring pile on the right hand side of your screen. Yes, there is. Uh, so we'll you know, we'll endeavour to keep you up to date of because uh, we're running lap number three now. Tomanevsky trying to show uh, Popacall and Dixon a clean pair of heels as they head down through Devil's Elbow and Compression Corner, uh, and Tomanevsky who. Uh, I think he finished third in the opener, uh, in the somewhat chaotic opener that I watched over the shoulders of my uh, future replacement, <laughs> Eddie Stewart. Future planning again, Eddie. Yeah, future planning again, exactly, yes. Yep, and to uh, cut that off, we've got a great battle there. That's third, that, that's third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. That concertina up in the spoon yeah. there. And now we spread back out as they go da back down the hill. The two leaders beginning to come back together. Take no notice of what the uh, timing screen says on your TV screens, as that's not uh, scraping the uh, the data from the timing and scoring. It's Kasper Tomaleski and Marcel Popical. There's the two drivers there that are coming through now, nose to tail, bumper to bumper. And again, the two teammates, aren't they? What team is that then? That's from a K Kato Motorsport. Kato the Motorsport. The KMS team, Kato Adams. Yes. Uh, it, it, you know, again, a, a very decorated carter in his own right. Multiple uh, Kartmasters Grand Prix winner. Uh, now team boss. I keep teasing him, saying he does occasionally know what he's doing. <laughs> um, he seems to. Yes. He's two got of his <laughs> drivers, one, two at the moment. Yeah, and uh, heading up the hill there. Now they've... Uh, I see, you remember, he, he burst onto the scene with the likes of uh, Johnny Wilkinson and uh, Lorcan Hannafin. And the Cato Motorsport team uh, a few years ago. I love your knowledge. Uh, uh, <laughs> I love your knowledge. Is it, you're on a right up. I, I know. I know. You. Sorry. It's. Uh, I know. It's, it's, <laughs> I it's, love it's, your knowledge. But it's 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 um, it's great to see them doing so well as well. Now the thing is, we might not get the similar, the same sort of attitude from teammates. Marcel Popical, very much concerned with getting past, looking like he's uh, pulling alongside, but he's not going to make that silly move. On perhaps a, a, a driver no. in front of him who was with another team because he's got to face race. them, face yeah. them back out. Yes. And remember, Tomaleski, he's no slouch. He's no. the current Kart Championship Junior Road Axe Champion. Yes, in, in, indeed. And uh, but moving into place number two, who I would who I would surmise would be last year's championship runner-up, uh, Harry Hurst Grover in the two plates, followed by James Cowell, Max Haller, Logan Howes, Braith Murdoch, Ewan House. No, that's a. Uh, Harry Hurst Grover in third, then it's Dixon, Cal, Haller, Pritchard, Murdoch, uh, Horner, Smith, Howes, and Ewan House in 12th. And a really good scrap between 11th place on back. I mean, this yeah, is a good locks, scrap for it? the race lead. Yeah. Um, but it's a, it's more of a tactical uh, situation, you know. Well, yeah. I, th I think that Popacool, with his teammate leading him round, Remember, Tomaleski's been very successful in junior Rotax, so Popacool, who's a really uh, smart and experienced driver, will be learning from his more experienced teammate here. And rather than sort of mounting a challenge, if anything, he's dropped off the tail of Tomaleski. What he's got to be very careful of, he doesn't fall back towards the clutches of Harry Hurst Grover, who was also... Uh, no slouch and a very experienced driver carrying the number two. He's the current car championship vice champion yep. for this category in the car championship. And he is just driving around with Andrew Dixon and James Kell right on his bumper, but looking very, very composed there on the infield. Uh, yeah, indeed. And uh, there is uh, Harry Hurst Grover. And he's got the two. They, now, they look like Thule Motorsport liveried machines behind him, although I stand to be corrected, uh, of uh, Dixon and Kell, the 225 and the 252. Um, that's a... That's a tell their teammates because uh, and, and with one eye on a budget is because they've only got the twos and the fives so it cuts down the amount of st number stickers you have to buy <laughs> yeah. me and my teammate yeah. used to do that well, he was 28 and i was 82 well it's only recently that kai hunters ran the number one I, well, um, yeah, he, I mean, he would not 
he would not give up that number that he used to carry. What was it, 95? I think he, he was, he was 95. Ni- ni- 95 and for... he, he, he won the he won the plate. He won the GP yep. plate. But yep. He carried the 95. Carried the 95. And, well, and now he's holding that number no, one. Now he's holding number one. Told him he has to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Going to <laughs> yeah, because he's, he's thinking, right, Kai, you got to come. Yeah. We got to we got to we got to try and sell seats here. He's, we yeah, got to try absolutely. Your, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. For the for the family team. Yeah. Um, but as uh, they cross the line to complete lap number nine. 30 seconds to go. So it's going to be one lap to go board next time by, isn't yeah. it? So we're on the penultimate lap, and these two at the front now. Then now Popper, Popper caught by yeah. a little look. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so he's, he's played the waiting game. He's played yep. the team game. But now he comes up to the rear bumper of our leader, Kasper Tomalewski, down the hill, through the sweeping left-hander. That's the carousel. I love that corner, the way it goes downhill into it. Mm. And then out of there, Devil's Elbow is kind of two corners in one before yep. they fire out of there and then continuing downhill into the compression there, or here, I should yep. say, it, into the compression here. And then, all right, now then, as they hit the last lap board there, just coming underneath, it looks like Tomalewski has actually responded. Yeah, and a He's quick, responded there, hasn't he? A quick check over his shoulder. Yeah. Um, and that, that, well, that was a bit of a mistake there, though, because you see, as he was checking over his shoulder, he, he lost grip of the steering wheel that's, uh, and moved to the left of the Dragon Straight. It's going to put him under a little bit of pressure. Uh, but it's a case of, you know, will Popper Cool spot uh, an opportunity that is a safe opportunity to get through? So what's this corner called here? Cause I, I so this is going wrong. uphill. This is, right. turn six, this is turns five and six. Yeah. Uh, and then this is then Devil's, Devil's elbow. elbow. This is Devil's Elbow. Yeah, and then uh, they come out of Devil's Elbow. Into and compression then there. Then the compression's there. Because that's where the chiropractor comes So turn comes six, in. does that have a name? It's just, no. It's All right. top, top of the hill. Top of the hill, six. <laughs> top of the hill. Check it flag for Tomalewski, who takes heat number two for Junior Rotax. Marcel Popacul, his KMS teammate, in second. The number two of Harry Hurst Grove across the line in third. And we then had James Kell in fourth. Andrew Dixon, fifth, sixth, was Max Haller. Ben Horner was seventh. Addison Smith, eighth. Callum Gosh was ninth. And Braith Murdoch was the driver that rounded off the top ten. Ewan House was eleventh, and Jensen Pritchard, who had a great qualifying, yeah. has dropped down. I think he was kind of out of position, if I dare say. I think if they were, the, the greatest of respect, the Jensen conditions were mixed, you know, yes, for mixed qualifying. Of, yeah, yeah. Then, yeah, but again, it's good practice, and, and it's one of those things that uh, you know Pritchard. He, he might be a bit disappointed. However, he's like learned how to you know race at his pace. Don't try and finish eighth or fifth when you're only a 15th place driver try and finish 13th because that's a result you know if you try and defend against drivers that are going to get past you anyway you could end up out in the boondocks as yeah, it were and yeah you because you it's how you're you're overtaken isn't it it's how it's yeah. how you deal with being overtaken and you yeah. want to lose as little ground as you possibly can uh, and that, that's exactly the lesson that mm-hmm. you were talking about there, Henry. If it's not it's not a simple case of just dropping back down the field. You want to drop down the field at, at, as little as as little a rate as possible. Yeah, you don't want to lose too many places. And, and Jensen again was he drives for the Hunter Motorsport team or was driving for the Hunter Motorsport team last year? He last, was last yeah. year, but yeah. at the start of this year as well, because uh, it, it, it was like a Hunter family outing to Dubai for the Rotax O plates. Yes, it was, um, yes. We answered yes. on a postcard or in the live chat, if you want to speculate what happened or who forgot the hire car keys on the last day of the event, uh, or, you know, or, or the uh, the truck keys to, to unload or upload all the equipment. I have heard this story. Ah, well, we'll find uh, in the live chat. I bet we'll, Matt hasn't heard we'll, this story. As well. <laughs> well, we'll give we'll give Matt uh, a chance to respond now that we know he's tuned in. He goes, yeah. <laughs> Who was the dime bar that uh, left the the, 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 the the higher car keys or the higher van keys? Because when I left on Monday morning, there were still uh, several members of the Hunter Motorsport crew standing around the hire car, packing things up a day late. I think that was always the plan to, to pack up. The, uh, to pack up a day late, but yes, yeah, yes yeah, but, it, but it was the, the, not it, having there not was, having the, the, the hire car keys. Is, yeah, yeah, uh, is there, was, there was a set of there was a set of keys that were forgotten by a member of the team. Uh, it, could have been uh, yes but well, uh, you could speculate in the live chat and we do really appreciate the live chat all the comments coming in uh you know uh, as well because we want to try and get you the audience closer to the broadcast closer to you know the supporters and it does the drivers when they watch this back you know if they know that a friend or a family member a relative has been you know watching from you know afar and they've been supported it does make a difference to them yeah it absolutely does um, by the way, 
Um, I've just been messaged this by uh, Gaz Bury, who's watching at home. Yes. Um, Macaulay Austin is debuting Honda Civics this week. This week. Yes, that would be that would be yeah. Alex Austin's older brother. Macaulay's yeah. back in the sport. Um, yes. Uh, again. Again. I, you're I, really I, old. I Henry, keep ask, I keep yeah. getting asked. Who's one of the, the best drivers I've ever seen in karts, and uh, I, I say, look, you really, know, Macaulay Austin is up, was up there. Really. Absolutely. The boy from Bryn Mawr. That's quite a thing, um, Henry. You you have seen oh. a lot. Of carts. Yes. Uh, uh, and, you know, there's, there's that famous uh, YouTube footage, I think it's of Ayrton Senna, uh, qualifying at Adelaide in, ni- in 1985. And the, the, the BBC commentary, that, that black JPS Lotus, it's never straight. Yeah. Because he's trying to harness about 13 right. million yeah. horsepower yeah. Yeah. from a, a yes. Renault turbo engine with about eight miles of, uh, eight seconds of turbo lag yeah. on some Goodyear D compound rubber that was half yeah. delaminating. The rear end is just bouncing uh, yeah. around, isn't it? And you, you watch... Macaulay drive a car. They used to call him the Little Tin Man because he had an ex-post office LDV cargo. As his, uh, you know, his dad Neil would do the spanners. Wow, fabulous! And, and they had a tin fuel tank, uh, and and he went up and finished top three of the British Championship as a privateer. But you watch him, and the car would dance. Mm. It would like you would literally. It was it was in, complete instinct, you know. And against you know the, the far better funded teams and drivers around them. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah, every single time that you looked out on the track, the car was dancing and. And it was it was proper seat of your pants sort of you know react 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 just yeah. in instinct. Be interesting to see how he transitions to cars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, um, the, the, well, yeah. Yeah. So I, I forget the championship that guy said. I'm just going to have a recheck it. It's um, the Miltech Sport. The Miltech Sport Civic Cup. Yes. Yes. With uh, Pro Alloys Racing, we wish him all the very best of luck with that. Um, as we've got our Intermax category out, our Intermax class. They're out for their second heat, and it's the smallest grid of the afternoon, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll give everybody their dues. Yes, Max Gilman on the pole position. I have got the grid up there, haven't I? Yes, I have qualified. Max Gilman uh, on the pole position with Jensen Seal alongside. JJ Plowman in third with Harvey Bacon alongside. Fifth place is Oscar Roach and Nathan Edwards in sixth. And then on the fourth row, George Ralston and Drew Davidson with Sandro Kemp and Fraser Anderson rounding off ten carts. Thomas Jackson... Didn't start. I'm not sure if he, we have Thomas he here. He did go out he and then retired right. for the first race. But uh, right. I could see the ST racing name, John Stewart's team. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, you know, again, uh, you know, John's now there's, well, we'll talk about you. John, there's a driver that uh, did not, did not, uh, um, how should we say this? He, he, he was always took no prisoners. fired. Took no prisoners. That's yes. exactly it. Took no prisoners. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Northeast team. Great to see John Stewart, senior and junior. Yes. I'm old enough to remember John Senior. Yes, as well. Here we go. Then we are racing in Intermax. And Max Gilman makes well, yeah, a good start. Brilliant start. He's pulled out a little bit of a gap. It's too wide behind him. Up the Dragon straight towards the Spoon Curve, over the brow of the hill, into the braking areas. He crossed the brow. It looks a frantic pace from that camera angle, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. We've got frantic pace from all of our uh, from second place down to about tenth. This is allowing our leader to break free, and we've got a massive gap there. We'll just confirm the number. We think yeah, it's it, Max it, Gilman. Yeah, it, from no, it is. It is Gilman in front, and um, with the greatest respe- of respect to the other drivers in this race, Gilman is by far the most experienced running at you know major events at national levels. You know, seen him over the last couple of years. So you know, one would expect him to you know know how to be aggressive when the tyres are cold and this is a key thing for these young drivers when you start the race the tyres are cold Some try, sometimes the tyres are, are pressured to come on later in the race but yeah. to be ultra aggressive and quick and confident in the cart at the start of a race is, is a skill that just takes time yeah. to learn yeah and it's you can really tell the great drivers are on it absolutely immediately and they can and they can find that level of grip and, the, and where the limit of the grip is really really quickly and that's what we're seeing max gilman that the driver in second place jensen yep. seal he's and it's about confidence isn't yep. it we're now and you can see the confidence in the drivers as the tires come in and you yep. can clearly see when the tires come in because yep. that's when everybody starts really plowing into those braking areas and really turning in and seal yep. If in, he is, in fact, catching Gilman. Yeah, he's done the fastest lap of the race, a 45.276, three-tenths of a second quicker than, than Gilman in that, uh, is that the Ambition uh, Motorsport livery. Paul James' team, I think he's got... Uh, uh, oh, I'm trying to think... Uh, 
of the uh, the guy that's uh, helping to run the team. I'll, I'll, I'll deliberately forget his name and see him later on. But uh, it's Paul James' is, uh, uh, team. I mean, Paul James only runs cadet carts because they're the only ones that he can um, actually lift up. Because he's, <laughs> bless him. No, I'm only joking, Paul. Yeah. I'm only joking, Paul. He's uh, uh, down from the uh, southeast of England, Bayford Meadows uh, way. But uh, yeah, Jensen Sale is closing in on Max yeah, Gilman. Yeah, he he's catching him. And uh, you can see that Jensen Sale's got that. Uh, it, it's a very distinctive driving style. It's sort of a Mark Kimber style driving style where as he turns right, he sort of moves his body to the left a little bit. Yeah, just getting, the, getting those tyres to dig in. And it's, yeah. it's to lift the axle as well. Yes. It, it's it, to release the inside wheel, isn't it? Mark Kimber is a. Uh, is a sort of coined that that driving style more than anything else and has made it very very effective it because looks quite uncomfortable it, it, yes but you've got it you can only do it a certain amount if you if you lean over too far you unbalance yourself yes and your arms so you've got to keep your arm muscles your, your lower your lower arm muscles sort of like straight enough but then just ease your body weight you know from one side of the axle to the other side of the axle just to help the cart turn it, a little bit and it's to get the inside wheel to release the because yep. the axle twists on itself yep because there's no differential on a cart it's nope. a solid axle so when you go through an arc, the inside wheel is moving through a, a narrower circle than the outside wheel. So by lifting that inside wheel, it's freeing the axle up. And you can, you can hear the engine yep. not, not deaden if you not go off. You can hear the revs pick up. We've had a change for uh, third yes. as Harvey Bacon. We saw it go by J.J. Plowman. J.J. Plowman uh, in a bit of a lonely fourth place now because he's got a bit of a gap now to Nathan Edwards and Fraser Anderson mm -hmm. in fifth and sixth. Uh, there's the SD Racing driver there, JJ Plowman. I'm uh, being with SD Racing, who are from the northeast. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of thinking that might not be any relative of Mark. No, I'm, I'm no, I'm thinking I, I could be. Uh, I could have got we, my, I could have got myself into a right pickle there over well, we could, uh, Plowman. We, we, we might be able to f uh, fathom oh. that out, as as Henry and I will be doing uh, a bit of a a paddock walk. Yes, that will be available um, on our Facebook page on Karting Live TV, but it will we'll also go out. In, as part of the broadcast tomorrow in the lunch break. And because Henry uh, is more familiar with the format of a live walk around, Henry, to make <laughs> yeah. you feel at home here at oh, Carling Live TV, we're going to do that. That's very kind. We're going to well, do thank that you this very evening. Well, uh, uh, no, it may be pitch black by then. That's fine. It's, it, that's which, absolutely which fine. Which suit. We've got faces for radio. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that'll suit <laughs> us. <laughs> but, um, but no, and I, I love the, 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 the paddock shows, the paddock walkabouts, because... It introduces you to the, the the characters. All the drivers look exactly the same now. Well, they I only... don't recognise anyone with helmets on. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, <laughs> or without it, the helmets, you I know, say. it shows you because this sport, you know, at this level, this is a junior sport. So every single one of these drivers, they've got their kids, they've got families, they've got parents, siblings, you know, brothers, sisters who are here supporting. And without the the entire family, none of the drivers get to go racing. Yeah, so absolutely. To, to get yeah. a chance for the viewers, the Karting Live TV viewers. Uh, to uh, give them an introduction to yeah the personalities and, and and the behind the scenes to give you an idea of what goes on into creating a spectacle like this and uh, with Gilman and Sale looking looking like they're about to put on a spectacle for the race lead, um, yeah. which is a great opportunity to go and have some fun and and to yeah to, to introduce you to some new faces and names in the kart championship. Yeah, I'm looking forward to our little walk around. It's only going to be about a half an hour, Henry, to fill the gap in the lunch break tomorrow, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll hopefully speak to a few of these carters without their helmets. Yeah. As we are inside the final 90 seconds for the second heat for the Intermax, and I'm going to sneeze, Henry, so you oh. can take over. Well, uh, Gesundheit in, in, uh, in, in advance, but uh, as uh, Sale starts to look around the rear bumper of Gilman's cart, now you'll watch him take a slightly different line through compression corner there. The idea is he wants to get a wide entrance into this corner, a tight exit, gets on the power early so he can settle into the slipstream. And now he's five cart lengths, four, three. Look at the slipstream yeah. effect take place there. And before you know it, he's back literally resting his nose cone on the rear bumper of the race leader. It's kind of gauging how you come through, how far away you are through that final turn. Yeah. Because you need to give yourself a bit of room or else you're going to trip over into turn one. Yeah, you don't and so want to you've be... got to give that gap, the, to, to decrease the gap and then continue decreasing and pulling alongside. You want to time it so that halfway down the back straight, you've got the momentum and then you can either, if the, if the person you're trying to pass defends, you can sweep to the outside without losing momentum. And if the first person doesn't defend, you can just dive up the inside. Oh, we're inside of oh, yes. uh, 10 seconds on the clock, so we're going to get two more chances 
uh, two more laps good to timing, give more chances. Timing. Yeah. Good timing. Not, not no. quite enough. Not no, quite. no, not quite enough. Because you know what? Gilman's engine comes into play as well. Yes. Because his engine's absolutely uh, giving some great power output there at the end of the straight, which is a, a factor, again, down to gearing and stuff. However, these guys are on, are they on fixed gearing? Uh, Let's I, just no, I check. I don't oh, believe uh, they in the max, are. In the max, in the max, I in the think max. it is. No, no, open gearing. No, it's it's the primos that are on the, yep. uh, uh, no, uh, it's the, the, uh, the primos and the mighty bang, uh, the mighty bambinos that are on the fixed gearing. And it's going to be Micromax be. that's changing on April the first, isn't it? To a fixed gearing ah. and a different tire. Oh, mid-season or how is it? That's a well, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, well, before before no. the British, before actually, the, before, before the, the British, British, yes. British championship. Yeah. Okay, but uh, so well, and, and this championship will follow suit as well into April. So by the time we get to Warden Law, the Micromax. Anyway, we're talking about Intermax, so we digress. Yeah. Well, it's a last a half a lap to go, and uh, Jensen Sale has been biding his time, and uh, it, that, that sunlight on the camera does it does sort of this. It's this, beautiful, this camera, isn't it? The, yeah, yeah. yeah we're it creating sort of, art here. Oh, Henry. well, yes. we're creating art. <laughs> but uh, are we going to see a move in the final couple it, of quarters? I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure that Jensen Sale there in the bright green, yellowy green, as the checkered flag flies for Max Gilman, he does indeed hang on to it. Jensen Seal chased him all the way to the line. Harvey Bacon, the, the, quite a lonely third, Gigi Plowman, an equally lonely fourth. It was then Nathan Edwards, Fraser Anderson, sixth, seventh, George Ralston. Uh, George, uh, uh, Oscar Roach, sorry, was eighth. Uh, Drew Davidson, ninth. Tenth was Sandro Kemp. And then there's the 11 cart fail through, taking the chequered flag. Uh, we have got our mighty Bambinos next. These are the electric carts. The electric carts, yep. exactly the same as our Coma C50s, which you saw earlier. Um, I want to give a shout out here to, yes. um, it's from Alina Cuckoo. It's a shout out from Dublin to Scotty, the cameraman. Oh, you see, that. Scotty, our cameraman, who is up on the hill, bringing us some of those creating yes, art. Yes, yes. Scotty uh, is creating art out there. No question. I know. Koyara Scotty, eat your heart out. Yeah. With um, the, uh, that's the, Scotty on the hill creating the light. He's oh. using the light to create yes. art, everybody. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> but but um, I mentioned earlier, um, you know, to, not, to, not to put a dampener on things, but mentioned uh, Gerard Cox, uh, who sadly passed away. I must also mention uh, another lady who passed away in January, Shelley Barrett, uh, the wife of Mick Barrett and the mum of Dan Barrett and the Mick Barrett Racing Team, who passed away as well. I saw a Mick Barrett coat, uh, Mick Barrett Racing coat, uh, coat in the paddock. Uh, earlier, so I thought it must be remiss of me not to uh, uh, to you know, pay a quick tribute to to, to Shelley yeah, Barrett and nice. uh, give yeah. uh, you know our thoughts are obviously with Mick and we're, the entire team. We're, we're all just one big family, the karting family. I would yes. extend that to the motorsport family. Oh yeah, yes. we really are. It doesn't matter what you know. We we Nick and I uh, here at the car championship. We are, you know in June we'll be off to the Le Mans Twenty Four Hours in the World Endurance Championship. In, it, it's the same mindset. You, you're surrounded by people in the paddock at Le Mans, and it's the same sort of attitude. In fact, we've got a Le Mans winner here. Yes, with yes. Nick Tandy, yeah, yeah, yeah. whose whose kid Felix Tandy is, is about, on the pole position. Is about for to start our next from pole race. Position. We've also got uh, Jade Edwards and Josh Cook wandering around. Yes, uh, helping uh, Albie J Stubbs. Yes, yeah. helping Albie J. So, um, although we, you know, although Josh Cook is only here because we have to have a minimum quota of gingers in the paddock. <laughs> just boxed so he wouldn't be here otherwise <laughs> no 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 i'm already joking josh I, i've already i've already uh seen him so do you remember he, when josh cook was in car uh, i remember he was in formula blue what on earth was formula blue oh wow i i believe I, I think it was i think it was formula there was definitely a josh cook that raced formula blue which is a a, a south of england thing ron shown and tabor karting um I, I remember jade edwards as a small child running around the paddock Jim Edwards' his daughter. The, the Jim Edwards' his daughter. Jim Edwards. I remember Jim Edwards senior, senior in Renault Five racing. Oh. I remember Jade's dad was in Renault Clio when I was the team manager at Robert Shaw Racing. Okay, yeah. the Clio Cup team, and Jade was a, a 2007. How old were you, Jade? I don't know. You were a small child. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, yes. you and your sister. Um, so yes, we are that old. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. we, we we are. Um, but uh, the, the mighty Bambinos, that, this will be lost on, on them because, again, they are, you know, 
just uh, age six, se- uh, minimum age of six, six, seven, and eight years old. Yes, they were born in 2019. Now, it is possible with, with the way that karting is working. You know, you've got the Mighties, but you've got other uh, elect- uh, sort of el- electric carts that some of these drivers could go through their entire career without driving an internal combustion engine. You know, they're in Bambinos now. There's the there's a, a, a Rotax E10 Cadet engine that is set to start in the UK and you know, come on stream, you know, this year, next year. Uh, there's, there's a bit of a hole with the juniors at the moment, although right. there's, a, there's an E20 junior, and then there's seniors and masters. The, the stifler has been... And I, and I, and it's it, the weight. It, and, and Yes, the, so the weight and the weight of the batteries, and but also the stifling factor has been... The charging process. Yes. Now, now, Johnny from Mighty, who I will get in here for an interview before Certainly. the season end. Uh, well, before today, yeah. Before well, tomorrow, ends. Well, no, he keeps, he keeps shirking, mate. Well, what will happen is... very just, shy. You're too nice, Joe. I just go... I, I, well, the, go and drag him in. I, yes. I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, he was telling me that these carts are good at a, at a meeting like this, at yeah. a meeting like the car championship, a two-day meeting, two heats of the day, uh, three races tomorrow. Yeah. They are good for one charge. That's that's a, that that's the key. He said no one will will not recharge their batteries tonight. But they don't have. But to. they don't have to. These yeah. will go through till Monday, and no, that's that, the key, isn't it? No, that is that is uh, impressive. I think that's going to be the future. The yes. key to the future. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, and, with, and, with and the, the other thing, because I'm going to we're going to do grid. A grid. Nick Tandy was right. telling us in an interview last last at the last round, the the mighty uh, category was very very attractive to him. Because of the lack of maintenance. Yeah. Because of the lack of time that he has. Or, or the lack and, of clue. And it, he's and not normally joking and time. You don't have to tinker with the... Uh, with the, with yep. the uh, oh, Nick was putting mini, in, uh, mini engines in mini stocks when he was 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And 12, he can wheel the spanner all Yes, right. but, but it's the lack of that. It's the lack of the tinkering and the lack of the messing around that has to be done to get the best out of those Koma engines that some people are just not really suited to that. For various reasons, yeah. not, no, no, not just ability and knowledge, but also time. Shall I have a look at the at the grid? Well, I think we should. Well, we're they're, coming, they're coming on to it. Well, so we've, yes. got, we've got a standing start, which yes. is good for me. Yep. Felix Tandy, following his dad's footsteps and putting it on pole position, he'll be delighted with that. Will young Felix? Oliver Woodall's alongside. Then we've got Ralph Martin and Ollie West. Ollie doing uh, double duties, as mm-hmm. we've mentioned there, also out in the the, the petrol engined uh, cars. We might have to have a word with Ollie tonight and tell him uh, and ask him what, what's the main difference. Exactly around here, the yeah. differences. Yeah, uh, Heath Smith and Junior Wright are next up on row three. Row four is Jack Harper and Ava Garrett. Maximilian McCalski and Arthur Thompson are next. Then we've got Hugo Wilson, uh, Hugo Williams, Jensen James Williams, Frank Pearson, Etienne Gardner, Nico Mohan, Hadley Jarvis, Arthur Bath, Kai Ergensoy, Christian Doshi, and Henry Hills is the uh, last of our twenty carts in the mighty electric carts. Uh, it hasn't gone quiet, everybody. Um, it's just these carts, uh, the, the only noise coming from them on track is the sound of the tyres on yes, the track. and you can hear the tyres squeal, which is, uh, at, at first, it's a, it's a strange sensation to get used to, but the lights are out. We're off and racing. And oh, Felix, Tandy. Yeah, Felix has uh, gone off like a cat on a hot tin roof. Yes. And up in the second place, Ralph Martin in the black crash helmet, number 32. Same uh, as last one, was it? Very exactly good start the same. as well. Exactly the same as Heat 1. Felix Tanny got away. Ralph Martin made a great mm. start. And these carts really do pull away massively quick off the line as they yep. go. Oh, and there's the into that uh, over the brow of the hill and into Spoon. Tandy under pressure early this time. He had at least a couple of laps before he had to worry about somebody on his bumper. But this time, Ralph Martin, Ralph Martin now oh. pressuring down the inside and Tandy being ushered to the outside somewhat. Yep, and um, he's got to be careful he doesn't lose yeah, any he more is. positions. But, uh, yeah, good move there from Ralph Martin just to set up the race leader going into the first half of the carousel. And he was just able to get to the inside. And, oh, there's a wheel-to-wheel b- oh, dicing, a bit of a territorial dispute these there. These carts are so narrow they can go too wide through parts of the track that no one else can. Yes, and the, and the drivers, uh, again, just starting out, six, seven years old, they didn't know any different. They're like, well, there's a bit of tarmac there. I'm trying to put my go-kart in it. I love the gesticulations from the parents oh, yeah. on the <laughs> sidelines there. Yeah, yeah. Come on, hurry up. Yep, yeah, we're going as fast as we can. I can yeah. show everybody out there on the sidelines. Yes. This is a great race. Once again, Tandy moves on to the rear bumper. A little bit of a different of opinion of line in the spoon as Tandy uh, with his competitors, Ollie West. Ollie West in the green helmet, losing out a little bit there down the hill towards the carousel. 
And Tandy, if anything, uh, Henry, he's mm-hmm. catching Ralph Martin, and he's catching him, and and well, you know, he's learned so much. He learned so much in round one at yep. Wilton Mill, and you can see here he is leading uh, from pole position, and now following in second place, having lost that position, having lost that lead, here he is coming back at him. He's like a sponge. Just, just is yeah. that these kids are like sponges. Absolutely, yeah, they're just soaking up, you know, as much information every time they hit the track. So we can see big jumps in competitiveness now. Also then, you know, then you see, and quite often you see, you see the driver, you know, learns how to drive quickly, but then they've got to learn how to race quickly because the two yeah. are not necessarily, you know, it, the same thing. You, you can do one lap very quickly, but then you've got to do eight laps. And racing very well indeed has it's, gone Oliver Woodall, who yep. did go by Ollie West, but Ollie West has gotten back. So Ollie West behind these two in back into third. Looking, if you'd looked away and then looked back, you would have thought there's nothing changed. However, Junior Wright has gone ahead of Oliver Woodall, who, who got into third place, but now finds himself in fifth. And this is how this is how tight these races are. Yes, yeah, somebody at the top of the hill was uh, was exploring the uh, the scenery. But uh, what the drivers this pack here, third, fourth, and fifth, it, they need to work together. They were just before half distance. We still got four minutes to go. Now that's going to give Junior right in that eleven cart, the second cart on your screen, a great chance uh, to make a move because Ollie West ran wide, and. Uh, now, is that the RCE logo on the number 11 car of Junior Wright? That's the Rich- Richardson Chassis Engineering team. A team that, you know, British team, they do a lot of uh, short oval stuff, you know, uh, and have just moved into karting, manufacturing their own uh, their own chassis and uh, a few bits and bobs. Well, that's who supports Felix as well. Ah, right. Okay. Connections the, with Nick. The, Nick, Nick comes from a, uh, a short oval background. Ah, right, yes. Yeah. The Richardson Chassis Engineering team, uh, they broke broke out onto the national scene uh, you know, about 18 months ago and uh, it's great to see again variety of chassis you know different uh, manufacturers different brands you know all here which is which is good variety is the spice of life you don't want just one chassis manufacturer dominating everything no that's called british formula three back y- in the day wasn't y- it? yeah, yeah. If, if you're not in a <laughs> if you're not in a delara then you're not or a reynard yeah. or you know over time it was a rolt and then it was a reynard <laughs> it was a, yes no, it's nothing at all. No, <laughs> yeah, no, whatever it is now, I don't, no yeah. idea. Uh, Felix Tandy still behind Ralph Martin as they cross the line. This is the battle for third, though. The green helmet of uh, Ollie West now has Junior Wright still with him. And uh, Oliver Woodall, who did drop back from that third place to fifth. We've got a back mark becoming involved as well. The two leaders have gotten by on Dragon Street, so that won't cause any problems there, Henry. But there's the third, fourth, and fifth also. No problems there, and they stay together. If anything, are those three catching those two ahead? They of are, very slightly. And uh, that's something I've been impressed with both Ralph Martin and Felix Tandy. The temptation to just go and race and battle with each other is, 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 is a, huge at this age. But they've, they've stayed nose to tail, and now the second group, are, well, uh, West and Wright, are slowly inching towards them. They are catching them, but not at a great, you know, they're not catching them in leaps and bounds. Yeah, but which, uh, yeah. they will now they because are now. in the slipstream. Yes. Here we go. So the two-cart battle for the lead has very quickly become a four-car battle. Well, four and a half carts, because we're, yeah. gonna, we're not going to discount Oliver Woodall, who's almost on the rear bumper of that number 11 junior right. Here mm. they go, then. All four. Felix Tanney's been in the wheel tracks, absolutely in the slipstream of Ralph Martin. Each time they've gone up Dragon, the Dragon Straight, up the hill, towards Spoon, looking very, very like he's just taunting us with that move but no through spoon ralph martin has the momentum and he has speed through that corner down the hill plunging downhill that's quite a drop there yep. into the carousel it flattens out as they go through the t- the turn there through the left hander that's turn six which leads into turn seven another right hander so short straight then turn seven and then this is the devil's elbow Yep. And to right Ooh. and left. Oh, Tandy. Slight. Was that Tandy well, sliding that, that wide was, there? That was West making a committed move on Tandy and then realising at the last minute that uh, it wasn't going to work and uh, just a little bit of, uh, you know, side-by-side uh, brushing. Yes, <laughs> wheel banging. A wheel banging. And, uh, but I was going to say that the number 11 cart of Junior Wright is looking particularly racy. A couple of times on that last lap, uh, he sort of feigned a half move. But uh, we've got more than a half move. We've got a full move. And it's round the outside. Incredible. Goes Felix Tandy. They're three wide up the hill. Now, this, I, this might not pay off for him if he's not careful. He does have to slot back in behind Ralph Martin. 
but behind Tandy, everybody's tripping over. Woodall's back into it. Woodall's back into fourth. Defensive driving for Ralph Martin down towards the carousel. Felix Tandy having to slot in behind. If he's not careful, Ollie West's going to have that second place. The green helmet of Ollie West is the cart in third place there. But no change. If you looked away, there is no change. Only for fourth. Ooh. Oh, and Ollie West down the inside of both of them. And he comes together. He's on the rear bumper now of Felix Tandy, who goes very wide indeed and comes back into third. But that was Felix Tandy leading for a, for a while there. And back into that first place has gone Ralph Martin. Yeah, Ralph, he went from first there to third to first. There was two lead changes yes, there. First to third to first in three corners. And now it's anyone's guess. We're on the final lap. So, Martin will try and hug the white line as much as possible. Tandy once again going to the outside as the sun. Yes, you did read that right. The sun uh, <laughs> begins to, to, to set here at Glanagorse, Gorse. And oh. there's West into the, the lead. Yes, and he took Tandy with him, but just slotting in behind has oh. gone Ralph Martin. So Ollie West is now leading. Tandy second. Ralph Martin now third. Round the outside of, of Tandy there. Not quite. Turn six. They're still first, second and third. Uh, West, Tandy and Martin is the order. That's not how they cross the line, but it's not what they're going to be by the time they get back round to the chequered flag as Tandy goes through the inside and takes the lead in very fine style. They're already out of the compression, heading down to the final turn. It's going to be Felix Tandy who's going to take this heat win in fine style, but who's going to be for second place? They're three wide across the line for second place, and it went the way of Ralph Martin. Ralph Martin takes it by seven thousandths of a second from Ollie West in third, who's seven hundredths of a second ahead of Oliver Woodall. I'm going to have to have a lie down. Well, that was that was incredible, incredible. Not it was incredible racecraft from those youngsters. Uh, yes, uh, that, that's what impressive. That was so good. Five carts all in a bunch, and they all came home together. Facing the right way. Incredible. With everything is still attached. I've seen grown men not able to do that. Yeah, you know. It was British fun. touring car drivers, look at that Bambino race, yes. please. Well, uh, junior road tax drivers, look at that Bambino <laughs> race. That's not going to work now. They're no, not going to. No, but um, Crack and racing and from I, they, all of those kids. And was that, was that, would that be a first win in his career? First race win for um, young master Tandy? You know what? I'm, I'm going to check that because I'm pretty sure he won a heat in. Ah. I might be wrong. I might be wrong, Henry. But uh, well, no, I mean, but it's, it's, it's still a you know a, a great moment caught on. Uh, you know, and that's that's the joys of running of, of filming the heats. Uh, it really know. is. Yeah, you can see you know uh, things unfold as the uh, weekend progresses. But there's a. Uh, as Joe looks at the results from Wilton Mill to see whether that was Felix's first ever uh, race win, be it heat, super final or super pole, sorry, super heat or final. We'll look ahead to the last nope, that's heat his first, race. That's his first third, uh, well, there we go. Yeah. First, uh, first I, race. I don't know because that's points. That's a points haul heat. But it was, but, uh, you know, you know, as a couple of, a couple of the, couple of the mighties, they did a bonus lap. Um, but, uh, you know, once they get their full track time in, yeah. I think Arthur Thompson and uh, Kai Ergensoy uh, were those two drivers that were coming around to doing another lap. Um, but, yeah, you know, fantastic. And that means that we've got one heat race to go. Incredible. We've uh, already burnt through all of our heats. Well, that's, it's, it's, here, it's 14 races today. I think there's, a, there's a two, four, six, yeah, 14 races in total. This is the 14th of said races. Uh, uh, Logan Rolf is going to be starting from pole position again. Um, I did, yeah. So the, Logan's mum Kelly did message me saying when she heard that I was going to be here, said, "Oh, I, you know, great to have you know, good to see you again. Be great, I can't believe you know you got commentating on my son and what have you." And um, you know, yeah, Gar Gary Rolf was a, a mechanic. He was a mechanic for the late Dan Weldon. Oh, back really? In the day, yeah, yeah, Gar yeah. Gaz so Gaz Tech, Gaz Gaz Mark Gaz Rose. Tech does. He would have worked with Mark Rose. Knew, he, he your with eyes, Marky Mark. Your eyes, <laughs> your eyes Rose. There, but, but Mark is a. <laughs> There are not many people in this sport that know more about how to set up a go-kart than Mark Rose. Absolutely. He, he's based out in the Middle East now. Yeah, I hear. Uh, yes. Based out in the Middle East. And, um, he, you know, he's, Bizarrely, he's where there's stopped, no alcohol. He's, but he stopped drinking. No. Gin. He stopped drinking. What, completely? But completely. He, yes. Dry as a chip is now Mark. <laughs> he's a legend. Yes. He is an absolute legend. 
Um, and, and Remind me to tell you the Atlantic 252 story. Oh, okay, the Atlantic 252, yes. It, it, it probably, it, I can't it's, tell it's you what it is. Yeah, no, it, it, no, it probably be not, not a chance. Bro- well, it would be, it's one of those things where you say, well, it's been a lovely career. I'm not going to sign <laughs> yes, off with I this Mark possibly. Rose story. Yeah, I couldn't possibly. <laughs> Any Mark Rose story. So, so yes, so that back in that era, I mean, you know, the, the, there's a new uh, documentary movie coming out about Dan Weldon's yes, career Lionheart. and life. Lionheart. Lionheart, yes. yeah. I'm not sure where that's going to be available. Um, On some platform. HBO in the States have just released it this week. And Ooh, we're still waiting. Sky, they got uh, yeah, I'm not sure where. And we're still wait. Sky, they got uh, yeah, I'm not sure where things. that's going to... Yeah, I hope so. Uh, well, keep we, your yeah, eyes yeah. peeled. Lionheart, it's called. Yes. Uh, about the still Daniel recovering from the, the, we the used Didier sneak... Peroni and Gilles Villeneuve documentary. Oh, that was, was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, that was brilliant. We used yeah. to sneak Dan Weldon into nightclubs with us when he was in Formula Ford. Ah, yes. These little curtains, you know. He was, yeah. he was only about Who's 17. And, and, uh, and, you know, and his, uh, his, his, his kids, Oliver... As yes, Sebastian yes, doing well yep. in the states. I think Oliver's moved into Formula Four now, and uh, saw them at the, the you know Supernats last year on what was a, a very you know poignant weekend because it was held at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Oh, really? Was last, it really Las, Las oh, Vegas wow. Supernats? Right. Um, and of course, it was the elephant in the room, you know. But yes, the, both, yeah, both, yeah. both boys and Susie, who was there, you know, just absolute credit and ambassadors to the sport. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, took everything in their stride I mean, like I, a proper I, racing family. I mean, Dan Weldon, I remember in Cadets. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, oh, but Felton and stuff. Right. Should, do you ah, want to have a bash down the... The, uh, the grids. Across the grid. Okay. Logan Rolf and Chloe McGill starting from row number one. Albie J. Stubbs and Buddy Hugo on row two. Elijah West and Alfie Mayer who won very impressively in heat number one. Alfie goes from grid position number six. Benedictus Masiokas uh, is seventh, followed by Lewis Herbertson. Then it's Jensen Walker and Alfie Garrett. Xavier Ramsey and Lewis Cacaldi uh, is... Andy Cacaldi's son. Another... Uh, Andrew. Andrew, Andrew Cacaldi, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Lilly and Toby Biggs, then uh, Dean Pahal and Sebastian Crawford, Freddie Blackshaw and Jack Mellon, uh, Victor Popacall uh, is 19th, and rounding out the field very quickly is Jamie Walsh, Zach Andrew, Travis Giddings, Carter Jackson, Ruben Segu, Ronnie Faulkner, and Leo Hunt. Grid vistas across the Glanning Gores cart track here in North Wales. We are yes. not far from Ruthen, who oh, you have to drive through and pay homage, homage and respect to Tom Price, which I've done a couple of times over the past couple of years. I got to see the uh, memorial there yes. to Fun- Tom Price. Paid for and funded by Bernard Charles Ecclestone. Was it really? Yes. Well, it's, uh, uh, it's very, yeah, very poignant. I remember that date. Uh, back in 1977, that's how old I am. Uh, here we go, though. It's the Micromax second heat. That is about to get underway. We've been we've been asked by the drivers for another lap. I uh, don't think. Uh, and they've they, been and they've been given one. Uh, yes, yes. The, the drivers came out in the final turn there, Henry, <laughs> giving it the the waved finger, and both Logan Rolfe and Chloe McGill were two of those drivers that were asking for that. Now I can only suspect that. Well, they Gaz, might have Gaz has told the Logan, "Listen, son, uh, your tyres need to let cut <laughs> yes. in." So uh, yes. Uh, Go off for a fair old clip, mate. And uh, <laughs> well, they, they, they were gathered up, though, weren't they? With a very, yes. very, um, they were a very small. They, they were sorry, small. They were going very slowly, and I, I wonder if they were feeling like their engines were beginning to bog down and maybe oil up. Yeah, but, but that's why they were asking. Or because there was already uh, there's one driver you can see at the back now. Speaking of bogging up, there they've decided to stop. Ah, uh, now this is gamesmanship at the finest order. Now, yes, they. They've slowed right down because there's one driver at uh, the back of the field, possibly Ronnie Faulkner, and that is spelled F-O-R-K-N-E-R. That's uh, Ronnie Faulkner. Now, there's, there's obviously there's got to be a joke in there about fork handles and Ronnie. <laughs> uh, in, in there, something like You've that. You've got to be a certain age to appreciate it. This, that, this, Certainly in, in these, junior, these drivers would. Yeah, in the junior karting championship, that is not an era-appropriate joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they won't have a clue what we're talking about. Here we go, though. We've got a red ah. flag. Now then, Mr. Oh. Ashton oh, has oh. been prodded, oh, I in, think. into life? No, prodded, <laughs> prodded. To in, well, yes, there is. There he there, is. There he is with his yellow earmuffs, keeping his ears oh, warm. He's, he's not happy with. I don't know what he wasn't happy with there, Henry. Popping the I drivers could, dictating I, whether or not they want to start the go kart race well, or not. Well, there is that. Yes, of course. <laughs> he yes, will have a that. have a word. Now, I also saw Stu Stratton. 
Um, so our friend Gaz Bury Uh-oh, has yes, gotten yes, in yes. touch with Macaulay Austin and yes. screenshotted your comments Uh-oh. of Henry just comparing him to Senna at Adelaide in 85. And, and he got that back from Macaulay. Oh. Uh, so you've, you've, right, made him, you've made him cry. Oh, he's, oh, no. You've made him cry. But man, you up, be, man up, or you else I'll get Neil, to, Neil, your dad, to smack you around the yeah. head. For Macaulay, being you, Macaulay, you were that, you you are were, that you, good. You were that good, yes. Yep. So go and out uh, and smash that Civic tomorrow but, in that it, championship. Uh, no, don't smash Civic, because you can't afford to repair no, it. No, no, I meant that. Of, yes. But, yeah, but um, what, one person that Macaulay is working with, another one of the all-time greats who went, left the sport and is now back in the sport, is Colin Brown. The 2000, oh, I remember. Yes, the I remember. 2000 World he's back Cards into the champion. sport, did he's, you see? He's based in the United States. He's mechanic and he, and he won. Uh, well, his driver... He was the uh, biggest loss to British motorsport, yes, in my yep. opinion. Uh, again, down to funding or something, wasn't it? Funding... And and I think yes, there was. The, or did he become distracted? Th- there was there there may have been a couple of life issues that uh, that got in the way, but funding being the main one. Um, but Colin is now back in the sport, running, uh, helping to run Ryan Perry Motorsports in the USA, and his driver uh, Peyton Phillips uh, won the opening round of the Scusa uh, Supernats. Uh, sorry, the Scusa Winter Nationals in Orlando a couple of weekends ago. Using Colin Brown's old crash helmet, Colin, no Colin, Colin's gone right. Use the colours, use the helmet, and so yeah. And McCauley's working a bit with, a bit with him as well. So it's uh, this sport. It has it has a habit of sometimes chewing you up and spitting you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can but but you know if you realise why you stepped into a, a karting paddock in the first place, you find your way back, and people will you know will remember your talents, and you can yeah. There's it's, uh, it's, it can be the most addictive drug in the world, this karting, because you can have a terrible uh, weekend. Mm. You can throw what is left of your go-kart in the back of the van, cussing and screaming and shouting, oh, I'm never coming to another <laughs> kart oh, that's track go- again. That's going up for sale. And by Tuesday, you're thinking, right, where's the next race? What have we got to do? What parts have we got to buy? Let's get back out there. Yeah. I, I can't tell you how many times that happened no, to me, no, to yeah. everyone. Yeah. It's like, right, I'm packing this in. This oh, is yeah. ridiculous. And then by Wednesday, you've just you just pulling the garage door up a little bit. Mm. Just have a, I'll just have a look to see. Yeah. So that's uh, two pounds just a tire. Yeah, 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 just a stay room collar. Just quickly yeah, get, yeah, on the, get yeah. on the zip north or zoom yeah, cart new, or you new, know, new tires. Quick spell yeah. thing, you know, order. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dan Ashton is as writ- written the riot act. He's got the scroll mm. out there and and uh, read the riot act to both Logan Rolfe and Chloe McGill. He was the he got the two yes. front row drivers out of the carts and he basically Jeez. told them what they had done wrong and what he needed from them. And, uh, Stu, Stu Stratton. Stu Stratton, I was yeah, going to say. At the front, uh, the photographer. S- speaking of our uh, quote of gingers, Stu Stratton <laughs> is, uh, is there. Uh, again, fantastic uh, work that he is he's doing. Well, this has given Stu Stratton an opportunity to create art. This is, yeah, there's going to be there's going to be something artistic. Yes. Possibly on a canvas. Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. That uh, is. That, that's going to go. So, M- Mr. and Mrs. Rolf. Yeah, oh, uh, yes. We're going to have some very good um, uh, oh, arty yeah. shots of Logan on the front row in these heats that is going to be available to buy yeah. from Stu Stratton on his website. Well, basically, that, that's one way. Every time, Ga- every time Gaz earns a couple of quid, you know, Kelly will find out and she'll instantly go <laughs> and uh, speak to Stu Stratton and say, right, I'm gonna, we're having a double order this weekend. Yes. Because I know that he's, he's got a couple of quid and I don't want to go into the bookies. Uh, <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> um, and so, yes. But, but this... Uh, you know, again, it, I would advise you to look at Stu Stratton Media for, you, you know, what can be done with, you know, this is new school, the streaming services, the broadcasting, the live broadcasting, but you know, a picture can still say a thousand words. And you know what? You know what? I, I, I raced carts between, I raced Formula Fords for a couple of years. I did it backwards. I went Formula Ford and oh. then karting. Okay. Um, because basically I didn't have enough money to run a Formula Ford. Um, but I barely had enough money to run a cart. Where I did that for many, many yeah. years, between 1986 through to the mid 90s, we did the Metro Centre race, we did the Hull Street race. Oh, I remember. Yes, I remember. Uh, the Hull as Street. well as racing at Felton and as, as it was called then Langbar, Lang- which I was is Langbar. Yeah. Um, I also raced all over the country. I did the odd Super One round. I raced at PF. Raced all, everywhere. Raced everywhere. I've got about three photographs. That yeah. Such about a, three it, photographs. Yeah. I've got no photographs whatsoever of the Hull Street race oh. or the Metro Centre race. That's, yeah. Of which Jensen Button and Dan Weldon were there in cadets. Yep. In 1991, um, but now, you, you, yeah, we've got you, you know you were looking back. You know when they when these 
when these guys are in their 20s and 30s and 30s and 40s like we are, Henry. Yeah, yeah, um, they'd be 20s able to and 30s look back at yeah. TV but, uh, coverage it, yeah, as that, well as a, a, a plethora of photographs and stills from, from the likes of Stu Stratton. Yes, and uh, now they have been the riot act read, uh, admonishment given, engines fired, and uh, rolling lap part two or part three underway. Yes, let's see if they can do what uh, Dan Ashton has asked of them. Well, if they don't, then uh, Logan Rolfe and Chloe McGill could win an all-expenses-paid trip to the back of the grid, <laughs> well, which is at the race director's discretion. I've seen that happen. I've seen Dan Ashton do Oof. that as well. And Dan Ashton is... You know what? I, I, I'm going to blow smoke here at Dan Ashton. He is one of the best... Stewards, yeah, no, clerks no, of the course, absolutely. Um, absolutely. That, that we have in 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 Great Britain, you know, he really is, and he's. I've seen him. He's very fair. He's also very firm, and and which was more important than anything, he's very consistent. Yeah, and, and of course, because he does a lot of arcs examiners. Uh, examiners That's right. Well. Yeah. So he brings yeah. these yeah. drivers in from the minute they step in a go kart. And you know what I think? I think he's as good as what he does in in his officials' capacity because he's raced. Yes, it always helps. Oh, oh, always go. helps if you race. Here okay. we go. Here we go. It's Logan Rolfe on the left-hand side of your screen and Chloe McGill in the bright pink car. And it's too wide through the first turn there. And everybody getting through without oh. incident. Yes, there was a little bit of nudging. Yes, oh. there was a little bit of wheel banging. And yes, Chloe McGill has dropped probably down to what looks oh, like... Oh, she's, oh, she's right more. out yeah. of it. She's right out of it there. And, and that was... That, now, if that's not a problem developing, she was on the outside. And I think she hesitated as she was going to turn in. And then someone behind was still, you know, flat chat on the gas. Sort of just edged her a little bit further wide. And uh, now it'll be interesting to see how she reacts and how she tries to start fighting her way back through. We'll, yeah. we'll pick up where she is uh, at the end of this first lap. But, you know... And then follow her progress, but we've got about is it four cart breakaway? No, five, no, no. five or six <laughs> yeah. uh, breakaway. At Everyone's the broke away. Yeah, Henry. Yeah, yeah. That's the whole field as they come across the line. Uh, one lap completed then, and it's Logan Rolfe and Albie J Stubbs who is right on the rear bumper there. And there's the number eleven of Buddy Hugo right on the rear bumper of Albie J Stubbs. Albie J Stubbs, remember, is being yep. uh, is being coached, mentored by both Josh Cook and Jane Edwards, two British touring car drivers there involved with Albie. And the, I think he's lost out, actually. I think he's dropped down to third now behind Buddy Hugo. But, yeah, but he's still, this is one of his first no, uh, uh, races the, it's out the Bambinos as uh, Albie uh, J. Stubbs. So, again, a, still a steep learning curve um, has to be said. Now, Chloe McGill crossed the line in 12th position. Wow. Just behind Lewis and that, that was lost in one corner, yep. up, at, up at the uh, the spoon corner. Um, here is, um, that is Albie J. Stubbs, I think, isn't it? No, no. Uh, it's Rolf. Rolf is in fourth place. It is RB J Stubbs. Yeah. He's got the black number plate I, on the back. I, that that That's has happened at the compression. Yes. So the number 32 there of Logan Rolf, who was leading into the compression. Now we get a change for the lead as Buddy Hugo yep. goes down the inside. We've seen that move many, many times. That's textbook. However, you do tend to run wide coming out of Spoon. And yep. that can disadvantage you down the hill like we're seeing now. Like we're seeing all one, it's getting a little bit uh, close for comfort uh, for about sixth position on back. But uh, now that you can see all this group now just closing back up as they head down the hill towards Devil's Elbow for the fourth time. And uh, Chloe McGill still running in 12th. But uh, if you have a little look, you can just see in the, in yeah, the, just in the pink yeah. and white cart. Uh, not in this league group, but not far off it. And if the last couple of laps are anything to go by, Joe, then they're not all going to sit uh, single file and play nice. They are going to race, as we're seeing already, yeah. with uh, Logan Rolfe trying to go round the outside. He's trying to regain that position, isn't he? He dropped to fourth place. He's back up to third. Let's see if he can. Oh. He's got the next driver on his list to tick off his buddy Hugo. Now, these two coming together at the carousel there. Down the inside has gone Rolf, and he has made that move stick. He's back up in the second. Now, he's gonna, we're going to see some helmet tapping coming oh, yeah, here yeah, yeah. because Alfie Mayer is the driver that has gotten into the lead and pulled a bit of a gap there. Alfie Mayer, the zip car driver, once again through the compression then, through the left-hand bit and then into the final turn, into the final turn and across the line. Alfie Mayer leads by, well, that was a gap of, what is that, two uh, six-tenths yeah. 
Six tenths of a second. Is this not what he did in the earlier race? I think he it is. Work his way to the front, and then as everybody sort of scrapped over the, the minor podium placings, he cleared off. Now, here's the second big pack. There's Chloe McGill chasing the number 42 cart of Alfie Garrett. So McGill had moved up into 10th, but I think Garrett has repassed her for 11th. Um, but there's that first group with Rolf second, then Hugo, Hugo, then Masioka, Stubbs, West, and Walker. Yeah, that's a that's the gaggle, isn't it? That's the, the group that's broken free. And that's seven carts that have broken a gap of, what was it? It's about a second. Let's see if it's still a second. It's Walker in seventh. And then we've got uh, Dain Singh Pahal, 1.6 seconds back. So that gap is opening up. Meanwhile, at the front, another change of opinion or difference of opinion, I should say, with regards to the line into Spoon Corner and the number 12 of Benedictus Masiokas up and ahead of Buddy Hugo and into third place. So that was a great move there. How many times have we seen that, Henry? It seems to be a favourite place there because I, I, I'm not sure what's happening up there. As they come over the brow, they're not quite... They're, they're, they're having to either go on the inside, which allows people around the outside. If you go, I think, the ID line in the spoon is to take a very late apex yeah but you leave that door wide open yeah yeah you, you, you know it's it's, a, it's the fastest way around but it does leave you susceptible which is why you see the drivers looking over their shoulders uh so much going up the straight now uh, so you can see uh this this time uh alfie may hasn't been allowed to pull away to the extent that he did in race number one uh with rolf and uh, masiokas you know staying within striking distance we're not quite within daniel ricardo lick the stamp and send it <laughs> range but we're not far off uh, should anyone be that way inclined yeah alfie mayor has been been absolutely sublime on this lap because mm, uh, four tenths very, of a second good. and he's just kind of he's kind of been composed enough not to, not to worry about the people behind him and let's see what the gap is now then there was four tenths on the previous lap, it's, got, it's almost six. So he has pulled in a little bit more. Two tenths of a second looked like nothing on the uh, on the track. Uh, Masiokas now on the rear bumper of Rolf. And Masiokas has come through the field. He's wanting to make it a zip one too, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, and he's the, just he, set the fastest lap. He's the only driver yeah. to dip under 49 seconds. Yeah, he's and on if, a charge. If you're looking at them, I mean, so far, the best lap of, of all of the top, of look eight drivers within two cents of a second which is great news you know for the for the parity of the class and yeah. uh, you know the equality of the uh, great, engine package. great news for us y yeah well, because it's it brings brilliant racing and it comes down to absolutely thousands of a second yep. here and that's why we see these two now you know what Masiokas is being very clever here we're going to get at least two more laps here yep and Masiokas hasn't really mounted a challenge there nope. on Rolf there because he knows once he does that that's going to let Mayer just disappear so, even more so. So, so he's, he's going to be push, very clever. Literally yeah, pushing Rolf onto up. Onto the bumper of the leader. Yes. And he, he, that's exactly what he's done, Henry. The, he's worked with Rolf. Rolf's thinking the same. And I'm not sure if we've missed any sort of helmet tapping and gesticulation. But if anything, Rolf now challenging Alfie Mayer going into these final two laps. Mayer coming into our view there into turn seven. They go through the devil's elbow now through the left-hand bit, and then into the compression. You really do drop there, don't you? Yep, yep. and of course, it, the car almost is like, it's so light on the, you, the, the... They don't get all four wheels off the tarmac, but it becomes so light that you know, it, it does sort of like wash the car out wide. Now it's game on. Yeah, now they're lap. defending, uh, and everyone looking over their shoulder. So Rolf will try and cut up the inside going into Spoon Curve here, but... Uh, Oh, absolutely. You know what, Henry? They were absolutely on the limit of adhesion there. You could see, yep. you know, they were almost lifting the inside rear, uh, front and rear wheels. That's how much grip they were carrying through there. There's no change then. Mayor, Rolf and Masiokas, these are the three racing to the flag through turn seven now into the devil's elbow. That's the right and then the very, very tight, almost coming back on yourself left and then straight into the compression. They're out of that. It's a very technical part of the track here. But it's going to be Alfie Mayer who will take the checkered flag first and takes the second heat in the Micromax class. Logan Rolf finishes second. Benedictus Masiokas third. 
Buddy Hugo fourth, Elijah West was fifth, sixth was Jensen Walker, seventh Alfie Garrett, Diane Singh Pahal, ninth was Chloe McGill, and tenth, rounding off the top ten, was uh, Lewis, McC- Lewis Cocotti. And that rounds off our racing for day one of the second round of the car, of the car championship from Glanny Gores. And Henry Baudet and I are going to be locked in a dark room so that we can prepare for tomorrow. Because if anything, if that is anything to go by, yes. we're not even at the important bit, are we? No, business. There's not even a trophy for that lot. Business will pick up for, for sure tomorrow. Um, what I've seen, I mean, okay, we take take the, uh, the there was one outlier. The first junior road tax race was it was a little bit uh, you know feisty, um, but I, I thoroughly impressed. I mean, excellent racing. Uh, last lap, last corner passes for the race lead on several occasions. A lot yeah. of clean racing, a lot of respectful racing, and uh, you know, now we're going to go round. We're going to see a lot of smiles in the paddock as well. Yes. So Henry and I are going to round off now. Uh, we'll see you back here at the same place, Karting Live TV. Find it from either our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. We'll be back with racing at ten o'clock with our super heats. We've got two rounds of super heats before we go into a bit of a lunch break where you can then watch uh, Henry and I uh, making fools of ourselves in the paddock. Uh, And then we go into the all-important finals and points hall for round two of the car championship. Uh, We bid you good night. Have a lovely evening this evening, and we'll see you in the morning. Thank you.